Welcome back. Welcome back. Automatically give this joint a thumbs up because we're going to go deep. I haven't slept all night. This is what you call hard work and dedication. <clears throat> when you got as much information as I got to give to people, sleep can come later sometime. I'm young and restless, Becky. I'm going to earn the right to be old and restful because right now I'm young and restless. Mm-hmm. Don't waste your youth sleeping it away. You know how much time you're going to have to do that as an old motherfucker? See, let me go ahead and say thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I have a very powerful yet controversial lecture today that I think is one of the most important lectures for the, what we call the black conscious community. There's something called Garveyism, which teaches us, which laid the foundation for what we call the back to Africa theory. But did you know this? Marcus Garvey never visited Africa in his life. <laughs> I'm going to start off my floor by just saying one quick fact you need to know right off the bat. Marcus Garvey had an out of Africa movement and the man never stepped one single foot on African soil in his entire life. Yet that was the whole foundation of his message. <laughs> People, Malcolm X took a hodge to Mecca. People, come on now. Hebrews go to Jerusalem today to prove a point. You mean we got so much to learn about Garvey that you know that Garvey, Garvey's organization had a contract and alliance with the KKK? Oh, my God. You don't really know much about Garvey other than what you've heard, but you're going to find out some things today that's going to make you look at Marcus Garvey entirely different. And I'm not here to drag him. I'm just here to tell you the truth on why this man was probably one of the most evil agents to black people that I can think of. Like they worship him in the, in, 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 like you got to understand they worship this man in the Pan-African community. He's the Messiah. <clears throat> we got so much to learn. Strap on the seatbelts, buckle up, because it's going to get deep. So I'm going to make a lot of claims right now. And throughout this presentation, I'll come and support the claims. This won't be in any particular order. So just bear with me and be patient and walk with me. Let's begin. Are you ready? Are y'all ready? Hit the like button. Let's begin. So one thing I want to point out to you is that the motto of the UNIA was one God, one aim, and one destiny. And right there, we got to understand Marcus Garvey was what's called a Jamaican maroon. And he, he, he grew up as a Jamaican Catholic, raised all his life. The Jamaican Catholics honored Haley Selassie like Bob Marley, but Haley Selassie was also a Catholic as well. So Catholicism is very heavy in Garvey's family roots, which is why he never denounced it. In fact, he promoted it. And another thing about Garvey that we need to realize is that um, he was one of the most black revered Catholics of all time by the uh, London. They actually have a memorial dedicated to Marcus Garvey in London. And we know that ain't good. The man visited London more than Africa. The man wore the Jesuit cross and worked for the queen. I'm about to prove all that today. 
Now, the man was a Catholic, but taught a, out of a, a, a back to Africa theory. If you were Catholic, shouldn't we be going back to Jerusalem? How can a Catholic, a foreigner, come teaching blacks to go to Africa when he never been, but he went back and forth to London? And y'all don't see what's going on already? Let's go deeper. Hold on, hold on. Garvey movement was a theocratic movement, meaning it was inspired by the God of the Bible. That's why the first part of his motto is one God, one aim, one destiny. You know what would have been better? One people, one aim, one destiny. Why did Garvey have a religious approach to your liberation and why didn't he secede? Hmm. 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 Gavi believed in one God and under that one God, one aim and one destiny. But his people were separated, divided and arguing with each other till they eventually split up. Because your motto was one God instead of one people. But I'm finna show y'all. A lot. Did we just starting off with the model? Nothing major. Like I said, one God, one one mission. What was it? I just read it. It was one one one, which is the mark of the beast code, and the people who Garvey was working for was using him to infiltrate blacks. Now check this out. Before I even get deep into this, I know I'm gonna have a lot of people in their feelings. So let me just say this. Garvey worked in hand in hand with the Red Cross to help treat blacks for the Spanish flu. During a time where blacks did not trust this fucking. You got to think what we going through now with the COVID vaccine. That what it would have been like in the early 1900s with Garvey. We was first introduced to vaccines. It was a new shit then, and black folks were skeptical about it. They sent in Marcus McGarvey and funded him, and his organization called a Black Cross worked in unison with the Red Cross to get blacks treated. He came over here on a mission for the UK, which we know what, that's who owned the Red Cross, which is the symbol that he wore. They could not get blacks to get vaccinated. And Garvey put it off and they called him the Messiah. He said one of his main focuses was to educate blacks in the form of treatments and to make sure that they get treated. Oh, we about to get into all that. Y'all don't know how deep this is. Y'all don't know how deep this is. You don't know. Let me let, let me let's go into it. Um, I'm gonna take my time with this because I want to be thorough. There's a lot I got to go over because I want I, I know it's gonna be a lot of emotional people. So I want to do this slow and do it right, and I want to do it respectful. Here's a little slide show we about to look at too. Now these are the different comparison between Garvey and Booker T. Washington. All right. How did Garvey, Washington, and Du Bois differ in their approaches to the problems faced by African Americans after Reconstruction? This little presentation gonna lay my groundwork before we go deep so you can see why a lot of black Americans didn't just accept Garvey at first. Most of black Americans was going against Garvey. Like, who is this foreigner trying to tell us what we need to do? But we're going to get to that in a minute. So how was their different approaches different to black uh, problems faced by African Americans or black Americans after Reconstruction, after the war? 
the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line, which is W.E.B. Du Bois quote. And um, if you were an African-American in 1900, how would you try to gain equality in the United States? After Plessy versus Ferguson, Jim Crow laws and segregation became the norm in the South, discriminatory laws oppressed African-Americans and denied them equal rights. So check this out. All three of these guys wanted African-Americans to gain civil rights and the right to be treated equal. Fair enough. Problem. African-Americans lack access to economic opportunities. Now, now I want you to listen up. Right now I'm reading Booker T. Washington. This is Booker T. This is Booker T. Washington State now, a problem and a solution. And we're going to do it for all three. I want y'all to just pay close attention because you've been fooled. You've been fooled on who had the right solution for blacks. Garvey sold us out, and he the reason we in the problem we in now. He played a big role in it. Before we get into this now, because we about to compare the three and their problems and solutions, hit the like button. Hear me out for your judge. Now, Booker T. Washington said Afri the problem is African-Americans lack access to economic opportunities because whites have denied us opportunities and are trying to use immigrants to fill jobs instead of African-Americans. Don't that sound familiar? In the 1900s, they was doing the same thing they doing now. And Booker T. Washington was calling it out. Garvey didn't like that because he was a damn immigrant who they used to. And they try to blame it like W.E.B. Du Bois was the bad guy. And, and he tried to replace Garvey movement when it was the opposite. W.E.B. Du Bois had been a grassroots leader in America working with our people long before that foreigner Garvey got over here with his Vatican Jesuit agenda. I'm finna teach y'all so much stuff they don't want y'all to know. Why don't the pro-blacks want you to know that they got an honor and memorial for Garvey in London? If they want to be so proud of him, why ain't they telling you all the awards that white folks gave him? We finna get into a minute, because guess what? We got to share his accomplishments. Yeah, we gonna share that. <laughs> We want to know why these pro-blacks ain't talking about these awards and memorials this man got from the Vatican. Why don't they want you to know that? I'm finna get into it today. Just walk with me. Booker T. Washington clearly pointed out a problem that we know is true. His solution was African-Americans and whites must work together in the South. African-Americans need vocational training and whites need to be willing to provide them with education and jobs. I don't agree with all of his solution strategies, but I definitely agree with the problem and, and cool, whatever. But anyway, W.D. Bedore, he said a problem was African-Americans have been consistently denied their civil and social rights. His solution was consistent advocacy and fighting for rights by African-Americans. In other words, W.E.B. Du Bois said, our only solution is to fight back for our rights. He had a simple solution. Now here go Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey said a problem was African-Americans have no jobs because white men are taking over all economic opportunities and will soon ask African-Americans to leave or die. His solution was the creation of black nations in Africa, which is basically to fucking run from them. <laughs> Think about it. You had two black men who was born on American soil. They was Eidos. And both of their solutions was to stand up and fight. And Garvey, some foreigner for Africa, coming over here telling black Americans, your solution is to go build your own nation. Don't that sound like the same racist shit the white man tell you? And you know the nigga was racist. He was a Catholic. 
he had a lot of white friends I'm about to show you. And the nigga never went to Africa, but yet he came over from Jamaica telling blacks in America that the white, read this, Marcus Garvey said the problem is basically the white man taking over and he gonna soon ask you niggas to leave or he gonna kill you. So my advice to y'all is pack your shit up and get the hell on. That was Garvey's approach. Now you see why black Americans didn't like him at first. You got this foreigner. Now our problem over here was immigration. Of course him as an immigrant ain't gonna agree with E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington as Ados. Niggas who saying we ain't running nowhere. We need to make a solution right here to make this shit work. That's what Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois said. Whether you like their solution or not, they, went, they did never have a solution to run. Marcus Garvey was the one that his solution for blacks in America was to go the fuck to Africa. A immigrant telling you this who never been to Africa. You would see that as an insult. I'm pretty sure the boy and Booker T saw that as a fucking insult. Like, wait a minute. I'm born and raised Eidos on this land. And this man coming over here from a foreign nation telling me basically the white man got his foot on your neck and you niggas need to run. Get the fuck out. Bro, that's what the racist white folks say today. Y'all don't like it? Get out. Now they got a black guy saying it to you, and you listen. Oh, my God. And you listen. They knew if a black man told it to you, you'll listen. You'll start thinking you the fucking immigrant. A generation later, now we lost. Now Ados is lost. Bro, I got a newfound respect for Tariq Nasheed. I'm going to confess that in this stream. Anything I ever said wrong about Tariq Nasheed, I take it back, man. I'm actually going to donate to him to help him get that fucking museum. And you're going to see why I'm saying this in a minute. Trust me, I'm not tripping. The shit I'm telling you now about Garvey, Tariq Nasheed was the only nigga to expose this about Garvey. That's why he started Ados and FBA. I didn't know how deep the shit went with Garvey. But after you see what I'm about to show you today, and I'm going to get into Tariq Nasheed too, and his war with Pan-Africans. Bro, we about to get it in today. This shit deep. This shit's really deep, man. Hit the like button, because we, we, you know, I've been up all night, so I got to take my time. Be thorough. If you look at the little slide show that I just showed, Garvey got the worst uh, solution on the chart. His solution was simply for you to pack up and run. And right off the back, you ought to start getting a red flag about Garvey. He came over here as a foreigner talking like the damn white supremacists. And you wonder why Ados hated him, even to this day. FBA and ADOs don't rock with the Pan-African movement. Wait till I expose the black Jesuit order for you real quick. Yo, let me show you what's so deep. They had a campaign called Marcus Garvey Must Go, and it was spearheaded by uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, Philip Randolph, and um, I think book, I, I forgot the other guy. But anyway, check this out. They saying that the Boulay got rid of Garvey, right? But this was an infight between the black Jesuits and the black Boulay. The black Boulay today lost that war, and now they're controlled by the Jews and Jesuits. Because Agave actually infiltrated the Boule. The Boule was responsible for Tulsa. Uh, Booker T. Washington actually founded the fucking Tuskegee Institute. He had nothing to do with the syphilis experiments. 
I'm going to get into how Gav- Garvey tie into that and how Booker T and Garvey fell out because Garvey had the connections with the Red Cross. Garvey was basically already performing experiments on niggas with new medicines that the Red Cross was donating to the Black Cross. This dude was so fucking evil, man. And y'all going to see why I got them horns on him. Listen, check this out. You know why the boule went out to Garvey? Because Garvey made a union with the KKK. And if they went after him because of that, I'm with them, bro. I don't care what y'all say. I'm with my black Eidos brothers. I don't give a fuck if they boule. This nigga was working directly for the Vatican. He got a shrine in London. Bro, I, the boule one always controlled, if you ask me. Because what I'm uncovering here, the boule was responsible for a lot of black economic war before they came across. Uh, they was responsible for a lot of black economic prosperity. The black people was thriving under the guidance of these sellout boule cats that we joke on today. And we put Garvey on a pedestal. But I'm changing my mind now, bro. I'm changing my mind. I think Garvey infiltrated the boule. And that's why the boule is sellouts today. The boule didn't always teach no pan-African theory. Marcus Garvey inspired and influenced the boule to adopt this pan-Africanism and Garveyism. But before that, the boule was saying, stand up and fight here in America, and I'm about to show y'all everything I'm saying. I swear you're going to have to rethink everything you know about Garvey. I'm not making none of this up. Watch this. Watch this shit right here. Because we don't have to read all this. We're going to read most. But I got to give you the good parts, what we need. All right? I've been doing so much research. Let's read this passage here. Liberty Hall was the name of Marcus Garvey building that he had in Oakland. He had a UNI in Oakland where they had meetings there. But he met up with the KKK there. Going to Liberty Hall was a family affair for African Americans in the West. At regular Sunday meetings, Garvey children, as they were called, bro, ain't no way I'm finna be a grown man letting some foreigner come from an island and have and, and a nigga call me a Garvey child. Man, I wish the fuck you would call me a child of Garvey or the Garvey children. This sound like some Christianity shit. They already called Garvey the father and Messiah. You mean to tell me this nigga had black Eidos men who been over here fighting this beast and not running, calling him daddy, and this nigga's solution was for you to run, and y'all got folks calling y'all Garvey children? Oh, my God. What's wrong, black man? Why you need a leader? Why you need a leader? Check this out, man. They were called Garvey children as we were called, and we received instruction in black history. Wow. A foreigner taught you your history. A foreigner from Jamaica came over here to Ados to tell you niggas about your history. Oh, my God. Bro, this shit makes me infuriated. It makes me furious. It And what do you think he going to tell you? You from Africa. And who wanted you to believe that? The Vatican. They was experimenting with blood and trying to prove evolution in the 1900s. One of the main subjects that Garveyism, that the Garvey Institutes taught black Americans was evolution. Did you know that most blacks first learned about evolution through Garveyism and not through the white man? It was Garvey told us black Americans we monkeys. They sent, they, imagine a white person trying to teach you that first. Imagine a white first trying to reinforce Darwin's teaching on you in the 1900s. 
They had to get Garvey to do it. I'm about to show y'all what Garveyism all about. Listen, let's read. So Garvey had them playing with dolls and illustrated books depicting black heroes, black angels, and black soldiers. These African-American children were encouraged to think of themselves as intelligent, capable, and promising members of the community. As they grew older, young African-Americans could join the African Legion for Men of the UNIA Motor Corps for Women. Each of these auxiliary groups put men and women in uniform and prepared them for military involvement in the ultimate liberation of Africa or local resistance against the KKK. That's the part I wanted to highlight. Garvey was training his people for a future war against the KKK, just like the Nation of Islam. But guess what, though? I'm going to show you facts that the Nation of Islam had an alliance with the KKK because the KKK taught separatism and the pure white waste race, and that's what they built the alliance on, anti-swirling. Garvey built an alliance with the KKK, too. Now, let me break y'all hard. Watch this before we go further. This finna make black folks heartbreak. Watch what I do. Watch this real quick. Hold up. I want you to see my face, what I'm about to do. Dig this. The UNIA had an alliance with the KKK. The NOI had an alliance with the KKK, but none of these black groups ain't never had an alliance with each other. Garvey couldn't even get along with the black men who was in America with their own movements. He couldn't, Garvey thought he was better than dumb black men in America. He was a rich African dude who grew up with a silver spoon and he was inspired because he said when he started researching black people's leaders, he thought he can do better. You talking about a rich Jamaican foreigner wasn't born in the slums of Kingston, can't relate to no Bob Marley. How the fuck you come from Jamaica and you're a Catholic? How the fuck Marcus Garvey come from Jamaica and the man ain't listen to no reggae? Oh, my God. He was bumping gospel music. Y'all need to understand the kind of man this was. He was a bougie uppity, what they call maroon black Catholic from Jamaica, from the richest black area in Jamaica. And later they moved to London where he went to one of the most expensive colleges in London. Garvey went to Birkbeck. Oh, my God. Yes, Birkbeck, the famous London's Birkbeck. Oh, my God. You couldn't even get into that college today. Like, you got to understand, Garvey had Carton on Fresh Prince beat. He never knew what struggle was. He came over here competing to lead black people and let me show you why I fucks with Booker T. Washington. Watch this. Like, I'm really owe a lot of apologies, man, about my Eidos uh, disrespect. Like, I'm really hoping they accept my apologies because I'm learning so much. Like, Booker T. Washington was not a bad man. Like, if, if, like bro, it's so crazy. I want you to think about something, right? Where's Booker T. Washington history? Did you know that Booker T, bro, this is going to break your heart. Listen to this. Listen to what I'm saying. Watch this. Watch this. Birkbeck ain't no easy to get into during no damn 1900s. Get the hell up out of here, fool. What you talking about? Yeah, they got more than one, and the one he went to was prestigious. Now, check this out. Booker T. Washington was born on a slave hut in Virginia. Slavery really started in Virginia, where the slaves arrived in Virginia, which is why Virginia considered the South. But check this out. 
Booker T. Washington was born to a slave family in Virginia. In other words, he's Ados. He got the blood and descendants of slaves. And don't you know his biggest enemy was a damn foreigner who was working for the Vatican, a Catholic Jesuit named Garvey? And don't you know they want to make Booker T. Washington and the boy and them look like sellouts when they was fighting against motherfucking Garveyism and uh the 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 they knew what Garvey was doing working with the Vatican. They saw it straight through this foreigner and he was an agent. They was calling it out, man. Imagine how what you feel as a black man. You know what it takes to solve your people's problem. Your family been on this land. You was a slave on this land. Don't nobody know this land and your people problem like you. Then some foreigner come over here funded by the Vatican and he becomes a celebrity. All of your people turn on you and start calling him the Messiah and he's the fucking Antichrist. This man infiltrated the boule. The boule started off with a grassroots mission. They went always sellouts. Not according to the research that I learned that I got here today. And I can be wrong. Garvey made the boule move, movement infiltrated. But they, the fucking early boule was accomplishing so much for blacks. And I'm just now learning this shit. Like how good under these so-called boule agents, how good blacks was doing. And then we traded all that for Garveyism and started wearing dashikis and shit, talking stupid, evolution and all that. That was Garveyism. Man, let me, let me, let me calm my nerves, man. Ain't nobody going to tell me this foreigner named Garvey who was working for the Jesuits, a Jesuit ambassador, knew the problems and solution of my people more than Booker T. Washington, who was born in a motherfucking slave hood. This is a smack in the face to our Eidos ancestry. Pan-Africans are your biggest enemy. Garveyites are your biggest enemy. And you're going to learn why after the day. Let's get into his KKK alliance. Because this is why Booker T. Washington them started having campaigns against Garvey. The man started working with the KKK. Can you imagine some foreigner coming over here getting down with our biggest enemy trying to tell you to stop having sets outside of your fucking race when he's working for the Vatican and he had white members in the UNIA that I'm going to show you. Can you imagine the nerve of this nigga telling a black Ados man who struggled here who the fuck he can lay with when you working with the enemy nigga? Like a black man sleeping with a white woman and he's Ados is my brother any day versus some foreigner who got a fucking alliance with the KKK. They got y'all mad at the boy and all them because they mulatto and they got the swirling shit. When Garvey had an alliance with the KKK and these swirlers and mulattoes was going to war with them for that. And you, if you tell me you're going to go along with this foreigner named Garvey, this Catholic Jesuit foreigner named Garvey, him and the KKK, you're going to go with that versus grassroots Eidos America? Man, Tariq Nasheed, I love you and I'm sorry, my brother. I'm so fucking sorry, Tariq Nasheed. But anything I ever said bad about you, and I mean this shit, bro. Like, this shit getting me emotional, bro. Like, can you believe Tariq Nasheed been going to war with these same guys? Before me, like he was bringing this shit up before me and they was canceling him early for it. Why Tariq Nasheed ain't got Dr. Ben 
in his museum. Because Dr. Ben was a foreigner, y'all. If you look at all of the people Tariq Nasheed got up in his museum, it's Eidos. That's why I'm donating to it. That's why I'm donating to it. Fuck the Pan-Africans that's hating on Tariq Nasheed Museum. we rather donate to Tariq Nasheed and our Eidos history than donate to you Pan-African Gaviites and a foreign agenda. Bro, I got a newfound respect for Tariq, and you're going to see why. You will, too. Watch this. We just getting started. Tariq was making these arguing points I'm making back in the day, and I didn't know the value of them then, but he's fucking right, bro. Like the audacity of these African immigrants and all of them. Like, I'm really rocking with Eidos, man. I think I may join, goddammit. Shit, man. I meant FBA, not Eidos. Ask Tariq, do he accept flat earthers? <laughs> Tell him, I want to be down in what FBA going through. Now let's get back into this shit. Because I feel you, Tariq. We need to be rep represent Eidos. And the black brothers who was here grassroots born as slaves. Like Booker T. Washington get my full re support any day over some foreigner Catholic named Garvey telling my people to run away from their enemy. And he never been to Africa. And he never been to Africa. Oh, after the day, you're going to look at Garvey different. Let me show you something. Here's a meeting that Garvey had in, uh, what's the name of his building in uh, Oakland? The Liberty Hall building. What do you know, notice about this image? You see the white guy right there overlooking it? What kind of flag did Garvey uh, rock? Garvey didn't walk around with a red, black, and green flag. Garvey walked around with an American flag. Garvey was a fucking patriot. Garvey was a foreign ass immigrant who came over here and loved America because it treats foreigners better than Eidos. He came over here benefiting off his foreign motherfucking benefits, telling blacks to leave. Oh boy, I would have had a beef with that nigga if I was around. Oh man, Garvey would have had to see each other. I would have said, come show me this foreigner who came over here talking that shit. What we need to run. Oh, he got the answer. And he he's a rich foreigner who never been a slave. Talking about he going to challenge our leaders who were born on slave plantations. Oh, man, Garvey would have had to have a talk. I would have been protecting my leaders had I known this, that, that, that Garvey came to do this. Look what Garvey had at his meeting. White people. The dude who told you don't date out and be a separatist and go back to Africa never went to Africa. The dude who told you don't integrate with whites couldn't get enough of them to the point where he had a contract with the Red Cross. Look, this is a Marcus Garvey meeting, y'all. And look at the white dude overlooking it. Look at the white guards and American flag. It don't look like no pro-black shit to me. All the Garvey movement was Christian crosses and American flags, just like the KKK, which is why they built an alliance, because they believe in one God and manifest destiny, just like the NOI. They selling us out on the manifest destiny. Manifest destiny says you could never defeat the white man. It's your destiny to be a loser and just to run away. And what was Garvey's solution? The white man strong, you blacks in America just should run to Africa. When people in Africa is, is trying to uh, run to other lands, they self. It's worse in Africa than here. I just played a video of goddamn Somalian immigrants 
trying to get into Spain by smuggling themselves in fucking mattresses. <laughs> and Garvey telling us to go somewhere where it's worse than where we at. What kind of advice is that? Why would Garvey come to America and die in America? Garvey was born in Jamaica. He died in Harlem. He loved America more than Jamaica, and he never went to Africa. Why would a man who loved America so much that he lived and died here tell black Americans to get the fuck off the land when he couldn't get enough of it? Oh man, wait a minute. We got we got a lot to talk about. Check this out. Let me get my Let me get my uh read on. Hold on. All right, we ain't ready to read this one yet. Like I told you, my order is out of whack, but I got you. We gonna get it in. Now, here is the KKK. Look at how the KKK dress in all white with the Jesuit cross and American flag. Garvey modeled his movement off the KKK. All of the UNIA was modeled after the KKK and the Red Cross. You can look it up and prove me wrong if you think I'm lying. Do your own research. You see, this is Garvey's Black Cross nurses. Again, I'm going to ask you Garveyites, where the fuck is the red, black, and green flag? They seem to be patriotic, bro. Why is Garvey always marching with the American flag and not the RBG flag? How many RBGs you know today are fucking Catholics? <laughs> oh, pipe break. I got to take my time, fam. This is hard work. It's, it's, it's tedious work. Because even though as, as knowledge is power, the truth hurts. The truth is infuriating when you understand the levels of deception. This is the Black Cross nurses. They work with the Red Cross to give black people Spanish flu shots. Oh, my God. Gavi and Booker T. Washington fell out because of them Tuskegee experiments. After the fucking Tuskegee experiments, Gavi vanished from the face of the earth. Garvey, the same year they did the Tuskegee experiments, Garvey stopped talking to black American leaders, broke contact from Booker T. Washington, and they couldn't pay the man to speak out on the Tuskegee experiments. How do you think the Tuskegee Institute got to connect with the Red Cross and all them to do them experiments? It was through Garvey, which is why Booker T. and Garvey fell out. Don't you know Garvey had a, his own newspaper line and the same year we was exposing the Tuskegee experiment, Garvey canceled his newspaper line. Y'all don't know why? Why would Garvey's last issue print of his newspaper line be the same year of the Tuskegee experiment? Because Garvey didn't want to speak out on it. You can't find no records nowhere of Marcus Garvey speaking out against the injustices of the Tuskegee experiment in Alabama. All the black leaders was raising hell about it, but Garvey was silent. Garvey never spoke about the Tuskegee experiment. He went into hiding. The nigga just vanished. He stopped printing papers and everything because he know 
black people gonna wanna know in your next episode is you gonna bring up this Tuskegee shit. He stopped printing them motherfuckers out to Tuskegee. No more motherfucking Marcus Garvey newspapers. <laughs> and he never spoke on it. How can you not? You came over here to help black Americans. You see them biologically destroying us with syphilis. And that shit's still in our community today killing us. It ain't go nowhere. It's here to stay. It's a curse. Garvey know more about the Tuskegee experiments than he talked about, which is why he went into silence on it. Bro, I'm finna break a lot down for y'all today. Hit the like and share button. Anybody want questions or debates? If I have time, I'll open up the lines later. You ever notice how Garvey dressed like the KKK? How his organization resembled the KKK? Garvey's people would march in the same places that the KKK would march in. He had an alliance with the KKK. The KKK wore the same Jesuit cross that Garvey wore, and they were patriots under American Manifest Destiny. The Jesuit agenda. Garvey people had the same symbols, the black cross and the American flag and the all-white robes. They rewrite history. Y'all don't know what was going on. This was, the bro, I swear to God, this was the black clan. The Garveyites that was rising up in America was, was looking at, looked at like aliens to the rest of Ados. The rest of Ados slave descendants was like, who is these new Garveyite motherfuckers? Like, and everybody, uh, Ados was pushing back against Garveyism and Garveyites. Because we knew about our Indian roots to this land. And we didn't agree with going to Africa, running away from the enemy. We agreed with fighting. Garvey was, let me show you some. Here is a picture of Marcus Garvey. Who is this white guy? Are y'all going to act like you don't see this white, di- white guy in a ceremonial dress seated on the right hand of Garvey, so much protected that he got the brothers walking outside protecting the white boy, and he's supposed to be a fucking separatist. How can you be a Catholic and a separatist when Christ was for everybody, when the Catholic Church for everybody, when you worshiping in the church with white Catholics? Why don't we? Why don't the Garveyites today tell us who these white guys was in the UNIA? They act like they don't exist. Who is this damn white guy in the car with Garvey? Have y'all ever been taught that? Who was Garvey working with? Who funded him? Roger Stone encouraged Trump to pardon Marcus Garvey. Don't you know America is pardoning Garvey like they did Harriet Tubman? And they're fucking putting, now in 2020, 2018, they about to put Garvey on a pedestal. Why? Because of what I'm telling you. He was, he was a fucking Jesuit. If he wasn't working for him, why would they be doing all this? I told you, they got a whole memorial in London for Marcus Garvey. White folks in London got a memorial for Garvey. The Red Cross can't thank him enough for his contributions in getting black people vaccinated. Oh, my God. But why don't pro-blacks teach all this, though? Don't y'all want to give Garvey his props? Think this something the black man should know to make us feel good? All the work Garvey did with the Vatican and how many niggas he responsible for experimenting with new medicine on and what the Black Cross was about? 
Shouldn't we be promoting this? Hooray, black power. No, you want to hide this man's accomplishments because it exposes who he really are and why they really like Garvey for real. You think America going to let one man from Jamaica come over here and be deemed a messiah amongst black people when we had fucking 50s to hundreds of strong black leaders who were descendants of slaves already. Bro, we had black leaders over here with they foot on a white man neck and they was Ados, niggas born here in slavery and they was on the white man ass. Garvey came over here telling niggas they should run to Africa. You see why they promoted him above all of our grassroots leaders? Because he was telling niggas to run during a time we said it's time to fight back. And we was building up economically. Boy, when you learn who Garvey really is, you're going to see how much we don't know about real history. Watch how deep it go while I sip my matcha. Show you why the white folks love Garvey. So much so we need to pardon him and honor him like London did. Watch this. Watch this. It's not, it's not over. It's, not a, it's far from over. Garvey came and, and introduced the concept of evolution out of Africa theory, and he said we need to go back to Africa, our homeland. He was promoting Catholic uh, Darwinism which is an old form of Catholicism that all of them damn Maroons practice. He's a Maroon. And if you don't know what that is, I'm going to show you. The Maroons sold us out like the Moors. The Maroons is a black Jamaican uh, group of Jamaican Catholics who've been black Catholics for years in Judaism, a form of Judaism, Catholicism. They basically a black Jesuit order from Jamaica and Halle Selassie was over it. Garvey was the next Messiah after Selassie. And I'm about to play a clip from Bob Marley in a minute to back me up. Now watch this, watch this right here. Uh watch this is what Garvey said. Now, this going to blow you away. Get my likes up, man. Get the likes and shares up. Check this out. Read what I highlighted. Prominent black activist Marcus Garvey once said, and I quote, I regard the KKK, the Klan, the Anglo-Saxon clubs and white American societies as far as the Negro is concerned as better friends of the race than all other groups of hypocritical whites put together. Garvey said the KKK is a better friend of black people than other hypocritical whites. Now guess who Garvey was calling hypocritical whites? White people that was telling black folks the truth. This is y'all land. Y'all need to stand up for yourselves and fight back. Garvey would tell them, no, those whites are just faking like they're your friends. The black man should go to Africa. Now think about this. He said he respect the KKK more than them hypocritical whites. Well, me as a black Ados man, Garvey, I respect them hypocritical whites more than you and the fucking KKK, you punk. You punk. Them, them, what you calling hypocritical whites was telling us the goddamn truth. Stand up for yourself. What you want them to lie to you? The, them white people would have been hypocritical if they would have saying, hey, run to Africa. It'll be better for you. That's hypocrisy, white man. You an immigrant. You telling me to run? You know who was the hypocrite? Garvey. Because Garvey's solution was for us to go to Africa and he never been in his life. <laughs> the people who he calling hypocritical whites 
was telling us to stand up for ourselves. And you know what? When white people got oppressed, they stood up for themselves. So they was giving us advice that they took themselves. And I respect people like that than some foreigner who they can't, who they putting on a pedestal to tell me to run. You a hypocrite, Garvey. You told blacks to go to Africa and you never even smelt African air. Them people who you calling hypocritical whites was telling blacks to stand up for themselves. They stood up for themselves, so they was talking what they preach. Any white man telling a black man to stand up for himself, I can respect them. That ain't no hypocrite. Them the white people I need on my team. They ain't going to sugarcoat it. Look, black man, ain't no way around this. You can either stand up for yourself or perish. Garvey the one time about run away to Africa. And you talking about you respect the Klan more than the white folks telling us to stand up for ourselves. You know why? Because the Klan used to say, won't you niggers go to Africa? The Klan used to tell us to go to Africa. Take your nigger ass back to Africa. And Garvey would say he, and now I see why Garvey made an alliance with the Klan. They both got the same agenda for blacks. The Klan is a group of foreigners telling black people to go back to Africa when they the fucking foreigners. Garvey was a fucking foreigner working with the Klan telling black people to go back to Africa when he was too a foreigner. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. Ain't you tired of folks from other lands coming over here telling you your solution is to run? It ought to be the ultimate disrespect. Of course, a runner would tell you to run. Garvey didn't even make his own land of Jamaican batter. The man from Jamaica and it's a piece of shit. And it ain't white folks oppressing Jamaicans. It's the black Jamaican is a black government all black police, and they beat their people in the street police brutality every day. Garvey came from a land where blacks was oppressing blacks, popping shit like he got the answer for us, and your own people running y'all land can't even treat each other right. <laughs> you a damn runner who ran from the problems of your own land. And you came over here as a runner giving us the only advice your scary ass knew. Run. Run, black man. Run away from your country like I ran away from mine. That was Garvey's message. A man who told you to get out of America died and was buried in Harlem. Came over here from Jamaican dressing like a fucking Jew in a black suit with a cane and a top hat. What kind of black man walk around like a Jew, New York Jew with a black top hat and a cane like Garvey? He was working with the Jesuits. Look at this white dude right here. That's a white man right there. I don't care what nobody say. I want to know who these white folks was who was working with the UNIA and how the fuck is here a black nationalist separatist working with the Jesuits, the Vatican, and the KKK. The biggest, bro, they, they, they said niggas who date out their race can't help black people, but niggas who work with the KKK can. <laughs> a nigga like Booker T. Washington, who fair-skinned, but was born on a slave plantation is down look because Garvey came with the colorism movement that the darker the better. So Booker T. Washington is a very fast skinned man, but he was born on a slave camp in Virginia. And we'll down look him because he fair skinned and because Garvey is a dark skinned man and you will put him above Ados. Boy, they ran a number on us, and we still under it today.
just because your original black leaders who ate us may have been fast skinned or dated out. That's how we ultimately Garvey won. But nobody say, wait a minute, y'all slandered these grassroots black leaders for integration. But none of them made an alliance with the KKK. Garvey did. I'd rather hook up with a black man with a white wife than a black man with a black wife and they family got a fucking contract with the KKK. Garvey had a black wife, but his whole movement was integrated with the Klan. His whole shit was fashioned after the Red Cross and, and funded by the Red Cross. You got niggas who was born on slave plantations who dated out and they start to get, lose credibility as Garvey rose to prominence. A nigga can date as many white women as he want long as he don't fuck with the KKK. Bro, I don't care if you got 10 black wives and you treat them like queens, dude. Fuck you if you rocking with the KKK. I will go get with the dude with 10 white wives. And that's my brother more than you. And you making a black family. Yeah, you, you with a black woman creating black babies who going to go work for the KKK. I'd rather work with the black man with the white woman who create mitts babies who really grassroots for our cause. I know plenty of niggas who dated out who had my back. And every Pan-African I met was a snake. And as a history of shysty niggas in Harlem, Garvey was a Harlem crooked, swindling ass Harlem shysty nigga. The Harlem damn swindling spirit rubbed off on him. He was a scammer. Man, scamming with this pro-black shit go all the way back to Garvey. I'm, a, I'm about to expose all of his scams, how he was stealing money from the people. A damn, the worst devil is a black devil. A damn shame. Watch this. I got to take my time with this, man. Watch this, y'all. Here go Angola's first president and wife. Swirling. Senegal first president and wife. Swirling. Bro, I can go down a list of all the African royalty all the way to Jamaica to show you the history of integration right in motherfucking uh, Marcus Garvey's family lineage. Because Garvey was related to the Frederick Douglass and them, and they was a swirling family. Garvey family got a history of integration, but they made him be the face of a black separatist movement, even though his movement was integrated, just like the NOI. How y'all going to be a black separatist group that's funded by foreigners? All of these agents, man. And y'all don't see this shit. Who is this white man behind Garvey? Because that's a Jew right there. You can tell by the nose and the top hat, the tie. Who is this white Jewish dude behind Garvey? And what ceremony is this? I, I want to know from the Garveyites. When I open up the lines, I want to know. Because y'all never told us who Garvey's white friends were. We never saw these images from people who said they love Garvey. But y'all hiding the man his history. Hiding and taking out what you want to show. Garvey wasn't no fucking separatist. That nigga was more integrated than me. I don't work for the Vatican. I don't know the Jesuits. I'm not funded by the Queen. They don't have a memorial for me in London. The fucking politicians ain't saying they need to pardon our grassroots ADOs leaders. They saying they should pardon a fucking foreigner. What that shit at? Garvey receiving a pardon today. But y'all ain't pardon Emmett Till, none of the slaves and ADOs people. But we're going to pardon Garvey.
who was working for the fucking gap. Man, boy, let's pardon Garvey, a foreigner. A foreigner who's the reason why blacks in the 1900s after the war was guinea pigs because his black cross nurses was giving niggas Spanish flu vaccines and we didn't have no fucking symptoms. Genetically modifying us even back then and our leaders lean us to the slaughter camp, our fake leaders, our appointed leaders. Here is Holly Selassie. Now, this is what y'all need to realize. Marcus Garvey is a Jamaican maroon. It's a Catholic group of Jamaicans. Their form of Catholicism blends with Judaism and the Jesuit religion. They are very loyal to the queen. They worship Haile Selassie and the queen. If you talk to any of these rosters, they'll tell you they love Queen Elizabeth. And I never understood that. I never understood why do rosters and niggas from the UK love the queen. The Moors love the queen. Like a lot of her security were fucking black soldiers. Like Garvey looked up the Holly Selassie. Holly Selassie was a Catholic. Like Garvey and a Jesuit. You see the cross right there? That's the symbol Garvey took. He was heavily inspired by Halassi, who was very integrated with the queen. Garvey had much love for the queen. He wore her signal he worked for. The queen used Garvey to be the face of black separatism, though he really wasn't a separatist. Don't you know Garvey dressed like the fucking Queen's guards? If you look at Queen Elizabeth guards, they dress just like Garvey. He was sent by the Queen to over here as an agent, which is why as soon as he got over here, he ended up getting contracts with the Red Cross. Bro, you know how long niggas been in America and couldn't even think about ever achieving something like that. White folks giving you a contract with the Red Cross for black Ados, black women? No, they let a foreigner use black Ados women in his connection with the Red Cross. Didn't nobody over here have no co connections to the Red Cross? The Black Cross nurses got those connections through Garvey, who was working through the Queen, through the Vatican. That's who, how you think Garvey was able to give all these opportunities. Him and Haley Selassie been sold us out. All of the Jamaicans, look here. They killed Bob Marley for saying too much. I'm going to play an interview with Bob Marley backing up what I'm saying. And Bob Marley actually worshipped Haley Selassie. But he didn't know how deep it go. But he went to go to talking. I'm going to get into it. Watch, watch how deep now. Haley Selassie and Marcus Garvey got something in common. They both wore the same symbol and a tie, and they both were funded by the queen. They both were called a messiah for blacks. But blacks in America didn't call them that. Who gave us these messiahs? And why do we keep accepting appointed leaders? Go research the Jamaican Maroons of the 17th and 18th century, and you will see how the Africans started aiding the British and how the uh, Jamaican Maroons became Catholics and the bond between the Jamaica and British it was established, and they still got that bond. And these Maroons are doing covert work for the Vatican. And they've been doing it since the 1900s and the neo-pagan movement. Blacks in America are having a silent Cold War with the black Jesuits, and we don't even know it. 
They've been leading us to the slaughterhouse while we worshiping them for doing it, thinking they helping us. Marcus Garvey gave black people treatment when we couldn't get no medicines, you fool. We weren't sick. That'll be like juvenile telling you to get the jab today and vax that thing up. Black people when ha didn't have no Spanish flu symptoms. This pre-treatment shit is a deception. I don't take a Tylenol today in case I get a headache tomorrow. <laughs> Y'all don't trust these niggas today telling you to get the jab. But blacks trusted Garvey to get the Spanish flu vaccine. We didn't have no symptoms of it now. We need to educate these ignorant niggas on medicine and evolution and Garveyism and proper treatment centers. And we're funded by the Red Cross. And y'all ain't woke up and saw what Garvey was about. First of all, I'm offended that you think you can come working with the damn Vatican to educate us stupid niggas on medicine and treatment. While we was over here drinking grandma's cooking. See, blacks were not getting sick. We were still making home remedies. Garvey came talking about it's time to educate the Negro in America on new medicines and to get him that they called it the new Negro movement. And it was basically just to get you accept your, the modern science terraformation, practicing new vaccines and the black cross nurses. And uh, bro, it was a fucking agenda. To use you like guinea pigs. And that's why they call him the Messiah. And what was Garvey's symbol? A cross just like Jesus. And what did they send Jesus to do? Heal you. And what did Jesus do? Poison you. They call Garvey the damn Messiah. He wear a cross like Christ. And he came over here talking about healing. Working for the Red Cross. Then disappeared after the Tuskegee experiment. You got black foreigners that don't mean you no good. And they're more valuable than the white enemy because they can blend in with us. The queen got black secret groups that's been spying on us for generations, and we don't even know they're amongst us. Some of them is in your family tree, be at your reunion. They done got into your families. You know how all our families became Christians? A lot of foreigners came here and they wasn't white, bro. They don't want to let you know about the black pilgrims who showed up in top hats. Here they go today, y'all. Yeah, the Knights Templars was, was, was an integrated group. The Knights Templar was a group of agents and contractors working for the queen. And guess what? She contracted all races. In fact, if you was a foreigner, you were more acclaimed by the queen. You made more working for the queen as a foreigner, damn near. They pride you more because you can spy on your people. They see a white, a white dude dressed like this coming into your community. We'll shoot him down a mile away. But an old black dude dressed like that, we'll give him a shot. This is infiltration. These black dudes ain't no different than the white dudes. They own the saints. You can't debate this. You can't debate it. You just can't. You know why? It'll be like seeing a dude in an American uniform saying he ain't an American soldier. You will have to say Garvey was faking like he's a Jesuit, and that's even worse. That's even worse. You, you would have to say, Brother Sanchez, Marcus Garvey looked just like he worked for the Queen because he was still in a uniform. And that'll be a reach, bro, you're lying. Let me move myself so you can see this. Look at the, the Jesuits. They got the Jesuit cross that Garvey wore. Let's blow it up. 
they got the little feathered cone hat with the black suit. Where did Garvey's attire come from? Well, you know the queen had a bunch of motherfucking extra uniforms that she can get to you niggas who work for. <laughs> yeah, they said get them niggas them extra uniforms. And that's how Garvey was, got his equipment. They gave him all the old Jesuit ships. He got all the old shit. <laughs> Why did Garvey walk around dressed up just like a Jesuit with a Jesuit cross? Who was he working for and who funded him? How did a Negro rise to power that quick? And why didn't nothing come out of it for black people today? For Pan-Africanism and corruption. Why the Garvey got a Jesuit cross on and he's dressed like the Jesuits? Why? I want to know. Because we know Haley Selassie was compromised. Watch this. White Jesuits, black Jesuits, white Jesuit, black Jesuit. Come on, Garvey. We, we see you, bro. We know who you was working for. We know, who, nigga, you didn't think of that uniform. How can you be a foreigner? You was raised a rich Catholic with a silver spoon. Listen, there's no poverty Nowhere in the Garvey family's lineage. I've done my research. There's not one person in the Garvey's family blood tree who was ever a slave anywhere on earth. His whole family come from royalty. They were hella rich. Garvey grew up in one of the richest parts of Jamaica. He had opportunities blacks in America could, couldn't even fathom. He come from black royalty, just like Holly Selassie, Nipsey Hussle, and all these folks. The man came over here talking about he want to help the slaves who being oppressed when he never knew oppression. Booker T. Washington knew oppression. W.E.B.B. Du Bois family came from slavery. And I never saw them dressing up like a fucking Jesuit either. And they never made alliances with the KKK. The KKK wore cone hats and the KKK wore the same Jesuit cross that Garvey wore. And, and guess what, bro? The KKK, guess what? The KKK got the red cross, which is what the Knight Templar had. Go look at a red, go look at a KKK uniform. They wear all white robes with a red cross. The KKK is working with the red cross. A lot of these niggas in the KKK own medicine companies, hospitals, and practices. And there's a biological warfare. When you understand that the nigga who treating your son may be a clan member and you don't even know it. Garvey was working with the Red Cross and the Klan to treat black people with Western medicine. Took off after the Tuskegee experiment. Y'all better put this shit together. He got along better with the Klan than blacks in America who he said he was trying to help. Ain't that's what these immigrants do today? They come over here and get along better with white supremacists than with the blacks over here because they want to come over here to compete with us and the white supremacists want to use them to replace us. So when we go to saying what's happening, the fucking black immigrants gang up with the KKK and white supremacists because they got the same damn agenda. Foreigners trying to fucking exploit you. The goddamn Jamaican flag ain't nothing but the Confederate flag. Open your eyes.
Don't you know that the Jamaican flag was inspired by the Confederate flag? And during the fucking Civil War, Britain was funding the Confederacy. Think about it. The South were separatists, but they were funded by Britain and a Red Cross. Wait a minute. Garvey was a separatist and he was also funded by Britain and the Red Cross. Oh, my God. Now you ought to be waking up. The separatist movement been infiltrated since it was even conceived. During the Civil War, the fucking separatist army was integrated with foreigners talking separatism. Garvey came integrated with the same people who funded the Confederacy and the KKK got this same flag. Yo, y'all, the Jamaicans in the same boat with the Moors. They sold us out too. You see what they doing to they people in Jamaica? They treating them worse than the white man. You got folks that want to move from Jamaica to America. They rather be oppressed by the white man here than what is going on in Jamaica. Have you ever heard of what the Jamaican police doing to they people? The Jamaicans rather come over here and face the police brutality that we complaining about. Now think about it, folks. You got Jamaicans coming over here, assimilating with us, blending in, complaining about the white man and police brutality when they come from Jamaica where black police was beating them even worse. <laughs> the fucking hypocrisy. The white police ain't beating us down worse than the black police beating y'all ass in Jamaica. I'd rather the white man put them cuffs on me too tight then they get caught in the wrong alley by the Jamaican police, nigga. <laughs> Bumba Clot, that's right. We ain't through. Let me hit this pipe. Y'all good motherfuckers gonna get it today. Wake up, no beast. What's wrong with you? Challenge me, subliminally or non subliminally. I'll do part two, part three. M matter of fact, it's on now. It's on. It's war on Garveyism. Fuck that shit. The hypocrisy of the fake ass pro black movement to where they around here disrespecting a fucking elder by the name of Barbara Son. Niggas telling you to respect the black woman, but they will allow the black woman to disrespect the elder, a black elder. The black power movement ain't that but hypocrisy. It's a joke. It's goofy. It's hip hypocritical. Most of them niggas got 5013 C's talking about they fucking separatists. Most of them niggas got white folks aiding in their fucking movements and will show you, hey, this is a white boy and he's helping a pro-black movement. This ought to make us blacks look bad that this white man helping a pro-black movement. And that ought to make y'all say, fuck you, bro. I ain't helping you no more since you want to put that white boy on a fucking pedestal. Because black folks been funding these niggas for years and they are yet to respect us for it. The more money we get of pastors and these leaders, the more they talk shit about you in church about how broke you is. When you giving them all your money. And a nigga go right up there and the first white boy give him $10, he put him on camera. Hey, y'all, a white boy just donated to me. Check this out. Y'all ought to feel bad because a white boy donated to me and y'all black and y'all don't. That's a fucked up way to market donations. You lost me with that one. I never donate to you again. Black folks been behind these guys for years. One white folk donate to them and they try to make you look bad and put them on a fucking pedestal. 
funding whole goddamn jets and mansions for the pastor and one white family join a church and make a bullshit donation and they get to go up and speak and tell their whole fucking family history and get invited to the pastor party and all that. Black folks been donating for years, ain't never saw the pastor house. White family join a church, make a little donation. He got them all up on his damn patio. You niggas still doing it today, and it's the pro-blacks do it the most. The coons doing more for black people than any pro-black movement. Long live coonism. Everybody they calling the coon contributed more to black economic success than any of these outer Africa alien talking the evolution pseudoscience ass garvey ass niggas. Talking about some out of Africa and they ain't even fucking moving there they self. The leader of that shit never been to Africa his damn self. I'll take any coon that was born in America from descendants of slaves over any nigga talking about I'm pro-black and he's talking about some out of Africa shit. Nigga, you pro-Africa. That's different. You going to tell me to run to fucking Africa and that ain't what my ancestors died for. They didn't die for their fucking future children to hear from some Garvey to tell them to run to Africa. Bro, the death of my motherfucking Ado's ancestors will not be in vain listening to some bullshit nigga named Garvey. All the blood that was shed here and some foreigner come over here and tell you your solution is to go to Africa. Ooh, nigga, I would have squeezed you little short Gary Coleman fat boy looking nigga. That's what Garvey looked like. Gary Coleman, little short fat black nigga telling why I would have been his worst enemy. I would have been that nigga would have hated me. Bro, don't you know that the word Jamaica comes from the word yarmulke, which is a Jewish hat? Here is the Jamaican coat of arms. Hold that thought for a minute. Let me show you something. Judaism in early Jamaica. Look at here, man. The Jews of Jamaica. This is Garvey lineage. He come from royalty. He's a maroon. Look it up. Look up maroon. After their oppression with the British, they allied and they rose above most colored people today. Eritreans, maroons, Garvey bloodline, them niggas got wealth. Look, did you know that the Jamaican hat come from Judaism bro the hats that the Jamaican wear on the back of their head to cover their dreadlocks is derived from the yarmulke don't you know when you say yarmulke you're saying Jamaica, Jamaica the land of Jamaica is named after the yarmulke hat Jamaica yarmulke Jamaica the whole nation of Jamaica was founded and funded with the help of the Vatican and the Queen. Which is why they flag resembled a Confederate flag, which is why they wear the fucking uh, cross, a red cross, which is why they dress like they work for the Vatican, Jesuits, and which is why Jamaica is named after the Yamaka. Look at this. This is the Jamaican royal leaders with the same Jews we see Donald Trump with. And you want to know why the Pan-Africans are so into politics. Listen, how can, listen, bro, how can you be a Pan-African who teaches that we need to go back to Africa, but you spending generations over here wasting time with politics? You're a pan-African, but you're a conservative. You're a pan-African, but you're a Democrat. 
I thought if you was a Pan-African, your ass supposed to be over there in Africa and not over here talking about no politics. <laughs> Garvey talking about go to Africa is what he told black people. But he spent his whole life over here engaged in political debates. What do the Pan-Africans do today? None of them niggas move to Africa. None of them niggas fulfill Garvey dream. Y'all say y'all Garveyites and y'all still in America engaging into politics and getting 5013 C's with the white man. None of you pro-black Garveyites love Garvey enough to fulfill his dream of taking your ass back to Africa. Garvey didn't even fulfill his own dream. He never been to Africa. So I see why you Garvey who, who went to Jerusalem more than a, 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 a fake Pan-African who never been to Africa. Put a one in the chat room if you can hear me right now and you can see the picture. Put a one. Put a one, guys, if you can hear my voice. Forget the video, just if you can hear my voice. Now, I know the stream buffering, but it's the audio messing up. Now, we getting warned, so that means we good. All right, now stop putting wands, and I, and I got to ask you something else before we continue. Stop it with the wands. Now, what's happening on y'all end? The audio is good, but the video ain't? Let me know, and I can fix it, and it'll be better. If my audio is good, but the video ain't, put a two. If the audio is good, but the video is messing up here and there, put a two. Because if that's what's happening, I can get through that. All right, everything good now? Now, I got one more question and I'll continue. What was I saying when the stream started messing up? Drop ones again if y'all been hearing everything I've been saying. Drop twos if my audio was messed up because now I got to repeat something. One, if I can keep going. Two, if it messed my audio up and I got to repeat something. One, keep going. Two, it messed my audio up and I got to go back and repeat some. Let's do that. Hope that and we'll go. All right, I got ones, which mean my audio good. So I think the last thing I was talking about was the Jamaica yarmulke. Y'all got, man, I wish I could replay this to see that it mess up my audio. Because look, Garvin never went to Africa. And Pan-Africans today never go to Africa. Garvin spent his whole life engaged in American politics. Whenever you saw UNIA marches, they never had an RBG flag. They had an American flag. All throughout Garveyism, you don't see a red, black, and green flag. In this room, this was a UNIA meeting. They should have had an RBG flag, but you got the American flag back there. Garvey was an American patriot and Catholic working for the Jesuits. He had the same idealism of manifest destiny that the KKK had. That's what the NOI sold us out with too. None of these black groups unite with each other, but they all got an alliance with the KKK. That don't make no damn sense. 
All throughout Garvey parades was American flags and Catholic crosses. But it was a movie for black people when his motto was one God. Don't you know what the Catholic church motto is? One nation under one God, indivisible. That's the whole agenda of the new world order, a one God order. They don't want the people to be one. They want the people to be ruled by one God. Garvey was with the Jesuit agenda, man. Why wouldn't his motto be one people, one aim, one destiny? Nope. One God, one aim, one destiny. Nigga, worse than my motherfucking pastor. <laughs> Garvey, time out some. Time out some. One God, one aim. It should be one people, one aim. Whenever we put God before the people, we know we being sold out. We know we being sold out. Yo, if you think one God going to save us, you a joke. Being one people going to save us. Acting as one as a people. Being one people. Not no one God. Garvey movement was flawed from the jump. Jamaican-born black nationalist Marcus Garvey. Look, here go the black Jew from Barbados who worked with Garvey, and, and he composed the, the music for the UNIA. This black Jew inspired Garveyism to adopt Judaism. And how did Garvey do it? Garvey starts saying blacks were the chosen people. This dude would have been like one of your very first black Hebrew Israelites. You see the Judaic star? He was the big, most influential black Jew of his time. And if you ask me, Honor Josiah Ford is the true founding of the Hebrew Israelites, and they don't even talk about him. He influenced Garvey's Judaic outlooks on, on, on revolution. Garvey wasn't talking about no chosen people. Garvey was telling black Americans to go back to Africa. You ain't chosen. The chosen people was promised a promised land, which is why the Hebrew Israelites don't talk about running to Africa. They said we stand here to the Lord help us. Now, I don't agree with the Lord, but I agree on them brothers for saying we stand here and we ain't moving. It's our land. Garvey kept the out of Africa thing to go back to Africa, but he adopted the chosen people shit. God's chosen people was never ordered to go to Africa. I'm convinced that the boule, the original boule, were for our people. I'm convinced that the original boule was for our people, FBA Ados. Yo, you wouldn't have had a black Wall Street without the boule. Like, remember that, you geniuses. We were wrong about everything, black people. Garvey's not no fucking Christ, Messiah. He was the Antichrist wearing the cross of the fucking Vatican. A black Messiah would never be a Catholic. A black Messiah would never ally with the KKK. A black Messiah would never convince black people to receive vaccines. If that's a black Messiah, we in trouble. This the black Jew that got Garvey into Judaism. He had a big influence on Garvey. You can look him up. His name, Josiah Ford. He, he from Harlem. He's a black rabbi. Now check how deep this is. Look at the white Jesuit order. 
This is the Freemasonic white Jesuit order for the Vatican. And think of Marcus Garvey army. Who are these black guys working for with that red cross? And why ain't God, ain't nobody mentioning Garvey with the Tuskegee experiment? Why did they delete Garvey's and Booker T. Washington relationship after Tuskegee? Children of day will never know Garvey and Booker T. was best friends. All the way up to the Tuskegee experiment, then Garvey just stopped calling, man. Like, what happened to our friendship? It was almost like you used me. You got niggas taking experiment with Red Cross vaccines and Spanish flu and syphilis, and then you just leave. Man, Garvey was evil. Garvey was a devil, y'all, I'm telling you. All of these black Jesuits, all of these sellouts, and I know this hurt you, but you got to understand, guys. You got to. The Black Cross was funded. They was trained and everything by the Red Cross. Like, they want to make it like these were some black sisters healing us with our ancestral herbs and stuff like Dr. Sebi. These were a bunch of black nurses giving your ass Red Cross poison under the name of Black Enlightenment and teaching blacks medicine and Garveyism, education. And they was using us like guinea pigs. So I got an article that's going to go into the Black Cross nurses and how they was working with the Red Cross. But let's work our way to it. I want to skip around. What you're looking at in this image are what's called maroon people, and they are the oldest black Catholics in the world. One of the oldest groups of black Catholics. It's black Catholics in the United States and a history of race in the church. You can read this by the Atlantic. Garvey family was one of the first black families to be indoctrinated into Catholicism. And that's why most of your black popes and black priests are Africans. Like you don't got a lot of black Americans in the Vatican mass, bishops and archbishops. All of them be from Jamaica, Nigeria, Eritrean. They got a contract with the Vatican. In other words, the Vatican said we only going to work with a certain select group of niggas to be infiltrators against blacks. And it was the Moors and Pan-Africans and the black Catholic movements. The AME church ain't nothing but the black form of black Catholicism that they was practicing among the Maroons, giving a new name to, to blacks and, and, and FBA. The AME church literally resembles the black Catholics of the maroon culture. They made the whole African Methodist Episcopal off this form of Catholicism that the uh, maroons adopted when they became traitors and sellouts. Nah. Here go what you would have, what Garvey, this is how Garvey grew up, y'all. In order for you to be one of these black children growing up in a Catholic school like that, your family had to have money. Seriously, I'm not even playing. I grew up in Alabama. The black kids who family could afford to send them to the Catholic schools, they went further in life. They bought their way into it. Fucking traitors, man. That's the whole reason why we get mad at black people who move to rich white neighborhoods. Blacks was getting rich assimilating into the Vatican. Garvey family raised him in one of these kind of schools. And this would have been a rich group of blacks. Like these kids you looking at here, they would have went outside to other blacks and they would have been envied. 
like all the other blacks in the world would have looked at Garvey children, like how Garvey grew up, like uppity niggas who were rich. Because our form of Christianity was Baptist church and the Southern doctrine, which is for the poor people, poor black people. Garvey was into Catholicism. Anybody know about Catholicism? It's for rich people. It's for rich people who still want to serve Christ and not be guilty for being rich. They got poor people Christianity, and then they got rich people Christianity. And rich blacks are either Catholics, prosperity preaching, non-denominational, shit that's not going to condemn them for their riches and for them being sellouts. So the rich blacks were more likely to be Catholics. They more, were more what they called intelligent. Why? Because they were more indoctrinated. They looked at us like jungle niggas, indigenous aboriginal niggas. Like they don't know about Western medicine, Catholicism, and Garvey came over here with that uppity mindset. You got to think, Garvey grew up in high institutions of learning that was only available to the most bougiest blacks. So when he came to America saying blacks being oppressed, he put himself above you. Garvey didn't see you as his equal. He even wrote it. He even... Talk bad about black leaders before he even came over here. He was reading about black leadership before he came, and he said he didn't like what they was doing. A foreigner who don't know nothing about our struggle, reading from books of what the Vatican telling them niggas about us, and you know they ain't telling them the right thing. So the Vatican was filling them up in the niggas' heads up like niggas in America is lazy and ain't helping theyself. So Garvey came over here like, y'all lazy and ain't doing this and doing that. And just like the foreigners do today. The Africans come over here today doing the same shit. Competing with us, calling us all these prejudiced things. Lazy. That's how Garvey came over here, these bougie, rich niggas. Working with the, they, they black families who born into the Jesuit priesthood. They always looked at themselves. They look at you like Goyim, just like the damn rabbis, man. Any man, listen, if you followed Garvey, you were called a Garvey child. That show you how much Garvey thought about strong black American Eidos men. Garvey wanted black strong men in America who went through slavery to call him father and he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Oh my God! That nigga never struggled, but he wanted the, the, the bloodline of niggas who really lived that slave life, who come from the bloodline of Eidos, and he got y'all niggas calling him father. Folks calling y'all Garvey children and Garveyites. When that man never struggled in his life. <laughs> Boy. Haley Selassie never struggled. Born in a rich family. And all the poor niggas worship the rich niggas. Same shit with the rappers. They were starstruck by Garvey. He had money, clout, power. But where was it coming from? Who was funding him to usurp the grassroots Eidos leaders? It was the Red Cross and the Vatican, y'all. After the grassroots black movement was dismantled, and niggas had all kind of diseases and flu shots and syphilis shots. Garvey left. His work was done. Garvey went in to live his life out in Harlem. He stopped being active after the Tuskegee experiments. Why? Why? Where is Garvey's speech on Tuskegee? Come on, Garvey Yikes. 
Show me what Garvey said about what happened to them brothers in Tuskegee. He visited the Tuskegee Institute. Surely he would have something to say about it. Like Garvey actually visited the Tuskegee Institute when, when he was cool with Booker T. But you ain't going to speak on a Tuskegee experiment and y'all don't think that shit's weird. Garvey, UNIA movement was part of the League of Nations. And guess what the League of Nations is? A bunch of fucking white men. Y'all ain't hearing me. In the 1900s, this was before the United Nations. In the 40s after World War II, all the African leaders, Jamaican leaders, and sellouts like Selassie, Mandela, Garvey people, all the black royal families made a union with the European Union. The African Union and the EU united. All of the most powerful African nations under the United Nations. Now, prior to the United Nations, they had the League of Nations and Garvey's UNIA was an instrumental group in that league. Y'all better wake the fuck up. Garvey actually did a speech at the League of Nations. They let a black man go up before the fucking European Union. Garvey spoke in front of all these foreign powerful nations. And his UNIA was part of the league. But he was talking about his separatists. But his shit part of an integrated league? Garvey is a separatist, but his shit part of the League of Nations, which is integration with other foreigners, if you didn't know. So Garvey, let me get this straight. Garvey can unite with the white man, but blacks in America can't. Now check it out. Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois were called sellouts by Garvey because they said poor blacks need to unite with poor whites. Garvey called Du Bois and, and Washington sellouts because they were saying it need to be integration amongst poor whites and poor blacks. Garvey didn't like that, but he integrated with the KKK. Oh, my God. Oh, people, y'all don't hear me why I got a beef with Garvey. Listen to me. You should, too. Listen up. The boy and them was telling us, poor whites and poor blacks need to come together. And Garvey said something wrong with that. That's cooning. How? How? If poor whites facing the same enemy we facing, that makes sense to me. But y'all call that cooning today. We ain't coming together with no poor whites. But Garvey came together with the KKK and the League of Nations and the Vatican. So let me get this straight. I get it, you pro-blacks. Y'all won't integrate with poor whites, but y'all looking for 5013 C's and to get paid from rich whites. Just ask young Pharaoh. I hate to do it to him. Ask polite. These pro blacks get rich and move to Beverly Hills and not Africa. These Garvey dudes get rich off of preaching that out of Africa shit. And they move to California on y'all ass. <laughs> Pharaoh called himself a Pharaoh and he buying mansions in America and not in Egypt. <laughs> Marcus Garvey told blacks to go to Africa, but he don't own no land or no property in Africa. He was buying up property in America gentrifying our hoods just like the white man. Garvey is a big ass hypocrite. Where his buildings at in Africa, y'all? 
Garvey Institutions is, is in motherfucking Harlem. He didn't even build shit in his hometown of Jamaica. Garvey took advantage of America's, how they was treating immigrants and putting them above blacks. Think about it. The immigrants today come to America and take advantage of immigrant benefits and they own buildings and stores and mosques and their religious temples. Garvey did the same thing. That nigga came over here broke, assimilated with the black cause, and ended up getting more money from the government than any Edo slave. And y'all mad at the Jews for getting reparations, and we didn't. When they gave Garvey, everything they gave that one man, had they would have gave to Edo's, we'll be free. Ships and all that. But you give it to one man because you can control him. Garvey came over here and took off way ahead of niggas who been here and then tried to make it like because he was smarter than us and not because, nigga, you funded and you an implanting agent. And the Africans do the same shit today. They come over here and get ahead of us and act like it's because they smart and we lazy and ignorant and not because of government programs for immigrants. Watch this. Let's talk about the Black Cross nurses. And let me show you how out of shape Garvey was. What kind of Messiah looked like that? Didn't nobody tell Garvey he looks like an out of shape little pig who needs to do some sit-ups and stop fucking eating pork? Black people, Magi listen, black people's Messiah is an out of shape little fat man. This is a joke, y'all. This is a fucking joke. Do you see that stomach? Did you even do physical training and workout? Nigga, you wore a military uniform. I know you did PT, right? How you a fat general? You ain't even fit for combat. How you going to lead into war? Care what y'all say. And I don't care who don't like it. He wasn't fit for the position in no way or form. Physically neither. Give a fuck who don't like it. <laughs> Following this little short, fat Gary Coleman looking nigga. And he led you right into destruction. These niggas' leader is Gary Coleman. <laughs> Y'all suck, boy. Y'all niggas ain't got no power and no nuts. Letting these for a little fat foreign man made the black man in America who went through slavery call him father and Messiah. Y'all niggas weak. I be damn, nigga. If a rich Nick foreigner who never struggled going to make me call him a Messiah. Oh, let's talk about the Black Cross nurses. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it for you right now. Don't worry. Show you the medical agenda. It's about to get deep down. All right, where my next slide? And we're going to get into the UNIA and the KKK. All that we're about to get into now. I got so many tabs open. I got to see where I put my information on the Black Cross nurses and then we even we got to talk about Tariq Nasheed old post. He been talking about this. Same shit I'm teaching y'all. Tariq been on it. I rock with Tariq, my nigga. 
I don't care what nobody say. Tariq, if you ever hear this, bro, I'm sincere. Now, hold on, y'all. Because, hold on, I might have to scroll down a bit. Because it's about to get very deep when you read about the Black Cross nurses. Watch this. Look, Black Cross Nurses, officially the Universal African Black Cross Nurses, is an international organization of nurses which was founded in 1920 based upon the model of the Red Cross. Now watch this. It'll show you that when the Spanish flu started spreading, the Black Cross and Red Cross openly came out with their union working together to vaccinate blacks. And I'm about to go to it now. I had the article up a minute ago. The Red Cross actually give the Black Cross nurses credit in their history for their aids and in, in the... Uh, agenda behind with the black cross wait a minute yo i got so much stuff open now y'all see why them white folks was with garvey to get you medicated all right let me find this black cross thing and we're gonna go deep all right let me shut some of these tabs and that way i can find it better All right. Look at here. This is on the Red Cross website. Recognizing three Red Cross women who preserve African American History Month. Look, a lot of these nurses were black nurses who worked for the Red Cross and they went to be Black Cross nurses for Garvey. If you read about the Black Cross nurses, most of them work for the Red Cross, but since they was black, they did free work, donating work for Garvey's movement in the community. It, it is like the day. All the 5013C pro-black movements are saying, hey, can black nurses come educate us on COVID and give us free jabs? And just because it's a black nurse and black woman, you still getting poisoned, by, but by your own people. So a lot of those Black Cross nurses got their training from the Red Cross, which why it was modeled after them. The Red Cross actually, this look, we're on the Red Cross website. What I'm telling you is that the Red Cross uh, honor the UNIA and Black Cross. Did you know that? The Red Cross honors Marcus Garvey Black Cross nurses because it helped give black people the first vaccinations we ever got. Did you know that the first vaccines we ever got was given to us by black women agents? People, this is sad. They used our own people to introduce Western medicine to us in the 1900s. And this is why they love Garvey so much. You read about these Black Cross nurses, brother, they done more for the Red Cross than the Red Cross done for themselves. Like the Black Cross nurses done for the Red Cross what the Red Cross could never do. You think, see, black people was used to having the Red Cross as a bad stigma. We ain't trust the Red Cross in the 1900s. So the Red Cross created the Black Cross to get the poisons into us with the first Spanish flu shots under the Garvey's UNIA. Blacks were massively vaccinated for Spanish flu, and they didn't even have symptoms. 
preventative education was being taught with Garvey Institution. That nigga is evil. He's evil, y'all. You don't see this? The Red Cross to this day prides the Black Cross nurses of Garvey more than any other women's group in the Red Cross. Do your history, black women. When black cross nurses allied with Red Cross when the pandemic hit in the 1900s. And Garvey was at the forefront of it and then got the hell up out of here after the Tuskegee experiment. Watch this. Think this site going to talk about it. I had a good site earlier, but I lost it. Watch, I'm going to find it when this shit over. Here go the leader of the Black Cross Nurses, and she looked like a Mitz woman. But we're going to talk more about her later. Don't she look like a Catholic nun? Like Garvey was starting a Black Catholic movement. It wasn't no Black Power movement. His motto was one God, not one people. It wasn't no fucking fist and RBG flag. It was a Red Cross logo and an American flag. I don't know what Garveyism you niggas practice in the day, but that was not who Marcus Garvey was. He was a Catholic. All of you Garveyites, y'all are imposters. Why ain't y'all Catholics? Garvey went into Kemeticism and Egyptian shit. Garvey never went to Africa, but he went to fucking the Holy Land and Rome and London where the Vatican at. Garvey never wore an unk, but he wore a cross. I'm going to mop the floor with y'all niggas. I'm going to make you do something to me. Oh, it's, if it's war, I'm going to win. My mouthpiece the sickest. I'm going to mop the floor with you niggas. And I'm just getting started. I'm, I might do this shit in parts, too. Fake-ass movement. Counterproductive, silly-ass movement. Begging the white man for coding and shit. Passing out motherfucking shoes when I can show you children right now. You got goddamn children in the jungle building their own fucking houses barefoot. You American niggas suck. All of you pro-black, wanna look tough niggas and all that who don't know nothing about war other than street shit, sit down. You don't know about grenades and bombs going off and real survival shit. You street niggas with joints who wear cologne and you look good. You look goofy like the motherfucking dip set did on stage. Soft, pretty ass niggas. That's what's wrong with the black man in America. You got kids overseas building their own fucking houses barefoot. And y'all worrying about the kids getting shoes in America. Our kids got shoes but can't build houses, stupid. I'd rather our children be barefoot and build houses. I trade. These niggas can have these every pair of shoes I got to give me my land and let me build on it like I want with resources in my own architecture. Bro, I'd rather see my children walking around barefoot and they know how to build their own houses than have them with J's on and they renting and they asking a white man for everything. We're soft. We're so behind. Black men in America are the most softest niggas on earth. And we act hard and look hard. (laughs) 
Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with giving out shoes. I'm just saying, these kids ain't worried about shoes. You know what? Them kids... Sorry, y'all. Hold up. So check it out, right? These kids woke up and weren't thinking about no shoes, man. They woke up and asked their daddy for wood. Fuck some shoes. That's my point. We think we happen by giving these kids shoes. Let me tell you what folks did to me when I was little. If I needed some shoes and my mama couldn't afford them, I can go to my uncle and he'll say, paint that patio. Go cut that grass and you'll get them shoes. It'll always be some difficult task that I had to do. Nothing wasn't given to me. Like salutes to Kwame Brown, but we're handicapping these children. It ain't like motherfuckers walking around in America barefoot. Show me some American children that's barefoot like these kids. Guess what you gonna show me? Some American kids with raggedy shoes on and they need new shoes because them raggedy. It's kids, most of the kids in the world don't have shoes at all. And we start crying when our kids' shoes get a little scuff on them. Like we're so soft and, and our priorities is so fucked up. Giving these kids shit ain't helping them. They just going to learn that if they can't get it from you, when you stop, they going to go right back to Uncle Sam. They'll never be independent like these children I'm showing now. Don't nobody get them shoes and they barefoot. Kids in America get too much shit handed to them. Backpack drives and shoe drives. Back in my day, if you didn't have a backpack as a child, your little ass went and cut some grass, man. You couldn't sit on your ass and just with you. At 16, I had a job. At 16, I was paying for my own school supplies. At 16, I was buying my own erasers and crayons. And binders. Handouts is our worst enemy. And I don't give a fuck who giving them to you. The Red Cross or the celebrity. The best thing can happen to a motherfucker is to let them hit rock bottom. That's what happened to the Jews, didn't it, in them concentration camps. And you see where they at now. I can't wait till they line niggas up into camps. Maybe that's when we'll get the picture that we all we got and where it take the win. Too many handouts, too comfortable. You ain't been in a situation like the Jews. I don't care who like what I'm saying. Because if you keep hearing the same shit for generations and we're going to keep getting the same results, we need a radical change. And God damn it, it don't get no radical than what I'm telling you, Rich. Yeah. Pro blacks think they radical. This is radical. You niggas sellouts. Y'all ain't nothing but black Catholics. Y'all follow a fat Gary Coleman looking Jesuit Catholic for your leader who told you to run from your oppressor, cowards. Garvey was a fucking hypocrite who never went to Africa but told niggas to do it and got paid for doing it. These pro-blacks got 5013 C's talking about go back to Africa, but they over here asking for donations. Engaged into politics. 
But if you fall a garbage, you need to be loading up your ass up getting over there to Africa. Why are you over here debating niggas about Africa when y'all supposed to be building kingdoms in Africa according to Garvey? No, you niggas building kingdoms on YouTube. You ain't went to Africa and you over here talking about swirling and who niggas dating out. The same shit Garvey was doing. Foreigners come over here and try to think they can tell black men who they can fuck. Bro, if I didn't even like white women, if I hated white women, if I was not even attracted to white women, if Garvey would have came over here and told me as a black man, don't fuck white women, I would have found the first Becky I can find just to show him, nigga, you don't tell me what to do, you fucking foreigner. It was white women and white men abolitionists helping us get free. Show me the African niggas who helped us get free. Africans ain't never helped us. Had white abolitionists doing it before Africans. I get cool with a poor white man for some strange nigga who don't know nothing about America coming over here telling me who to date and what not to do and to call him a fucking messiah. Are you serious? Bro, I would have slapped that feather so far down the street of Harlem. Nigga, I would have found the first white woman I can find just to say, what you going to do, you foreigner? How dare you, nigga, telling me to call you a messiah and you telling me what I can do with my dick and what my problem is and what the solution is when you was born with a fucking silver spoon. The man telling you not to date out when his wife performed for white people. Marcus Garvey's wife was a singer and artist who performed for rich white people. And we about to get to that. Bro, they built black Catholic churches all in the early 1900s under the Garveyism. The AME Church, Bishop Ernest Anacofa, this was a black dude who wasn't even from America. Look at his name. This bishop was affecting black Catholics. How, how did he affect them? Because he was giving them their own form of Catholicism. Let me show you how coonish Garvey and them family is. They was fighting to practice the white form of Catholicism. What they gave to these black niggas was a black form of Catholicism that incorporated Darwinism and told blacks we was monkeys from Africa and the lucid bones of the monkey people. This is the history of them calling us monkeys. You ever notice Africans don't get mad when you call them a monkey? Because they worship the monkey god. And calling them a monkey is just telling them the whole world come from them. Why would they get mad? The same reason... Black people don't get mad when they teach us that we were the first humans. But when they show you the picture of the first humans, it's a monkey man. Joke's on you, nigga. <laughs> you like being a monkey. Garvey didn't think about that. The, them black maroon Catholics in Jamaica felt some kind of way that they couldn't practice the form of Catholicism that the whites practice. They told them black Catholics, we going to give y'all y'all own Messiah. And that's where Garvey and Haile Selassie come from. That's why they were Catholics. That's the concept of the black Messiah religion. It's a real religion. Haley. 
and Garvey is like Adam and Christ to us. This is the AME church. This is the whole pro-black merging with Catholicism. How can you have a bunch of niggas saying, we going to get free and Christ going to be the reason why? God, the whole movement was a religious movement. You looking up the Gavi and his ass praying to Christ. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks, my nigga. Check this out. However, his black separatist views and his relations with white races such as the Ku Klux Klan to advance their shared interests and racial separatization, se segregation. This is why Garvey allied with the KKK. When Garvey allied with the KKK, all of the black grassroots leaders went after him. They said, oh no, this is the ultimate disrespect. Not only is he a foreigner over here trying to tell us what to do while working for our enemy, he just allied with our enemy, and he got a lot of our people with him allying with our enemy. KKK, Red Cross. It was a separatist movement, all right? He was separating Ados from Pan-African. Because of Garvey, let me show you what we got today. Black Americans are separated between FBA and Pan-African. That's the split. Indigenous Aboriginal versus RBG Garveyism. We've been divided ever since that foreigner brought his ass over here. Fucking divided us. We never had the, these arguments. Now some of our people think they from Africa and some of them saying, niggas, we always been here because of Garvey. He didn't help. He brought more confusion. And he split us up in a way where we ain't never fixed it yet. We still separated because of what Garvey done. And he, was a sep and he, he said that he was a black separatist group. But he wasn't separating blacks from whites. He was separating blacks from blacks. He was separating and dividing up, putting chaos in the black community. A foreigner came to America making us argue with each other. I hate us, man. We can never go to Jamaica and do to them what Garvey did to us. You think I can go to Jamaica where they getting oppressed and tell them, I know y'all problem. I got y'all solution, and I'm y'all Messiah. <laughs> I'm going to stand up against the Jamaican government who oppressing y'all Jamaicans. You know what the Jamaicans going to say? Did you stop oppression in America first? That's what they're going to say. And when I say no, they're going to laugh at me. You think I can just show up in Jamaica and say I'm here to end y'all oppression. I'm the black Messiah. And Jamaica just started worshiping me. But yet this Jamaican can come do it in America. I would have to convince the Jamaican people that I know their struggle more than them, y'all. And that's why people didn't like Garvey at first. A man whose family had never been in slavery came over here arguing with, with, with niggas who been through that shit as if he know it all. He was in debates with people who, whose family were slaves and his family were slaves. Make that make sense. How this foreign nigga who grew up with a silver spoon know everything about oppression now? 
to the point where he know the solution for us, but he didn't fix Jamaica. Y'all gullible, man. Y'all fucking gullible, man. All of this shit was taking place in one city, Harlem. Harlem is like one of the black sellout meccas of America, New York period. The whole Harlem Renaissance movement was just our whole fucking indigenous sovereignty history being overridden. You had a bunch of niggas who can trace their roots back to the South, moving to the North, talking about we from Africa. Bitch, you from Mississippi. <laughs> you had a bunch of black sellouts who was getting educated in those early Vatican Bible schools in the South. Once you receive your education, you can move up North as a free nigga. All the educated niggas went up north. The education they received in the south taught them that they came from Africa, even though they know we come from the south and we indigenous. But in order for you to move up to Harlem and be a free nigga in the north, you had to agree that we came over on slave ships. So all the educated niggas that went up north, they didn't tell people they come from the south. They started saying, yeah, us blacks from Africa. No, nigga, you from Tennessee. You from South Carolina. You from Mississippi. You from Florida. There's not one, bro, 80% of all the blacks in New York come from the South. A very small, like 10% come from Jamaica, Africa. Most of them niggas in Flatbush and Marcy Projects they can't trace their shit back to Africa. It'll go back to Mississippi, y'all. It'll go back to Birmingham and Georgia. And they don't want to admit that. Because when you got educated and you moved up north, you wanted to hide your slavery roots. Because people equated slavery to dumb, slow, just like they do with the South today. Niggas went up north and sold out. Forgot where they came from, as we call it. You niggas went up north and forgot where you came from. Dude, it's hard to get a New York nigga to admit they southern roots. I know what I'm talking about. I lived in Flatbush. I speak with these niggas. If you start getting into these niggas' southern roots, they'll laugh it off and bring up some pan-African shit, some out-of-Africa shit. Bro, like, don't laugh. Like, why are New Yorkers ashamed of their southern roots so much so they rather be from Africa? And we know that's a lie. We know niggas ain't get to the north from Africa. You came from the South. Why won't you say that? Why don't you admit that? Why is that embarrassing to you? Even to this day, it's hard to get a New York nigga to admit they Southern roots. You damn near have to fight them. So Marcus Garvey movement is what gave birth to the Rastafari movement, the Nation of Islam, and the Black Power movement. And you know some about all these groups? They all have an alliance with the KKK. You didn't know the Rastas did too? Yeah. Rastas cool with the KKK. You didn't know that? Y'all learning a lot today. Y'all learning a lot today. <clears throat> Hold on a minute. Nah, it was Garvey 
who coined the term African diaspora. Here's a map of it. The African diaspora is the worldwide collection of communities descended from native Africans or people from Africa, predominantly in the Americas, which is a fucking lie. Garvey pushed the lie. The whole there is no fucking African diaspora. It's a lie. The African diaspora is all of the highlighted places there that's dark that show where the slaves went from Africa. The darkest places is where the slaves come from, which is Africa. And then they went to these areas and darker, the, the more slaves there. This map is a lie. This map is a lie. You want me to tell you how it's a lie? You don't even see London highlighted in, in Garvey's uh, bloodline and family traced back to London. The, the, the uh, maroon people from Jamaica have people in London too, which was why Garvey was honored in London and went back and forth to London. They the oldest black Catholics was in Africa, not America. In other words, guys, the rise of blacks becoming Catholics didn't become a thing to Garvey. They started building Catholic churches in the ghetto after Garvey. AME churches was popping up everywhere. I got a whole list of church movements that was inspired by Garvey. The nigga ain't do nothing but build more churches. You think that's help? Mo Christ? Mo Vatican? How is that helping us? And what the fuck is a diaspora if we're indigenous to America? That shit is laughable. Fuck the diaspora. You know, we got to connect with black people in the diaspora. Niggas want to sound deep. You know the diaspora. You know that include, you know, the diaspora. Niggas think you talking about Neil Sporin. <laughs> you know the diaspora, the shit you put on your wounds to heal your wounds. You meant that's Neil Sporin. The fuck the hell is a diaspora? Ain't no fucking diaspora. You know, because black people all across the diaspora got to work together. Black people can't work together in the project building they in. Niggas in Chicago can't work together with each other. You talk about we got to fix ourselves first, then let's stop focusing on African problems and foreign shit when niggas in the hood can't get along. How the fuck we're going to get along with the diaspora when niggas can't get along on one street block? Garvey couldn't even get along with the black man who was here trying to help our people. Garvey want us to get along with blacks in the diaspora when he didn't even get along with blacks in America. Every time you turned around, he was beefing with black leaders. And I'm riding with the Black Ados leaders. Fuck these foreigners. And anybody going against me, you a traitor and a sellout. And if the war happened, FBA going to be the deepest. And we going to cut the heads off of all of you fucking traitors. And ask you why the fuck you ain't go back to Africa if you love it so much. You care so much about getting along with niggas in Africa and you calling black men in America dusty. That's what these Pan-Africans doing. They get along well with them niggas in, 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 in the Dogon and go to Nigeria and get along, then come over here and argue with niggas. Dusty. Black men in America hate each other, but we love Nigerians. We love Kenyans. Man, them niggas will sit down on the ground and eat out of the bowl with them elders. And then you invite them to your house, they want to know if your spoon's clean.
them niggas will go to Africa and eat off the dirty ass plates that the Dogon got. It ain't even clinked with soap. I saw it. They got it on video. I saw them niggas eat with these African folks, and I'm looking at their face, and I'm like, he really don't want to eat that shit. Everybody's sticking their hand in the bowl. You're trying to fit in so much with these foreign Africans. You doing nasty shit, bringing diseases back here. All of you Pan-Africans. You will sit down with these dirty Africans, and I ain't trying to joke on them, but y'all call us dirty. You will literally sit down with these people and eat in the most unsanitary conditions with them to fit in. But you will joke on a nigga who didn't wash his dishes when you get back from Africa. You will come back home from Africa and joke on your homeboy because he didn't wash dishes. And you just ate off the ground with the dough gun. <laughs> you niggas try to fit in so much with the Kenyans, they got y'all niggas eating rat meat and monkey meat. And you come over here, and you niggas from America. And you hate other black men who from your American country like you. You rather go overseas, eat off the ground with the Nigerians, and you'll get along with the Dogon better than you get along with the niggas you grew up with in your hood. We got to unite with the diaspora when the co black country's community ain't united. NOI can't even get along with other black groups. Black men ain't united. But you want us to unite with the Dogon, the Kenyans, <laughs> the Nigerians. <laughs> yeah, but you say we got to fix ourselves first. Well, let's do it then. That include these black foreigners too. Cut them off. If we're going to be separatists. Yeah, them niggas would go over there and eat off the ground and let the air to feed them in their mouth. Yeah, them niggas would let the Dogon elder, that old man with them dirty fingernails, reach in that bowl and get you some shit until you open up, American, and feed you that shit like your daddy. <laughs> So let me get this straight. You would rather have dinner with the Amistad family than with your brother down the street, my nigga? So you got cool with Amistad before Ray Ray, who you live with. You went way to Africa to meet Kunta and Amistad because you couldn't get along with Tony. Black men. <laughs> Niggas can't get along with each other, but we can get along with motherfucking voodoo witches who sitting up there sacrificing goats and shit in Africa. Man, them Africans' religion is more scarier than the white man shit. I'd rather be a Catholic than go and practice voodoo with them Africans. They cutting the neck off of goats and shit, drinking the blood, and y'all want to go up under that. You'd rather hang out with a nigga drinking the blood out of a goat neck because you can't get along with your brother next door. Well, it's fucking sad. That's just fucking sad. You sitting your black ass in the jungle next to some niggas drinking the fucking blood out of the neck of a goat. Talking about black power. We got to connect with the diaspora. I can get along with the goat drinking blood, man. 
more than I can get along with you dusty niggas in America. Really? I don't mind kicking it with Ray Ray. But if you told me to go and show up with the nigga drinking the blood out the goat neck, I can't really kick it with them. I can get along with my American brother just fine, goddammit, if you gave me the option of goat man. Shit, that's an easy one. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Me and Ray Ray argue a bit, but if Ray Ray cut the neck on a goat and start drinking that shit, me and him won't have to argue no more because I won't be around Ray Ray no more. Yeah. I don't care if I'm an African, I get along just fine with them folks. The moment they cut that goat neck and eat that shit and do that voodoo shit, you just lost a friend. <laughs> I don't give a damn how good we connected. I just saw you cut that damn harmless little goat. They would have said, oh, American, man, you crying. Yeah, man, that, you didn't have to do that goat like that. That the, the fuck that goat did to you. And it's sitting there choking on his blood while you suck it out his neck like a fucking fool. And you got Pan-Africans over here talking about, this what we need to be on. This our culture. We need to hook up with the deal spoiler. Y'all niggas lost, man. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with the deal spoiler. You can keep your goat, man. I'm cool with Ray Ray. We may argue, but guess what? Ray, me and Ray Ray will hug like a mother, motherfucker if they say we're going to put y'all over there with Goat Man. Nigga, me and Ray Ray will stop fighting so quick. No, I'm sorry. We get along. That's my brother. Look, we kissing. Nigga, I'll kiss Ray Ray on the mouth if they tell me, nigga, Okay, y'all can't be friends. You going over to the diaspora with Goat Man. Come here, Ray Ray. We buddies, nigga. <laughs> you can get along with Goat Man before you get along with your brother. Boy, we sad. We sad. And this ain't even a shot at Africans. I'm just telling the truth. I don't give a fuck who the truth hurt. Somebody got to tell it. I tell it. I tell it. Hit me, Becky. I can't, I tell it and won't give a fuck who don't like it, Becky. That's why I'm chosen to do this. Goddamn diaspora. Fuck is a diaspora. See, we need to be working together with Africans in the diaspora. What's the diaspora, my brother? Well, the diaspora. You know what I'm talking about, Sanchez. No, brother, what's the diaspora? The place where blacks get together, you know, and, and just, you know, protecting the diaspora, man. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they just love to say the word. Diaspora. Niggas sound so smart. You know what we need. And it is always some nigga come in like he finna come with some new shit. And it be the same watered down shit, right? He say this. He be like, <clears throat> well, I've been listening in. And I think one of the solutions for blacks in America is to learn to work with Africans in the diaspora. And you know, every time they say diaspora, they got to do this. And everybody go crazy like he's smart. That's the solution. Yeah, man, that's what we got to do. We got to learn to work together with Africans in the diaspora. Even though we can't get along with each other, though. <laughs> go.
Garvey couldn't get along with black men, but he got along fine with the KKK. Garvey couldn't get along with the black leaders and respect our movements that we had over here. He felt like he had to come challenge us. Why do these foreigners come challenge our grassroots movements? Because that is not aiding our movements. You know what? They challenge them because they want to undermine your movements and replace them with their own. I don't trust none of these foreigners that's coming over here with their own movements when we already got movements. That'll be like me going to Jamaica telling the people who've been fighting their government for years, fuck your movement. It's about my movement and I'm the Messiah for your people. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, brother. We've been having revolutionary groups for hundreds of years in Jamaica. You're just not going to come over here and replace our movements with yours. If you want to help, you can join our movement. That show you Garvey was a piece of shit. The man came with his own movement. He didn't come to help ours. He came arrogant. Why would I go to somebody else's country with my own movement and undermine the people who've been fighting the struggle in that country for years? Talking about I'm helping. No, I'm a, if I'm really helping, I'm going to go and join their movement. And I'm not going to be trying to be the fucking Messiah. I'm going to shut the fuck up and, and ask them what can I do to help. How the fuck I'm going to just show up, undermine your movement, give you my movement. Now I'm y'all Messiah. Bro, you talking arrogance. Y'all wouldn't even let that happen today. Y'all wouldn't even let that shit happen today. Y'all are run a nigga right up out of here today. If it was Garvey today. All of the blacks who said they like Garvey, if he showed up today, they would hate him. If they really knew who he was. He couldn't get a, any black man in America trying to stand up for blacks became an enemy to Garvey. Why, bro? You supposed to be working with our leaders, not trying to overthrow them. You're a foreigner. Have some respect. Garvey couldn't get along with black men in America who was trying to help our people. But Garvey got along with the League of Nations, which is a bunch of white men who said they trying to help our people. Garvey couldn't get along with the black leaders who said they was for black Americans who was FBA, but he got along with the Red Cross who said they was trying to help blacks. Garvey made alliances with all the groups who said they was trying to help blacks who we didn't trust, like the Red Cross, the Vatican, the Jesuits. And he went against all the leaders that we could trust, who we know was grassroots, who we know come from descendants of slavery. He undermined those Ados leaders and allied with the KKK and the Red Cross. And you don't think Garvey was the biggest devil and fucking traitor in all time? Let's see about this smoke. At this time, we about to turn up, y'all. It's time to open up the phone lines. It's time to open up the phone lines. And I'm going to let callers come up one at a time to say what you got to say. So if you disagree, this your time to do it. So I'm going to take a one-minute break. And I'll, and I'll, in that, well, maybe one or two minutes, and that's going to give them time to click the link and fill up the queue line, and I'm going to start bringing in the callers one at a time.
So here we go, moderators. Let's spam that link. Let's play some music. We're going to play one song. And when the song go off, that'll give y'all enough time to, to get on the call, set up your headphones. We're going to listen to one song. And that'll give you time to get your call set up and get ready for the call in. Be right back. Niggas can't make beats like that because that kind of mellow darkness ain't in you. Only a nigga that come from Bama where the slaves died at, where the dirt is red because of the crimson tide, the blood of the slaves. Niggas up north can't tap into struggle energy. It's gothic energy, corporate energy, like complex big words, no feeling. Boom bap ain't got no feeling. I love New York. I used to fucking idolize Brooklyn till I realized I'm selling myself short. I'm a South nigga. Like we got feeling in our shit. Niggas in the South ain't never been on that Pan-African sellout Masonic shit. They wouldn't even let us in the game yet. I know one thing. 
you can see where the real soul of black folks at is in the South. That's why we running the music today. Did you see Dipset? Dipset versus Outkast. Oh, y'all don't want to do it. They don't want to do the North versus South versus. Yeah, let's do the Lots, which is one of my favorite groups. Versus Outkast. Let's do the Lots versus Dungeon Family. Let's do the Lots. Come on, well, let's do it, man. Let's do Devin the Dude versus Noriega. Y'all forget early South music was organs and like, bro, you can't make the kind of beats I make because that shit ain't in you. Like that's part of my roots and DNA. Like the way to use them bass drums like that and to get that kind of creepy vibe like that. Like that nigga, I'm a creep. I come from where chopper play happened. I come from where motherfuckers was burnt like you can still feel the anger of the slaves in the south that goes into my music man like i don't know i'm just happy i didn't migrate to the north and become a sellout i'm so happy salutes to my cats up north who ain't sellouts who proud of their southern history who represent their southern history above their new york moving Cause I would never rep Las Vegas over Bama and you should never rep New York over where the fuck you come from in the South. I don't care where you born at is where you from. If you New Yorkers can rep Africa, you surely can rep your Southern roots cause you ain't from Africa. You're from the South. And, and it seemed like New York niggas will only rep the borough or Africa. They'll never say, you know, we from the South, man, and we moved up North during the Harlem Renaissance and migration. You'll never get that out of a New York nigga. It's either they gonna rep the borough or Africa, or either some new whopping and shit, some 5% nation shit, but they'll never rep their Southern roots. And until you niggas start to do that, I'm gonna be on your ass. And I notice none of you cowards click the link. You know why? Because I'm the real motherfucking black Messiah. Garvey wasn't black. Every black man in that chat room is the black Messiah. If Garvey came back today trying to get us to call him Messiah, it'll be a fight, nigga. Straight like that. And I said it. Calling that fat dude no fucking Messiah, foreigner. Fuck wrong with y'all, nigga. I'm insulted. Every black man that's in Eidos, we the fucking black messiahs. That nigga should have said he's the Jamaican messiah. Why the fuck wouldn't you trying to say Jamaica? Why wouldn't you Jamaica's messiah? That shit falling apart coming over here trying to be the black messiah. Nigga, we already got black messiahs. Go say Jamaica. You're a Jamaican messiah, nigga. What up, Big Dread? How, how your mic doing? Salutes, bro. Let me get... My check, my check. Hey, hey, thank you for joining, yeah. man. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. I'm going to mute up and let you go in and say what you got to say. Don't look like no smoke going to come because how you going to debate niggas like me? <laughs> go ahead. You got it, bro. I'm going to mute. You already, you already, yeah. You already know what time it is. Um, but to answer your question, I know why he ain't, he ain't do, pull that shit in Jamaica because they would have they would have you know would have murked his ass up there. He felt like he could come to the United States because he looked at us as gullible and stupid. He like, well, I go over there, I can make, I can know I can make money off them. The Jamaicans wasn't having that shit, man. If he would have pulled that over there, they would have smoked his ass. It's just point, point blank and simple. So he knew what he was doing. And then all the all the connections that he had, you feel what I'm saying? Especially with the boulet and all that other bullshit, you feel me? 
So he already knew he could come over here and do do us the way he did us. And it's crazy that people can't see the um that this man started all this this scamming bullshit too. The same shit that Umar is doing right now. It's the same shit. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop this old. We need a a leader or, or, or a messiah and start being our own goddamn leaders. And start making our own moves, man. This shit is ridiculous, my nigga. Every, every leader that we don't have, I don't say every leader, but the majority of leaders that we don't have, bro, not one of them got us out of this shithole. You know what I'm saying? So hey, ultimately, hey, we have to understand that maybe, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry to cut you off because you cooking. I forgot to tell the people this. And I forgot to read this article what Garvey was arrested for. He was scamming his people. Listen, Garvey paid, collected $200,000 from his people for a ship. And the ship only costed $25,000. And they want to know who pocketed that extra money. Who else could have pocketed it, geniuses? Garvey. And it was several incidents like that where he got way more money for some he knew it wasn't that much. Can you believe black Americans funded a lot of the UNIA shit, but we couldn't seem to raise the money for our own struggle? How foreigners make us do shit we don't do for ourselves? Please continue, bro. I'm going to stop, man. No, you're absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? And um, it just, again, it just came out. That um uh, the brother Umar is doing the same thing. He's asking for money. Um, that's the and the money that he's asking for is more than what what he actually needs. These people are pocketing the money, man. And you know, um, you don't never see this shit going on in any other community but ours. You know, I think that because of what we went through, the struggle, and um and struggling right now today, dude, it, it become a, it became a business to these profiting off of the hardships and the suffering of our community. That's insane. That you can make money off of people suffering. You know, it's bad enough that we cannot even come together and put our resources and our finances together. These people have found a way to funnel the money into one spot to themselves. And, and, and just another and, thing. And leaving that, us with the debt, you know. And I got to say this Go to ahead. interject too with your dreads. Another reason ain't no smoke going to come up here. Because a motherfucker know they going to look silly when I ask them, who is this white man that's the Garvey? They ain't going to want to tell you. Who is this white guy that's the Garvey? Why Garvey got American flags and not RBG flags? Who want to debate me on this? They know they're going to look stupid. When I ask them, why did KK Garvey alliance with the KKK? How was Garvey that smart, but he was a Catholic? How did Garvey have ships, armors, and soldiers, and guns, and not one white person ever got shot? During the time we was getting lynched, armed niggas, not one white casualty under them. Sound like the NOI, don't it? But you beefing with black men. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the same thing with the um with the NOI. You 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 feel me? <laughs> the only people that they attacked was their own people. You feel they never, never went that went after those who they claim to hate. Oh, Dre. And it's obvious that even those that they claimed that they hated was getting paid from the same organization that they was getting paid from. The whole entire KKK movement, black power infrastructure, they're both getting paid from the same goddamn people. It's a facade. They create the chaos. They create the division. And while stupid people fall for this dumbass narrative, while we're fighting each other, you notice that the Farrakhan haven't sunk his troops at the KKK? The KKK haven't sunk their troops at the... um. At Farrakhan. Why they haven't fought yet? I'm still waiting on a goddamn fight. Because they got an Where, where they going to fight? Hey, and Dreads, here go the question they really running from. When a fucking Garveyite get up here and I say, listen, brother, why didn't Garvey ever go to Africa in his life, but he taught that we should go? Boy, they going to look so stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, that one is going to kill him.
I just, I'm yeah, so. Yeah, they always speak in that echo. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> because it's still, it, it, it's an old scam. This is a very old scam. We got people right now that's following the same blueprint. Talking about go back to Africa, but they motherfucking asses over here in America with your ass. They they're over here with our ass talking about go back to Africa. Well, bitch, why don't you go first and we'll follow? But that ain't right. That's not how they make their money. They make their money by selling a dream of going back to Africa. So it's all an illusion, man. Like I said, they talk about the infrastructure and how bad the infrastructure is, but yet. They're using the same playbook to make money off it. Come bro, on, man. I, bro, it's bro, obvious. I got to pick your brain a bit, and we're going to go to the other panelists. You see, the funniest thing in the world would to, be, to hear a Pan-African explain why the leader of Pan-Africanism never went to Africa. I think I would laugh my fucking throat out to hear the excuses because I can hear it now. Well, you know, the reason why he didn't go to Africa because he knew they would kill him over there. And like another reason he didn't go because, you know, he was allergic to the to the air in Africa. Because, boy, it'll be funny. But the thing is, is what I wanted to point out was. Do you have a newfound respect for Tariq Nasheed? Because I want to screen share now. I can show y'all panel how he been saying what I'm saying before me. I want to give him credit. I think right now I'm rocking with more of Tariq Nasheed shit than anybody else with this knowledge I got now, man. What y'all think about that? Uh, w which part? The, the museum situation or... All of Just it. Just what he was saying. The, the whole FBI shit. F, excuse me, FBA shit. Hook, line, and sinker. I'm all the FBA. way in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the thing, me, I, I, I can't. Oh, no, I, I look at it differently because um, I'm a little confused because it's like he want to get the museum. He's asking for $7 million. From, for a museum. And I was looking at why why raise seven million dollars for just a museum in that little spot in that little plot when you can spend less than two million dollars and buy two hundred acres of land and build your own community and you can have five or six museums on that set community. So it's kind of asinine to raise seven million dollars. Yeah, you got a dollars for one little spot for one museum. Now, when you could take one, two million by three, four hundred acres of land, build homes on it, build as many museums you want, your yeah. own library, your own schools. You can do you see what I'm saying? So I'm a little confused. I is will say, yeah, I building will up the community, or is it about him getting paid from this museum? Yeah, I, him? I will say it ain't the best you feel me? uh uh humble financial approach. Tariq Nasheed always wanted to be bigger than Hollywood. He used to be a pimp. So if he a nigga like him thinking museum, he thinking on some upscale fancy shit. So I agree with you on that. He kind of gone in a ballpark of trying to be on some rich white folks shit when really it's overkill for us. A nigga would be happy to go in a little broke down building to get his history and will be more proud than a big pretty museum. So you are making a good point. But in, in I mean, in the essence of just his narrative, FBA pol political ideology, anti we, the fact that his group sees Africans as foreigners and they don't have a concept of diaspora unity. I really rock with that. Like, they like, fuck the diaspora. Yeah. It's about America. Right, right. Yeah, I agree with that, with the talking points. But again, it's like, ah, I just hope he's he not using it as a narrative to, to fund this, this, this museum. Um, we have to be very careful with a lot of these individuals because normally um, you would think a highly intelligent individual would be um, very aware of what would be more beneficial to, to, to the masses, especially when it comes to your people. 
um, like me, I, I'm not even talking about a museum right now, but I do have enough common sense to know what would be more beneficiary for my people is not a museum. There's plenty of museums right now that's all that already exist that is black owned. And so a lot of times some people, people don't know that they yeah. have black museums right now that is black owned and yeah, you can but, go but to them right now. Most they're, they're, not, they're not, so they're not, I don't they're, know what, what they're not. Yeah. Those black museums teaching some pan African shit. They ain't giving a like. If Dane Calloway had a museum, I think that'll be more beneficial. Cause like it, it'll be based on Aboriginal hidden history, untold. You'll be looking at documents that the government hid, was framed in that bitch, showing you how how your shit with your Aboriginal roots was taken and shit. Now, right. the closest right. we gonna get to that is FBA Museum. It's it's got the Aboriginal indigenous narrative, but it ain't coming from the Dane approach of origins. It's coming from a pol modern political solution approach versus giving a history of how Ados was robbed. See, pol Tariq Nasheed and Dane Calloway on the same page, whether they know it or not. But so. But the thing is this, yeah, his yeah. Mu his museum shit, I don't really give a fuck about that. I just look at that as some shit like he want to do. Like, I want to build my own music studio. And if the people fund it, it ain't going to be no cheap shit. I want the best MP3s, the best boards. We want the old ICA organ. That bitch about 10000 but it sound good. But I ain't gonna build no studio if I can't do it big the way I see it. I ain't gonna like Tariq Nasheed name is attached to upscale shit. He has a history of renting the fancy building, having his meetings at the upscale area, and that's how he maintained his image. And he'll never go beneath it. So I, it's kind of it ain't a surprise to me uh, with his museum. Uh, I, I suspect it to me from an ex pimp. They got to be big with it. They got to get the seven million dollar building, you know, in the fucking big part of Cali to show, hey, black niggas getting it too. You know how niggas like Tariq think, you know. He want to show the white man, yeah, I'm yeah. a young black nigga and I got a museum right here too, you know. He got something to prove to the rich white guys that the black man, nigga, we, we ain't got to have the shabby shit. That's his kind of his philosophy. So I kind of it ain't mine because yeah, yeah. I don't I don't feel I got to prove yeah. them shit. I'll save my money. But it is niggas like Tariq. I, don't, I, see, I know what you know. That's cool, though. That's just his personality. But it can be it can it can make us uh, do more do the most, as they say. Because like you said, he could have got the land built it. But that ain't good enough for Tariq. He got, did you see that building? That shit got to be extravagant. See? Just the type, yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, that is um, his, yeah, that's it. That is his personality. Um, but yeah, um, when it comes to his his message and things of that nature, it does align with um, with Dan Calloway. I kind of noticed that as well. Um, but I'll I let the other brother, I see you want to Oh, chime in. Go ahead, my brother. Yeah, thank you all for joining, man. Good to have other brothers' input. Donovan, Donovan, you got it. Thanks for being patient. Oh, man. Is my mic on? Loud and clear. Really? Yeah, go ahead. I can't hear about myself, but that's cool. Yes, brother Sanchez. Good to meet you, man. And this internet world here. Yeah. What been you, a long time coming, you know. Good to have you, my brother. What you think about everything we talking about? And where you from? I can hear an accent. Jamaica. Jamaica, yeah. I um, I, I went in yeah, on Jamaica. Yeah. You know, I knew I would get some of my Jamaican brothers on. I love y'all. But I had to tell the truth about Garvey, but I want to hear what you got to say, my Jamaican brother. Don't hold back. Let me know how you feel. I still love you. Go ahead. Well, first, I'm, I'm, let me say, um, yeah, peace to everybody listening and everything, and everybody who's going to listen to this, this video and everything. But, yeah, um, 
I'm mostly, I'm mostly <laughs> agree with everything I said about Garvey, except some other things that I heard. That, um, for instance, they said, "Do you uh, is the research show that he was actually um, what they call deported?" Because I thought they said uh, he, he died here and something like that. That he was deported, right? You I heard that before. Yeah, he was deported after his case of scamming and all that. He said he was set up by the FBI with the boy in Booker T. Uh, Washington. But it's funny that all that happened right leading up to the Tuskegee experiments. You fall out with all these leaders right after they, you help them bring in the Red Cross and give niggas diseases. After all, after we get these diseases, now you fall out with everybody. You end your map. People can't tell me I'm lying about this now. After the Tuskegee experiment and niggas got syphilis, he stopped writing. He, he stopped his whole magazine what? company. Garvey had a magazine. He didn't write no more because he knew blacks wanted him to write in his magazine about what happened in Tuskegee. This nigga was beefing with Booker T. Washington so much so that he didn't, he, he, to get back at Booker T., he didn't even speak on the fucked up shit that happened in Tuskegee. Bro, that's a fucking real whole shit. I don't care what nobody say. I'm sorry, bro. I don't care what, bro, I don't yeah, care what nobody say. First that. Time you that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, brother. You got it. First I'm on mute. No, man, it's the first time I hear that one. That one, if that one is Fox, that is like a real, real flipping on cello yeah. movement, right? You, here you, you, that you, you, thing. you know how you can prove it's facts? You can't find me no Marcus Garvey's quotes on the Tuskegee experiment, and he was living. But go ahead, go ahead. That was like the turret is a thing, right? Because I know he was around that time, right? So yeah, yeah that, that's that's he, something. He but even, you know, as a he, Jamaican man, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I, bro, I have to really, really check it. Out. Sure need, I, can, I have I have received that other thing because I can't bring this to my my Jamaican. Bro, I'm I'm, this I'm, I'm giving them the facts. Listen, bro, check it out. Check check it out. Check it out. You can pull it up that this is a fact. Marcus Garvey visited the Tuskegee Institute before the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Before it, he, before it even started. He visited before. Now, so that means, uh -huh. but look, Garvey had even complimented and spoke up about what Booker T. Washington had built with the Tuskegee Institute. They was cool. So my, my, my thing is, why when a person who visited that institute, he did a, <laughs> listen, bro, he did a whole lecture at Tuskegee. And you mean to tell me when they had the syphilis outbreak, you didn't speak at a place that welcomed you there as a speaker? You didn't speak out and say it's fucked up? And they and Tuskegee loved you? Come on, bro. Y'all don't think you. that's fucked up? I hear you on that. I hear you. That's, that's, yeah, that's real, real. Real truth, right there. If he never show up there, so man, I don't see why he, he didn't show up there. So if it was really for the people, I want to tell you, man. I'm, I met that old brother once, a couple of years, with, uh, like over twenty years, in Connecticut. An old man who said he was there with him, and he he walked around with a little attached suitcase with some old newspaper. He was showing me a thing like that, and he. He was kind of tight lip like was trying to tell me, look, not everything about Garvey was good and shit. And I wish I would have get some more time with him and get some contacts for him because this man was in his, at the time, probably 70s or 80s. And he was there around Marcus time. And like, from then my eyes was kind of like, this man was trying to tell me something about Marcus Garvey. Can you tell black Americans something real quick? Because you from Jamaica, you know more about Garvey than we do over here. Can you tell these people that Garvey would have 
idolized Haile Selassie and that Garvey was a, a Catholic who, who still worshiped Christ through the line of Judah, which a lot of Jamaicans teach that the line of Judah is Haile Selassie, which is, an, and that's, they call him Messiah like Marcus Garvey. Can you go into Haile Selassie and uh, Christianity and Rastafarianism and Catholicism and how you guys love the Queen of England? Go on, tell them the truth. I'm going to see if you're going to keep it real. Go ahead. Well, well, well I'm going to be straight with you. I never do any great research on, um, on even Marcus Garvey. I, 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 I did a little bit on Healy Selassie before I got here, and they was telling me Healy Selassie was, was another Christ and everything, and I fell for it for it a bit, and then I remember one young brother was like, no, man, when I tell him, like, here's the last, he was this and that, he was like, no, man. And because I'm very, I'm very cautious when it comes to knowledge and learning. So I didn't swallow it hook, line, and sinker. But um, I know um, I'm listening to, I listen to a lot of radio from Jamaica right now. And the, the talk is that Marcus Garvey and here the last, he was like together. And they fell out, they fell out back then. They fell out a little bit, but Haley Selassie really wanted him on board. And for whatever reason, Marcus Garvey to distance himself. That's as far as I want to go with that. But um, I got, I got, I got another I'm question. I, I got a, I got a quick icon in the I got a real. But I can explain about Selassie if you wanna if you wanna just hear it quick in a minute before you move topic. In, in a minute. I wanna right, cool. know him being from Jamaica, do y'all know about the Jesuits? And do y'all have any black cabals or orders in Jamaica that's against the people? <clears throat> the, the thing the thing that they call Jesuit and all that. The name that they use that I that I learned in Jamaica from a teenager was um what they call Lodge, which would be the same t Lodge of England. They um yep. had another name. That's them. But that would be the same That's thing them. As the, the Lodgemen in, in Jamaica, uh -huh. yes. That then you have black lodgemen, then you black men who were lodgemen. Yes. And and, and listen. They, they used to call it D Lodge. And, and which they I come to um that Dee Lawrence was just the guy who write that um, article or book or whatnot and the Lodge, and the those, Lodge movement where yeah. most of the time, like the prime minister, or the minister cabinet, they part of that cabal, oppressing the people. That See, he but just- listen, let me put this he, out there. He, that's um, what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Let me put this out there that um, what, what stopped me from learning all of that when I got here like less than a year that I got here, I became a um, Hebrew Israelite, man. So I was just into the Hebrew knowledge. <clears throat> so I didn't, I wasn't into the Hale Selassie, Marcus Garvey, because the Hebrew kind of go against that, you know that, a bit. So like I said, I was learned from like 1990, December 1990, when I run into the Hebrew Israelites, my whole life was different, man, because my, all my aspirations and, and things, music thing that I was supposed to be in, get put on the back burner, if you know what I mean. And I was just into the Hebrew Israelites, so. And let me put this out there, I'm not no big speaker and all that, man. Um, Like when I get into the Hebrew Israelites, it took me a while to speak, you know? Like it took me like three, four years of learning. And you know, everybody, uh, it was all about the speaking, like get up on the pulpit and speak. But I get to run with all of the um, all of the big um, high priests. I know all of them. I met them from in the nine early nineties, and was learning under them. So, like I said, the Marcus Garvey. I know I had a cousin one time was telling him to get some books with Marcus Garvey, and I was telling him, look, Marcus Garvey is not all that man. It's about the Hebrew. So, like I said, I'm just trying to show you my um journey you know mm -hmm. and then now i run into this knowledge here which makes way more sense you know 
right back when um you were speaking when you had the debate with um Santos Banachi. That's right. when I really drift from the Hebrews like fully, teaching fully because um I was getting some some signals that things wasn't right with the knowledge from about maybe an earlier year before that. And that's how everything comes together. We are I run into the um, start running to the YouTube channels, Santos Bonacci. Then you, when you came along, everything started to make way more sense. But yeah, um, concerning Marcus Garvey, he went to England. They, they claim he died in England. That's that's what they they, they you know that's what they. The news said, you know what I mean? He either died in England or Harlem, but he never took his ass to Africa that we do know. He should have oh, died in Africa. Sure, that's for sure. The man had a mission that he never fulfilled, and his followers ain't trying to fulfill it. Marcus Garvey spent his whole life in America telling niggas to go to Africa. The man was a panhandler on the streets of Harlem, like Al Sharpton and all the rest of them. But guess what? That kind of panhandling make a lot of money. You get a lot of donations up in Harlem talking that Garvey talk. That had to fill up quick. So just think about that. You taking the money out of the community and donations when you already being funded by all these Red Cross, Vatican, you come from a rich family. It, why do these rich folks still ask for donations? I don't get that shit. You came over here saying you the Messiah, but you need our help like Jesus need my donations too, bro. And he, he ain't really helping me with my 10%. I'm tithing to him. Now I got to pay another Messiah for help. When I'm going to get some free help that really work? It seems like they when do you that. Die. It seems like they do that. In a, <laughs> it seems like they do that to keep the uh, working people down even more. Because it seems like if, if they're getting funded by this stuff, they're supposed to be actually donating to us. So you said he was panhandling for Pan-Africans. <laughs> That's funny. Oh himself. shit. That's all oh, oh, oh shit. Uh-uh. That was a good shot. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Back. <laughs> yo, yo, back. Yo, but, uh, yo. Trying to say Marcus Garvey was the first scammer. Uh, he wasn't the first scammer, but he was he he brought that scamming shit to <laughs> niggas. He brought he introduced, <laughs> listen, he introduced conscious scamming. Hey, guess what they call it? I ain't even making this up. They got a word for what Garvey did, and you can look it up. It's called Harlem radicalism. This was a yeah, whole, bro, it was a whole movement happening in Harlem with this radical shit. Like, if you look at Dipset in that battle, you see what kind of niggas Harlem is. So Garvey had a whole bunch of bad mixtures, man. He already was a bougie, yep. bougie rich nigga. Then when he came to America, he got introduced to Harlem world. Lord have mercy. I ain't from New York, but I know Harlem niggas is just extra. I know that, like the dip. But yo, brothers. But yeah, I hear you still, but you know what it is? Like, I was listening for a little bit, and I, I, I can't lie. I'm a, I'm a little offended. Yeah, me like, and so are other people as well. Yeah, I don't all this Jamaican no, hatred and bashing. I, I don't all, all this hey, Jamaican hey, bro, hatred and bashing. But but slow down, man. You gonna have a conversation. Everybody mute up. Let I'm me talking. talk. Let me talk all to right. you like a man, so we can get understanding. You call it Jamaican. I've come to talk about the Maroons and Selassie. I'm just all saying. Right. I'm right. not I'm, defending no Garvey business. Hey, brother, you opened up right. saying a lot. If you're not going to stand on what yeah. you just said, you ain't being a man now. You just came out with smoke. Bro, stand on that right? shit. I just said, just, just stand on I'm it, I'm standing bro. on this shit. All right, listen, cool. I don't, listen, I'm, I heard you talking about the Maroons, yeah, and Selassie, so that's what I've come to talk about, what you're on about. We can talk Selassie about that. Too, we, we can We can talk All about right, then that. Let's talk about that. Then we then. can, but first I want to explain to you 
that I don't hate Jamaicans. Can you give me like one minute to do that with you? Cause you talking about Jamaican what, hate, and you ain't gonna give you, even, you, yeah, you ain't gonna give me a chance to defend myself. I don't hate. I love Jamaicans. No. I, like I, real I, I talk. To ask what it's about. Shout out to bro Sanchez. Jamaicans love you too, Sanchez. You know what? And so, I love y'all, man. Back to you, so, so see what I'm saying? You being disrespectful, bro. <laughs> no, go on, go on. You saying something? All uh, right, yeah, let me finish what I'm saying. <clears throat> so I just got a gay insult, y'all. He just insulted me on some gay shit. Cool, I'll let it slide. I'm going to stay you, with the other guy, the other guy, but that's the other guy. <laughs> but, but still, though, he didn't disrespect you, man. See, let me tell on, you, just, just the talk. same problem I got with you. Are you, you going to let him talk or what? Listen, he got that Garvey spirit. Garvey came over here from Jamaica like him. Arrogant, don't think he gonna school you. Coming over here with a chip on his shoulder already thinking black people jealous of Jamaica because they got their flag and a beautiful island and shit. But it ain't as good as they want us to think when they get here because the Jamaican police beating the hell out of them. But they'll come over hey. here. Now, now y'all gonna quit cutting me the fuck off. Next person do that going in a timeout. We're adults, man. One at a time. Like, be professional. Check this out, y'all. Because cause it, 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 it just, if I mute you, stay muted. You want to do this professional so everybody can be heard. I want to address the brother. Jamaicans come over here, and I met them. And I love them, but I ain't don't mean I ain't going to tell them what they do. They come over here and make Jamaica look like a paradise. And it is if you're an American tourist going to visit. But if your ass live there, man, you'll be moving back here. That's why they moving here. And I respect Jamaicans like Bob Marley, who told us, because before Bob Marley, niggas was just thinking of Jamaica like a paradise. Bob Marley did for Jamaica what the rappers did for America. Showed them the grimy shit. Kingston life. How, how it really, really get in Jamaica. And it ain't the white man doing it. See, that's why I like Bob Marley. He told the truth. Hey, blacks in America, it ain't no batter in Jamaica. You got to be a buffalo soldier. It's hard everywhere in this world. That's what Bob Marley said. You meet Jamaicans today that, that come over here like, oh, you Jamaican hating because we telling the truth. Like, God damn it, Jamaicans come over here and benefit with the title of black better than me as a black man who was born with this title. And I can't uh, pick and choose. I can't be black one day in Jamaica tomorrow. I'm stuck being black. And cats come over here and they can be black Jamaican. They can go back and forth. Even Nipsey Hussle. And I like him. But I ain't going to not tell you what it is. Blacks in America created movements because of that. Do y'all want to hear the truth? Because if you don't, we can't unite. Go ahead, uh, brother. You got the flow. Yeah, my brother, I agree with a lot of that, what you said, you get me? And like I said, I'm not here to defend badness and, and what's wrong, you get me? I'm just here to correct some of the mad stuff I was hearing, that's all. You know what I'm saying? I do agree with a lot of what you just said, though. So I understand now it's not smoke for Jamaica. You're just, you get me? <laughs> you're just on your ticket. So oh, that's fine. Oh, yeah. eh? so, hey, yo, bro, I want to say, I'm going to, you and know... I so, what, why is everyone just, like, you can't just relax a minute? Let, let me sure say, let me, before I come on. Hey, Barking, I'm going to get you in in a go, minute. Hold up. Go go ahead, brother. I'm just saying, yeah, like, I heard you talking about the Maroons. And, yes, there was Maroons that sold out, you get me? But with a man with a, such as a big platform as yourself, who's got a lot of knowledge as yourself, you should be teaching people the whole story, Yeah. That there is I two am. sets of maroons. One second, one second, because you're just saying the maroons, yeah, which includes nanny, yeah, and that's major disrespect. So what I'm saying is, you have to be, you have to like, you know, before if you're gonna talk on these things, before and and explain properly that there's two sets of maroons. 
yeah? The people that were there before the Spanish came, yeah? They fought the Spanish and then marooned to the mountains. And then you have like Nanny and us, the people who were the free slaves and then marooned, you get me? So what I'm saying is, yeah, you have to know who you're talking about when you're putting out these information to such a big audience. You know what I'm saying? Well, well let me People explain. Me the- <laughs> let me let me let me just clear this up so I can uh cure your frustration, right? Here's how this works. If there's two sets of maroons, a sellout set and a genuine set, I I don't got to talk about both of them if my documentary was automatically about the sellout maroons. All throughout the documentary the Maroons that I was charging of selling out, why would I tell the people, hey, guys, there's a a good set of Maroons and a bad set. It's a good and bad of everything. If I'm talking about gangsters in the hood, ain't nobody going to say, well, bring up the good black men where the dummies do say that. Like, we know it's good black men, but we talking about the gangsters. We know it's niggas who didn't sell out. Ah, brother, brother. But That's today, not fair. But, to, but we know it's... Fair. Listen, 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 brother. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All white people then own slaves, but we still talk, have a word called white supremacy. Even oh, though... they're two different wait, ethnicities. Wait. So how can you just... Even though all white people ain't supreme, we call it white supremacy. And we know if the shoe fit, wear it for the white people who fit that. But go ahead, brother. You got the floor. Calm down, though. Go ahead. You got it. Man, he's hurt. Don't take it personal, bro. We get exposed Kwame. We got exposed Marcus Garvey, too. It's all good. It's Sanchez. Can I go talk to brother something who's talking about the Maroons? Do he realize you hear me, right? Hello? Yes, we hear you. Yeah, do he realize that the Maroons are actually organized and, and was fighting with the British? Did he get that um that history? Yeah, that's about- Nanny, that's Nanny, but he's not he's not separating the, the real ones, yeah, and the sellouts, he's just saying the maroons, which means everybody, you know what I'm saying? No, it's not. There's two different set of maroons that are not connected to each other. So how can you just lump them both together and say the maroons? That's mad. Get me? Yeah, be fair and do what's right. Get me? So you telling me that there was a group of maroons that was against some other group? Which tribe you act in? But I can't. I can't. How I grew. Why you? Then why we haven't been Yeah, and and and, and the thing is they don't call themselves the maroon people. Don't call themselves niggas or black black African Americans. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't, they hey. don't even consider themselves that. Hold, hold on. You have, yeah. hold on. you have to hold understand. Hold on. Hold on. The kids are watching this. A documentary. Hey, hey. The maroons. They Wait a minute. The maroons. Yeah, Wait. That's it. Calm down. To the chat room. I apologize. Everything I said. Said my mic was muted. But what I was telling him was. He want me to dis- make distinctions within his group, but when Maroons come to America, they don't make distinctions within blacks. They just call us all blacks, and they like that we can't make distinctions. That way, they can assimilate. You're supposed to be better. Bro, for, you're bro, to be bro, than bro, 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 you, you're going to cut me that. off. You're going to do. You misrepresent Jamaica right now. 
if you if you ever think Jamaicans gonna unite with blacks, at least respect the conversation and wait in one at a time, bro. They didn't hear what I said, and you obviously don't want them to hear what I said. So like I was saying, y'all, what I told him was he wanted me to distinguish within his group, but they don't distinguish within ours when they come over here. They just assimilate into the chaos. They take advantage of the fact that blacks don't have an identity by saying, I'm black too. Anybody can be the, the unknown, but you can be maroon. I can't. You could come over here and blend in into the chaos of the people without an identity and say, I'm one of y'all without an identity while having an identity called maroon. I can't go identify as a maroon, but you can un Brother, brother, pause, 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 pause. Brother, brother, pause, pause. Do you know what maroon means? I know it means culture, land, language, some I don't no, it got. Doesn't mean culture. Some I don't no, got. It means somebody who fled. Okay. Listen, listen guy. Maroon means somebody who fled to the mountains. So how is that a culture? How is that? How is that? I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about, I'm about to show you. you are. How I'm does about, that? Because he fled to you. the mountains. Wait there. Pause. pause. You're asking questions. Calm down, dude. You one of them uh, feisty maroons. You're a macaroon, little cookie. Let me show you something, Can you please man? stop yelling? People have headphones on. Please, little, can y'all yeah. please get out your right. feelings and yeah, listen? Yeah, yeah, right. Stop yelling loud. in my earphones. Uh, I'm just, oh, oh, loud maroon. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, do micro that, oh, microphone yeah. mouth head ass. God bless. Let the and take off the mic, then oh, it. Take off the thing, then. Get out your feelings. How about that? Do that first. Yo. Go oh, banana peel head ass. Listen, I don't know, but Puerto Rico Maroon needs to call it. Shut your mouth. Spanish. Go chew some tobacco. Well, chew some tobacco? Boy, don't play with me. You better get the fuck up off this lot so you get cursed see, out with your see, rude, disrespectful see, self. See, see how these foreigners come disrespect our women and, I, and come over here with this chaos and this and agent activity? Shout out to the Jamaicans on the panel who ain't no sellouts. This guy looked like one of them garbage Jamaicans. He might be one of them black Jesuits. Time <laughs> to smoke some tobacco. Ooh. Smell, smell tobacco. And by Ain't the way, tonality. by the way, by the way, <laughs> my is but look, a, this the same. This the same. Get up here and hey, argue. This the same. Yo, look, you're look. wrong and strong. You uh, can't I'm even admit you. that you're wrong. Simple. As you can't even admit. That guess what, bro? I'm gonna ask you right now. I bet you, you, I bet you, any kind of money, he live in America. How much y'all want to bet he live in America? How much y'all want to bet this Jamaican guy live in America? And he come I over. I live in Birmingham, England. How much? So how much you got? That's even got? worse. That's even worse. <laughs> That's even yeah, worse. Yeah. That's even worse, bro. You're wrong and not, strong. Not, just admit you're wrong nah, and strong, bro. Instead I'm, of just saying, I, hey, okay, then. I'm nice and right. I'm nice yeah, and right. I'm nice and right. Oh, Ron Sanchez. Said, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? You're scared. You're clearly scared. You can't even debate. Let bro talk. Hit me. I'll tell, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let the smart guy talk because what he proven is the same thing I exposed Garvey for. Them uppity. Yes, please. Let uppity, me talk. Them please. uppity foreigners please. who think they can school us over here. They know more than us. So sarcastic yeah, let him and speak. all let, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, let brother. Speak, uh, the right, let him speak. So what I'm saying is, Giza, all I'm saying is, yeah, instead of just admitting you was wrong and saying, okay, then brother, I didn't know about the different types of maroons. I should have done more research and fair enough. I'll do that. Instead of just doing that, like the guy I thought you was, the educated guy I thought you was. Yeah, you're going to be wrong and strong and start acting stupid. Get me? Like, fix up, okay. bro. Get me? You know, what you, you know what I'm talking about. And you know what I'm saying is right. Yeah? Instead of going and researching it, you want to act stupid? Get me? <laughs> like, you're better than that. So, and that's what I'm going to say. Hey, now let me show y'all. Uh, now I'm finna school him. Y'all got to stand by. Wait a minute. Because me and this guy got an issue, and we got to solve it. Because now I got to show him how just the attitude you got as a Jamaican guy who ain't even on your own land like I am. You ran from your country. I want to know why you end up in England, man. Why you ain't in Jamaica? Your people need you. I ain't never leaving my country, brother. Why you left yours? Tell me that before I school you. Brother, that, ain't your, that ain't your country. You all right. 
get me? <laughs> so every black person in America is a, a fucking I, native Why now. you won't answer Slavery my question? Happen. Why Slavery. you dancing? Bro, I got one question. I got one question. What's all the bull, question? Uh, all bullshit no question there. Now, bro, I let you talk and you acting childish. Calm down and listen, bro. I'm hosting a show. Listen, bro. What's I'm the trying. Question, then, I'm then, then. Damn it, bro. Can you be quiet so I can ask you? What made you leave Jamaica and go to England? Was it for better opportunities? I didn't leave Jamaica. I was born in England. Okay. So what made now, your what made your family leave Jamaica to where you're born in England now? Because their land was um, taken. Yeah, well, in St. Elizabeth, a, a lot of the land was taken, yeah, by the government for well, not paying land tax or whatever. And like, people had no way to farm. And, you know, like my granddad, for example, he came during the Windrush, now, obviously, let me, when now, I got, his, now, when now, I got my now, land. So now, 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 now I got you. That's all I needed right there. I get it. Through through the same, it was just say oppression, colonialism, fact. Yes. Now let me move on. Check this out, yeah. brother. Now let's talk about Maroons and why I don't feel I was wrong. And after I explain to you my understanding, I'm going to shut up and let you correct me if I'm wrong. All right? So here's what Maroons is to my understanding. I'm going with the basic uh, definition. Maroons are descendants of Africans in the Americas who form settlements away from slavery. They often mix with indigenous people. This means Maroons are not indigenous people. But it's say eventually evolving. <laughs> uh, hold on, brother. Don't be childish. We're trying to learn. Now, look, it said they eventually evolved into separate Creole cultures, such as the Garifuni and the Muscagos. It'll even go into, I think, the South Korea, uh, uh, Car Carolina Geechees and all that. It, it talks about different. So the thing is this right here. If, if the Maroons are saying that they're the Creole cultures of the South, because let's go to Creole cultures, and I can be wrong, because there's a lot of Creoles in Louisiana. Yeah, with the Spanish, I thought I was right. And the thing about the Creole, they were fair-skinned Negroes who held a high status than Ados. That's what I was teaching about Garvey. Creoles during slavery were admired. They was like, okay, very fair skinned. Like if you look at Creole women, they look like white women. You know, my family got Creole roots. Pa Paris, which is French. And, you know, my great, great, great grandmother is lighter than the lady on this picture. So what I'm telling you is if there's any relationship between Maroons and Creoles, and mulattoes, if you want to throw them in there, there you go. Like, there were some mixed people who held a high status. Moors as well. A lot of them was mixed. So what I'm saying is, I went hold over, hold on, on, I, hold, on I hold on. I went over this history of Marcus Garvey's royalty. You know, the Creole people were successful. They didn't really experience what black, Ados went through like they was they had a higher status but go ahead okay brother and good information there I agree with a lot of that yeah but what I'm saying is yeah do you, do, do, okay are you even aware that there was Arawak and Taino Maroons before African slaves were even taken to Jamaica people that fled to the mountains when the Spanish conquered Jamaica did you know that? So, like, that's all I'm trying to say to you. you you're talking all this about the Jamaica. You're actually talking about your own natives who signed that treaty. They were native to Jamaica. They didn't want all the slaves there. That's why they agreed to catch them. You get me? You have to do Like, you actually shut your own self. In the, you tread above yourself, bro. I, I don't. I like, don't you're, talking I, about, you're talking about natives. That, bro, the actual, bro, all I'm saying is, yeah. I don't see how here. you're not. The actual people. Brother, okay. Uh, let me let me hear me out, uh, please, please. Yeah. All I'm saying is the actual people you're talking about who signed the treaty were native Jamaicans, a mixture of Tainos, Arawaks, everything etc. Yeah, the people, Nani's people, the 
Jamaican slaves who escaped. They are totally free from any of that bullshit, any treaty business. In fact, they was the ones who were taking over the, the slave ships and starting the Pirates of the Caribbean. That's who, they're the freedom fighters, but yet you're making big documentaries, calling them sellouts. So that's why I felt the need to come and show you two things you know I mean? And 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 you know, I, I'm not even trying to argue. I listen to you. Can I ask you? Can I ask you a quick here. question? Yeah. What religion does your family practice? What religion were you born into Rast. in the UK? Hebrew Israelite, Rasta, aka Hebrew Israelite. And it to is. Me, it's, it's, it's what and and you know thing. what? That explains it all, brother. I ain't got to say no more. You're so indoctrinated. Like you're you're a walking oh, here we go. bro. It's my turn to so talk. So it's not about the facts L of the matter. Let me show you some. You're a walking hypocrisy. Your family traced back to Jamaica. Brother, it's not about the facts of the matter. Man, though. It's not about the facts. Bro, of the you know what? It's about respect. It's about you talk, I talk, you talk, I talk like adults and not yelling like children. Whether you like what okay, I'm saying enough, or not. So the problem is this to me. You're just as lost as my people, man. Like. Your, your roots is from Jamaica. You're born in the UK. You practice Hebrew shit. This is more backwards than Jesus being a white boy born in the Middle East practicing Judaism. But you know, this is a diversion. Like, like no, but you I'm know, just this is saying. a diversion to what I just said. It? It, it, well, well, it talks speak, about, man. No, but why not, address, why, why not address what I talked about? You're so about? emotional, man. Let like, this speak, guy dude. is huh? so emotional. On, man, like, there's 700. <laughs> <laughs> There's me. like 800 like, people here to listen to bro and you keep cutting yeah, them but off. All I've said is like, I just said something. You never even addressed one part. Point just jump to aspersions. Well, I think this and I feel like that. You Get with the facts. I, Get bro, I don't have to address what you said because it's just a deflection from what I just read, which is the truth. You can't separate. Oh, all right, all right. You cannot separate maroon people from Creole culture. I'm reading it right here. And I just like I taught about the Maroons, they had a fucking uh, higher status with the queen and with the powers than Ados, brother. Quit trying to make yourself equal to motherfuckers who struggling. You know what I don't like, man? Like, equal like to black you. people struggling like a motherfucker. We, like, bro, and ever and you want to come over? You you want to assimilate into the worst people in the worst condition on earth? It must be some kind of lucrative benefit to it. It's just so scammy looking. Like all of these folks come over here and want to get down with the people who doing the worst, and they end up rich in the end, and we stay poor. That's all I'm pointing out about Garvey. When does it become cool to, to, to get down with the people that's the most one second. Let me ask like, one, it, it just don't look let me ask right, bro. Bro, you can't. Let me I'm going to tell you question. something right now. After, me... after I say this, you can get the mic. Anybody that's mad at Ado's FBA black people for being suspicious about leaders that we've been given to us like Marcus Garvey and puppets and all that, y'all don't really mean well for us because i would tell you my black brother in the uk any leader that come to your black people in the uk question them and don't trust them you mad at me because the one we was given i'm not come, mad were, were you I, mad I agree. were you emotional because you're casting aspersions I you, agree. You, 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 you you keep interrupting you're mad at me because the the leader puppet that they gave to mislead my people and get them medicated with vaccines and all that just so happened to be from your country. I don't really fuck with you like that, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, because not one time that you say, bro, that was wrong that Garvey was promoting flu shots with the Red Cross. Brother, I, you see, that's why I know you don't listen. This Because the first thing I said when I came on your platform is, I'm not here to defend no Garvey nonsense, but clearly you... You don't, you are defending him though, bro. You you straight up defending him right now. How you think we, what you think we debating about right now? Your defense of you saying I'm... I'm bro, saying, you keep muting me. Like, bro, you keep because, muting me. Like, and then because you're fucking cutting in while I'm talking. You know what? Take the flow, man. You ain't take your Ritalin. Listen, you're acting like I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. You got an impulsive saying, disorder. This. One second. Stop. Stop. You keep, say, you keep saying, you you this and you that. And I'm not, I don't believe in no Garvey, so stop casting aspersions. Yeah? You better than this. Like I said, you like, I spoke facts. And you never addressed one you single thing that I said. You still crying and not Marcus teaching. Marcus Garvey this and Marcus Garvey that. 
What about the Maroons, bro? We're talking about Maroons right now. Why are you going to Marcus Garvey again? Like, what are you doing, bro? You get me? So all I'm Bro, my show was about Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey was a Maroon. So that's the bro, only that's reason. Me, man. Yeah, I got, I got, I got, I'm, I'm about to kick you off if you unmute again. Oh, he I'm, says you give me the mic, man. I, fair, I am, man. but I'm trying to he explain. Said you give me the mic. Anyway. I am going to be fair. I'm trying to clear up some uh, confusion you got. Give me a second. It's only well, going to clear me up when I finish then. No, nah, bro. I can't let you continue in error. It's only going to take 10 seconds. Just shut up. The reason I brought up Maroon is because Garvey is a Maroon. <laughs> But my show was not about Maroons. It was about Garvey. No, 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 no disruption here, but I, I think I got to help this brother out. When, when you finish, you know? All right, uh, and all I'm, all, all I'm saying is, yeah, the Maroons, <laughs> and what I said was right, yeah, you, as a man who's educating, and like, I, I, I'd let my daughter watch your stuff, fam, because I rate your thing, but what I'm saying is now, like, I'm going to have to reconsider that because you're not even willing to be, like, fair. And you know you're being wrong and strong, yeah, but you're not even being fair with yourself, fam. I, I've showed you a thing. Instead of saying, yo, I'll go look into that, you just want to talk about Garvey and deflect, deflect. Yo, stop it, bro. If you don't, that. if you, bro, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to let somebody else talk. Because every time I give you the floor, you ain't pulling up slides <laughs> and you ain't really, uh... I'm gone anyway. I'm gone anyway. Yeah, Pick up yourself. Ho holla Pick at up you, yourself. man. You ain't pulling up no images or teaching. You just emotional as fuck. You're defensive. And you don't even want to hear the black man in America out. Anybody in the chat room saying I'm talking out the side of my neck, all I've been doing today is showing and proving. All I've been doing is showing you proof of Garvey being a Jesuit. I've showed proof of Garvey working with the Vatican. Dressed in the doggone Jesuit attire. I, I got proof that the Black Cross nurses had an alliance with the Red Cross and their mission was to get black people Spanish flu shots. And we didn't even have symptoms. I got proof. How am I talking about the side of my neck? They caught, how am I talking? You can look up what I'm saying. They got a memorial for Garvey in London. I just put up the article on the Red Cross website of them paying homage to the Black Cross nurses. Where were you? How is this neck talk when I'm showing and proving? I can't stand these Negroes, man. Y'all fucking suck. Go ahead, man. Tim, you want the flow? Somebody give me a new person, please, that's got something. Well, you know, well, you know this, is, this, this, oh, is this is the first time in my mic. This is the first time in my mic being open all night. And I, I usually sit back and just watch and just, you know, wait for an opportunity to come in. But um, you seem to have some form of um, impatience on the panel. And we just need to understand that this platform belongs to Sanchez. And he's a teacher, proven teacher, with, um, all, uh, with, with many you different types of studied lessons. You know what it is? When you put hey, the... Steve, when, when you put the mirror in their face, they break they break the mirror instead of dealing with the ugliness. Only thing I did was show them Marcus Garvey had an alliance with the KKK. Oh man, you tripping, Sanchez. Well, you don't like truth. I ain't tripping the truth tripping, nigga. Like that shit hurt you. Not me. I'm just showing it. <laughs> go ahead, man. Y'all go ahead. And the only point, only point he made. The only point he didn't make that he thought he was making, he was like, yeah, the Maroons, there's two sides, right? That's sort of like saying, yeah, there's Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, there's good Freemasons and bad Freemasons. Yeah, there's pork chop pastors and good. It's still the same shit at the end of the goddamn day. So I don't know why he came up here and said, you do know that, right? That there's two divisions, right? I might give a fuck about none of the divisions. We know we not in them. And we suffering from all and, these little divisions. And, and look, cool. and, and look, you know, and, hey, and, excuse me, hey, hey, we all know that the Umar is a family member of Garvey, right? So is his mission to continue what Garvey was teaching, or is man, he on a new mission? Man, ain't nobody talking about no damn Umar. What's I'm good, everybody? Bro. Love and respect. I, I am not lending honor, bro. You want to know about Umar? Go subscribe to Lennon. 
He's the expert at it. That's I fucks with him. We, I'm talking about Marcus Garvey right now and black Jesuits. Just cause Umar. Well, you know what what I how I doing? Yeah, just cause Umar fall at Garvey don't make him a point of discussion. We still on Garvey <laughs> neck. Go ahead. Yeah, what's up, OG Leo? My bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to say real quick, like a lot of those islands, and, 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 and they were indoctrinated, you know, uh, and a lot of them don't want to admit they were indoctrinated. You know what I mean? I was following Islam for a, a lot of years, and it took me to realize that I was indoctrinated through the, through the religion and also through different ways. But a lot of them don't want to admit they were indoctrinated and, and colonialized from the start. So that's my biggest thing with them. That, that's I, that's I always exact... call Marcus Garvey a British Facts. agent, which he was. I think that's a fact, because if Marcus was a sellout to the Americans, mm-hmm. he was a sellout to the Jamaicans first. And that's what Man, any nigga to realize. Any nigga coming over here when black folks were saying one trust in a Red Cross... Listen, y'all got to hear how deep this is. They couldn't get blacks to take this. Listen, let me tell you what was happening in the 1900s. I swear I'm a pastor, Mike. In the 1900s, they was just break, having a breakthrough in science with blood transfusions. The, a lot of the wars, they was practicing early blood transfusion. They was experimenting with biological warfare, but they needed a test subject. You know who it was? Blacks. And guess what? When in the 1900s, they had just like they doing a day with the pandemic, it was Spanish flu broke out. Now, look, nobody was getting symptoms like that, but they were saying get vaccinated before you do like the COVID shit today. Blacks never trusted them. Man, they couldn't get blacks to fuck with the Red Cross. So they gave him the black cross. Garvey, that is some evil shit. Like that's t- that part to me is the part I really want. He won- He didn't want to focus on that. Like he wanted to say, I'm not here to defend Garvey. But if you here to defend Maroons, when I tell you about the Maroon sellouts and you start defending good Maroons instead of agreeing with me, that yeah, yeah, bro, we got some maroon sellouts who did y'all wrong. I'm on your side. He shouldn't have did that. He shouldn't have got down with the KKK because they burnt y'all babies. Garvey shouldn't have been fucking with the K. You right, brother. Like, he couldn't even do that. He had, he had to say, well, I ain't defending Garvey. But you ain't got to defend him to point out what I'm saying right about one of your people who done us wrong. You showed up defending good maroons when this video ain't about a good maroon. So I'm talking about a bad maroon. You show up defending good maroons. But when I bring it back to the bad maroon I'm talking about, you say I ain't here to say nothing about him. You an agent, bro. Yeah. Don't pay and that that's guy the mind. I would recommend. It's not. It's even agent. These dudes are agents to humanity. It's not even about agents to your race or your nation. Dudes is just agent to life. They agents to good living. So we can't even like try to come together with dudes because they not even like they want to hold on to Jamaican pride and not like every nation pride. I'm not going to choose Jamaica over every single nation. I like Chinese women, too. I like Indian women. I like all these women. So like Jamaican women. I can't. You know what I'm saying? I moved from the U.S. to come back to Jamaica. You see what I'm saying? I'm I'm not I ain't moved back because Jamaica is the most wonderful place in the world. I was born here, you understand? But when I, you know, to know that Jamaicans are not blacks after all that time I just did in Brooklyn, I mean, it's disappointing, but I, I understand it. You see what I'm saying? Like Hey, let me tell you something about about cats in Brooklyn. And I know this is kind of bold for me to say. I got something to say to all the black men in Harlem, Brooklyn, Bronx, and I want y'all to listen up. Y'all got the man up, man. 
foreigners have been controlling y'all communities for day one. All of the first gangs in New York that controlled New York was Italian gangs, uh, Jewish gangs. J- Jamaican, the Jamaican shower posse was running Brooklyn. Like these foreigners be running shit. You know, no, not the brain division and shit, but they come over here next thing, you know, we worshiping them and scatter them and shit. They terrorizing our communities because they come from countries where it's way worse. Like, look what the shower posse was doing in Brooklyn. Terrorizing the streets, bro. Foreign gang. Like, I don't mean, I got the tie, I didn't want to go here. But if you look at it, the foreigners have always came here, made gangs and unions with they self, and took over shit. Whether it be street element, corner stores, all that shit. You can go get jerk chicken, all that from the Jamaican, just like you can get fried rice from the Chinaman. Everybody exploring the hood, but y'all don't want to call out certain people, man. Like, I know these my brothers too. I love Jamaicans, but I ain't gonna lie. A lot of them African brothers came over here and said they was gonna free us from the white Jesus, and they just gave us the black Jesus. They just, now we ain't, Christians no more, we rocking dashikis, praying to they gods. No one really came to give us our true indigenous roots and gods. Everybody just trying to give us their culture, whether it be Egyptian, Nigerian. Bro, everybody trying to get over. This is a fucking uh, uh, game, and it's a competition. Why do blacks think we got friends? We say we don't got friends. Then when you point out what I'm saying, they say, well, hold up, them... We got diasporan friends. How we got African friends when the richest black people in Africa paying them kids a nickel a day to dig diamonds? They ain't doing they self right. Look at apartheid. They can't get alone. How we got friends and the friends is enemies of each other. Ain't nobody getting along. Ain't nobody got friends. Not even them. Your friends is who thinking like you on your like-minded. Fuck the color. It's crazy because the Dipset had a group from England that was making music with them too called SAS, I think it was. The Dipset, you know, the diplomats, they had an English group back in the day that was repping at them. Some English guys who sounded Jamaican damn near. And that's, I don't think, I mean, you know, Terror Squad is Spanish and all of that, but that's different because that's a Spanish. Well, group, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like, the dips. Uh, like, Q Butter, I know you would, you probably would disagree with me, but this is how the media portrayed it to the world. I'm not from Brooklyn. All I heard of, hey, man, stay muted till you gotta talk. Hey, Q Butter, if you want to get on, click the link. We'll mute everybody. But like I said, anybody want to join Taz, y'all can listen. It's an open bill. I don't know everything. Everybody that'll tell you who not from New York, when we think of Brooklyn, we think of Jamaican shower posse because that's all Jay-Z rapped about. He, every other line was about the shower posse. Who remember? Then Jay-Z make it like the shower posse ran Brooklyn. Or was it just me who caught all them? Boy, lines? I didn't know we are appropriate. Gun in your face and that's can, all you could come up Can someone answer my question except for niggas unmute and going left field? Like I literally just asked the question. I don't know what that dude just talking about. Oh, my fault. Bro, Sanchez. I was the question. Bro, Sanchez. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, go ahead, Miss Free. Nah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, whoever want to answer. When you say the shower posse, is that for something else? I'm trying to figure out. Oh, what that was that's about. a Jamaican like, that's a Jamaican gang who showered the streets with bullets. That's all you need to know for now. And then now I'm gonna see if I can oh. get this question answered real quick. Hold on. Am I the only and one? What's up? Supported by Sanchez. So um let me throw this on the table though, because I know I'm gonna hear a whole other um thing right now that um, 
Wow. It wasn't just Brooklyn. It was a lot of the bigger cities, too. Philadelphia. They were known in Philadelphia. You know too, what? Brother. You know what, Leonardo? Thank you so much, because these other folks are so fucking rude. Like, fuck Brother Sanchez. Yeah, they, they were known in Philadelphia, too. Yeah, I want to thank you, because I really and wanted a lot. Yeah, because if people ask me a question, I go to the extent to answer them thoroughly. I ask a question and people ignore me and just go to something else. And I'm like, wow, they like, fuck now, my I, question. I, I'm going to ask it again. I was the line that he was saying. Oh, I ain't hear the line. What he said, a Jay-Z line with the shower posse, I apologize. Give us that one. Go ahead. He said he ran up in the crib and the nigga said, boy, you know who y'all fuck with? And the next line was gun up in your face and that's all you could come up with. That's a Jay-Z line. But no, he got lines where he mentioned the word shower posse all the time. I can pull it up. He regularly talked about the Jamaican shower oh, posse. Me. So I'm trying to that's ask. A fact. Oh, excuse me, bro. Go ahead, Barkin. Oh. Uh, to add to your statement, yeah, he did. As me being an avid Jay Z listener, he did mention the Shaw Posse plenty of time. He did yeah. refer to the Shaw Posse, uh, uh, because uh, uh, Vivian Blake he just passed away like damn near, like if I'm not mistaken, like six years ago in jail or something like that. And uh, and they was running Brooklyn. A lot of them, the Caribbean dudes from Pappy Mason and the gang of them dudes was running Brooklyn, New York. You know, and a lot of and a lot of and a lot of the black dudes that was Americans, I guess for some reason, you know, they was kind of like scared or they just wasn't really trying to war with them like that. Somehow hey, you, you know, you know what's but crazy? What saying, Niggas call me bugging for being wrong. And don't you know the reason why I open up my platform is so I can be corrected? I don't have an ego. I'm just passionate when I speak. If someone come up here and correct me and they ain't a dick like that other guy was, I will listen. I'm not from Brooklyn. I keep saying that. I keep saying I don't know everything, which is why I put the link out there and say, hey, if you know, school me. Don't let me continue misleading the people. Otherwise, you don't give a fuck about the people. Just stay in the chat and let me continue misleading them. I'm giving you the opportunity to save all these people watching. You could come up and save them from my deception, and you won't do it. You're going to let me mislead them. So it ain't my fault now. Bro, Sanchez, do you know what's ironic? You know what's ironic? If you giving us smoke, I'm talking about like black folks, or you got something for the ladies, or something for the men, or something for the gangbangers, or whatever, whoever you're speaking about, it's all good as long as you own somebody else. If he can give us smoke, how can you sit up here and get up here and have an attitude of problem when he giving you a little bit of smoke and want to be all defensive? We never said, he don't say we're perfect as Americans over here, and he gets on everybody equally. Get out your damn feelings and stop being rude. Get over it. None of us are perfect, but it's okay when he's talking about us. But talking about y'all, you got your draws in a bunch. Don't tell me to sit down and shut up. Find something to do and get out your feelings and be a man. Straight up, like... Why well, we I, can't if, be perfect? If, if I was bugging, when I was wrong, i say ain't nobody getting the link because I know I'm right. I ain't never wrong. You ain't going to challenge me and you ain't correcting me. It's, it's niggas who do that, y'all. It's people who ain't letting you come up challenging and they say it's forbidden. They'll never let you do it. So that's you know, why when you say y'all and us though, that you create a level of division. Like I think it's I think it's we cool all do that to though. call it. I think I think it's I think it's necessary to call it out. In fact, um, when it comes to the Marcus Garvey thing, but I think what happened after that with dude is more so about how people feel about Jamaicans versus Americans. That was that was off the Garvey thing and more so to something else. And I think that's the problem. Like there, there's deep issues on both sides where there's a division that's been created and it don't have to be. We all black for real. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't disagree with what um what Sanchez was saying about coming here with the uppity attitude and whatnot. A lot of them do that. A lot of people come from the continent and do that. But 
I try to pride myself on not doing what they do because they come into a position where they don't know what they're coming into. I respect the fact that they are not intellectual and, and ready for this. What they came from is a lot different than what they're coming into. So I just don't view them on the same intellectual level. Therefore, I don't have to create an us and them paradigm. They don't, uh, that dude who came up here, he don't have an understanding of America. You know what I'm saying? He, he in the UK. I mean, you, don't under, you don't even know what I understand. You're just casting a spell. What's wrong with this channel? You don't even ask me what I believe. You, you, know, you automatically know what I believe. See, Why are you telling me what I believe? See, see, like, are you all right? He don't. Now listen, brother. I'm going to put you off if you interrupt. Taz finish, man. Chill out, bro. That's you proving the brother right about the attitude you, and the Stop sense of entitlement. I believe, see you what I'm saying? You know, name it, God. You know, I thought you left. Know, and see, that's see. kind of my point even right there is like, I, I don't want to say who's creating the division because it's there. You know what I'm saying? It's already there. But that's literally the problem. Like, you can't even have a, pro a discussion about Marcus Garvey without Jamaicans trying to claim him, without Pan-Africans trying to claim him. Like, we don't have to do this to people. What's wrong with dealing with the information and then leave it at that? Because even though you don't want to talk about Garvey, the whole reason you up here is to defend that legacy. And we all know that. So don't get mad at me. I wasn't even taking a shot at you, dog. I, I, I do worse than this, fam. <laughs> For real. So listen, all I'm saying is that I heard, I heard a lot of what's been said about me since. And all I'm saying is, if people want to know what I believe, instead of saying, you believe this and you believe that, expect you just say, yo, Ezra, yeah, what do you believe on this? And then, yeah, break down my answer. Don't cast your aspersions. This is all that you keep doing. I, I spoke about the Maroons, yeah. Instead of like, you know, instead of saying, all right, then, brother, I didn't know about that. You get me? I'm still sticking on that, bro. You, you're wrong and strong on that one, yeah. Be humble and say you didn't know that information and you will go research it and teach the people, yeah. You're still, you, you're diverting to Garvey straight away. Like, what are you there for, bro? Then you keep saying the same thing. Like yeah, he, he saying, he's word like a, word nah, he, he, yeah, though, he's now, like now, a now, tape recorder, bro. I gotta say this for you. Finish. Garvey ain't a diversion. That's the main topic of the show, actually. Yeah, and then you said you made a um, a documentary about the Maroons. Did you not say that? Nope, I didn't say that. I said that I spoke about the Maroons in this Garvey documentary. It's about black Jesuits, yeah. which I was exposing Garvey as a black Jesuit. You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about none of the exposés. I, do, I can talk about that. I probably know more about. I probably know more about him being a Jesuit than you. But you ain't asked me nothing. Get me. This is what I'm saying. Let me ask All you I'm something. Then. Is well, let me ask you something. Yeah, that you're throwing under the bus. You throw, eh? Go on. Tell us about the Maroons. Go ahead, man. Like, all, all, listen, I all just wanted to come on because you wasn't teaching the people correctly. And anybody who listens to you would believe that all the Maroons are sellouts in Jamaica. No, they Jamaican won't. Jamaican Maroons no, they in won't. brackets. No, they this. won't. Yes, they would. Yes, bro, they would. No, you no, didn't, you didn't no. separate anyone. You didn't bro, see bro, me. ain't there another Jamaican brother on here who just gave me love? Where he at? It's another Jamaican on here. He just big, big estate. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm in Jamaica right now. Brooklyn Bro, checking in. And, and I, I eat at the Jamaican. I live in Vegas and I eat at the Jamaican spot often. So I will be a hypocrite, bro. I'm just talking about Garvey. Oh, this oh, one oh. Jamaican. This one sellout Jamaican. And you don't want to talk about that. Like if it so was, you wasn't talking listen, about Selassie. But bro, listen. You wasn't talking about but, but, but now you go now you changing the goalpost. Anything but Garvey. Y'all oh, see you... what he doing? Bro, listen, stop unmuting. And I'm gonna tell you what the conversation is. And if you don't stay on track, I'm gonna have to boot you, bro, and we can continue with what we were saying. Bro, just be fair, man. Why you not? I am. Like, I am. You, 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 I'm not. I'm the host. You don't control this show. If you can't follow the rules and mute like everybody else, when I'm trying, I'm being patient with you, then you got to go, bro. I don't know why you got impulsive disorder. Relax. Ain't you from Jamaica? Saying, why are you going to tell someone? You're from Jamaica. Hit a blunt, man. Now, check this out, bro. Um, You lied. There's a Jamaican on here who rocking with me. See, if there was a black guy that went to Jamaica to infiltrate them and be a sellout with the Red Cross and all the shit Garvey did... 
I'll be rooting with you. I'll be saying, fuck that nigga, my brother. You right. That nigga ain't one of us. We disclaiming him for going over there doing that fuck shit to y'all, even though he from here. But you won't do that. You won't say, yeah, man, he was in Jamaican and I'm one. But yeah, that is fucked up. You still ain't you, did it. You ain't asked me nothing. You ain't asked me. I shouldn't have you to ask, ask you nothing, is- brother. You heard the lecture. You said you know more about him being a Jesuit than me. But yet you won't tell us about it. You keep whining and re- repeating yourself. No, I will. But all I'm saying is, yeah, you're being wrong and strong. Yeah, I've I've come to talk about Nanny because that's what frustrated me. I'm sitting there listening. Yeah, obviously, who is a maroon. Yeah. And obviously, my, I let my daughter and I tell people about your show. You get me? So like when I'm sitting there listening to you chat rubbish, obviously, I'm going to I'm going to be frustrated with that. And look, yeah. All you had to say was, we could have moved on swiftly, but you want to go all the way around the world instead of just saying, okay, then, brother, I didn't know that. You get me? You want to talk about... And listen, this is the last thing, and um, Marcus Garvey link we can talk about, yeah. And Marcus Garvey, obviously, like, for me, I understand why a lot of Jamaicans will follow him, but I don't follow him at all. And I don't believe... Oh, shit. You get me? I don't believe, like... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This, a lot of the same questions you have. Yeah, I have... You know, why did you never go to Africa then? Yeah. Like, why is it everybody? Oh, no. A- answer that Africa? one. Nah. <laughs> I'll answer that one. Why didn't Garvey go to Africa but told us blacks to go? Because we don't like when white folks do that to us. We don't like when racist white folks say go to Africa, nigga, and they ain't go. Yes. And they and they for Garvey did it. So why did he do it? And he never went. You know what it is? I honestly think for that, I think that he was so, his concentration was the diaspora. Like, he wasn't, like, he knows Excuses. Africans are all right in their place. Excuses. Excuses. Like, I just, I'm, <laughs> it, it, probably is, it probably is an probably isn't excuse. Probably is an excuse, but, like, what does, what, is, what, is, what, is, what does what does his organization say on the website? Yeah, it talks about the diaspora. It doesn't talk about hold up, hold on, hold Africa. on, hold on. You, see, hey, you bro, said you said his. about the new age version. I'm talking about when Marcus Garvey was alive because what Sanchez showed you today is something different than I've already shown. See what I'm saying? So like we have two different arguments that both come together in Marcus Garvey was a fraud. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's factual documented understanding there. So when you extend that out to where he comes from and then bring that to America and then people come here and act like he's a national hero here, he's not, he's a hero in New York. Nowhere else. That is a big bomb. That's facts right there. That's why they called it Harlem radicalism before Garveyism. Before it was called Garveyism, it was called Harlem radicalism. Go ahead, brother. See, yeah. do you... Uh, like yeah, I yeah. said, I agree. Uh-huh. One second. No, go ahead, go ahead. You can respond to Taz, man. Go ahead. Yeah, oh. Yeah, uh, to, to respond to the brother, like I said, a lot of that I agree with. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, you can, you can't really talk about what I've noticed that you li- like to do on this channel is he thinks this and he thinks that. No, you can only say what you think, get me, and then you know what you believe. You can't That's tell all people I what they do. think. No, like, you, you one second, one second, huh? One second. Well, let me let me because you keep saying I can speak and then you keep cutting no, 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 me off straight listen. away, and I'm then you wonder why I get frustrated. Off. Why is this guy talking now? Because like, I just, I just want you to know I'm only going. Well, I'm talking, no, so you can't wait, you can't wait. And then but you're gonna say that I'm rude. But look, you're gonna say I'm rude. Like, 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 let, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me show, let me show you what you're doing, though, Van, and I'm gonna give you the mic back. When you get the mic, respond to his argument about the information instead of whine and complain about what a man doing. Deal with the information, bro. Because that's why folks cutting in when you go to making them accusations, man. Just respond with the information on Garvey. You keep dancing, bro. It's getting annoying. Brother, was, you making, was you making accusations about me? I believe this and I believe that. Was you doing that? Answer the question. See, bro, you want to argue I'm about petty stuff. I'm basing things you say, bro. And I think, I mean, everybody's hearing what you say. Stop being a hypocrite, man. <laughs> Stop being a hypocrite. Basic, but, me well, to me. Instead of answer the question, man, I'm with me. Hey, bro, the discussion is based on what you're saying. <laughs> and you're you just, we yeah, bro. I swear you to can't, God. I thought you bro, bro listen, listen for a second, bro. You can't get two or three minutes into the discussion and then act like I was talking and he cut me off. Are you all right? Was yeah, my I talking you, and the man cut me off? I'm muted. Are you, what's wrong you with cut you a lot of people off. Huh? 
And you're I was very... talking, he says I can have the mic. I'm like 30 seconds in. And, and, you, and, and bro, and you, and, and, and you oh, hella... You, you, have, like, you deserved you, it. You hella aggressive um, too, man. Relax. Shut up, white boy. See, you, you, you straight up, look, let me show you something. Hold on. I haven't disrespected this guy yet, even though he keep doing this and I'm being patient. He he made a gay joke. Yes, you have, though. Look, he keep interrupting me and it's my turn. Now, look, I haven't disrespected him. He made a gay joke and he, just, and he just made a racist joke to Tim. Like, this dude represent everything I bet Garvey was like. That's why I say I'm calling I see, him a white boy is not, racist. I, I guarantee you, this is why Booker T. Washington didn't like Marcus Garvey. He's calling him a white boy yeah. racist. I, I yo, bet yo, you. Good, I, I bet you. Yeah, I bet you. Garvey came over here acting weird, just like you turning black folks off, just like we read about arguing with every black man. Garvey couldn't get along with black men over here, just like you can't. This ain't true for all Jamaicans. It's just for your type. It's just for your type. Because yeah, it ain't your goddamn turn to talk. I let you talk and it's you my turn. Me. Now you cutting me off and you then me off of my turn. Man, I'm kicking his ass off. Y'all go ahead. We'll get rid of that easy. I'm always win on that one. I got the master button. You forgot. That dude, an agent, I don't care what nobody say. He don't even want to go in. You notice he said he know more about Garvey being a Jesuit than me, but he want to be petty and act childish and argue about like with dumb shit. Taz bring up information because Taz been making documentaries, bringing up the receipts just like I'm doing. Two different lanes of research. You can take Taz's uh, work on Garvey. Take it with what I got, and it'll get a big picture, even bigger picture. He don't want to address none of our working claims on this foreigner. It's like he defending them subliminally. Say, so I ain't here to defend them, but if you know more about him being a Jesuit, why you ain't talking like we talking, talking about the Jesuit shit? You want to keep arguing with us like a child on petty shit so you don't got to deal with the fact that Garvey was an agent. He never touched on Garvey. He tried to get on Maroons, Holly Selassie, and all that. And, bro, I'm telling you, he's smart. He know what he's doing, man. Yo, Sanchez, you know it's crazy, right? You know, being that Garvey was an import to America, you know, like in these days, you got this preacher from America that's out here. Um, he talks like this guy, and then, then, then. And I was checking him out for a minute, like before I really got like enlightened, enlightened. And I was like, yo, how the hell is this guy like in Jamaica? Like, and then I'm looking at it, it's like the same Garvey shit because he got the Christians down here. You see what I'm saying? Like he got the Christians down here. He had like a debate with I got a Vegas, question. you know. Hey, hey, this is important for me, right. Biggs. Biggs, I want you to answer this cause you from Jamaica. Uh, anybody from up North, in the New York area, uh, like the OG Leo, who know anything about the shower posse. I want to talk about the shower posse because I respect, uh, you know, what Q, even though Q Butter uh, respect Garvey, he ain't going to, uh, he going to bring up, you know, the different benefits blacks may have got from the UNIA. But when you bring up the price we paid and what it was really about, we need that side too, you know. But the thing is this: Q Butter said that uh, I'm wrong about the shower posse running Brooklyn. I don't want to disrespect BK. Like I got family in Brooklyn, and if they hearing me, I'm embarrassing them, and that mean I'm gonna get a call saying, "Cause you don't know what the fuck you talking about. You should have hit up your cousins." You know what I'm saying? So correct me here. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to tell you now, if I'm wrong, then hip hop lied because they put the Jamaican sh shower posse as one of the most lethal gangs in Brooklyn. And they got A&E documentaries on it and all of it. I watched them all. I was fascinated with the Jamaican shower posse when Jigga started talking about them. So that's what I'm trying to find out. Did the Jamaican shower posse ever run Brooklyn, or am I wrong about that? I mean, 
respectfully, I grew up in Brooklyn from 87 to September of last year. And being that I'm in Jamaica right now, I'm not even going to answer that question. The, the facts are out there, but I'm not going to answer that question. I ask you something, brother. That's you're saying Jamaica now, right? Facts. I would say they 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 own the drug game, if nothing else. They control the uh the drug, the cocaine and the marijuana. Yeah, and then like you got Jamaican Queens, and it's like it show you the influence of Jamaica. The fact that it's a whole section of Queens, you know, Jamaica Queens, 50 Cent, you know. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, Let me ask your brother a question that in Jamaica now. Just one question. You hear me, brother? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, uh, do you listen to like Best FM and you listen to like Best FM and things like that? Nah, I don't listen to Best FM, Bro Sanchez TV yeah. all day. All day, every day. I hear you, I hear you. I just find them around maybe a couple months now. Maybe two months at most. But the reason why I'm asking that because that's like the um conscious community down there. You understand me? In Jamaica. Oh, okay. Very small. <laughs> and there's a new lady that started two weeks ago. But that's now like, like that's like the conscious take... community down there. Go ahead. Huh? Oh, conscious community? Well, Jamaica doesn't really have a conscious. It's like the same thing if it's you're in the state. They, or... they, they don't got the facts. They don't got too much facts, though. I mean, they got um grassroots facts. I mean, I just learned today how to deal with this reparation and slavery thing that it was a real slavery thing that went on, just, just to make a short reference. But how um you, you know what? should understand it is Chattel slavery was the real thing that um, if you could get any kind of reparation, that's true. It would have to be half a chattel slavery. I want. I, I got. I'm glad you have. I gotta interact yeah. with. I gotta interact with the chat real quick, if you don't mind, my brother. Uh, no problem, Donovan. Because I I gotta control the narrative, you know, and and keep the show going on a subject matter that I had written down for y'all. And what I want to talk about at this time is something in the chat. I have Jamaicans on the panel now. And they're, um, they're outnumbered two to one. Now, you got people in the chat room saying, I uh, attacked a Jamaican. I attacked a Jamaican. Now, that Jamaican attacked me, did, disrupted my show made gay jokes, made a racist joke, was getting into it with everybody, just chaotic. And you actually got a lot of folks saying I attacked him, y'all. <laughs> and I got Jamaicans on a panel who's showing me love. <laughs> but so what I want- But he not Jamaican, he English. <laughs> I'm glad and, you said that. I'm glad and, you said that. Not, I, and, I, was, and, I wanted to ask him, have you been to Jamaica? And that's the thing. But no, no, disrespect I'm, to him. I'm so glad my two Jamaican brothers, my two real Jamaican brothers, I bet you they went to Jamaica before. And that brother there, been in England his whole life, never been to Jamaica or Africa. And guess what? Garvey the same way. Garvey went to England more than Jamaica or Africa. I think they, he died in uh, uh, London. So... You know, I think like books and thing coming out of England, so I could see why he's so stuck up and all that. Yeah, all the and all, the and all them things comes out of England, and he's he has a lot of books too. Yeah, all them Jafakins that come from the UK and England, they come acting like him and Garvey. But y'all, real Jamaicans from the island, I rock with y'all. Y'all and Bob Marley, man, hey. I love y'all. Hey, I'm with a real Jamaican right Black now. Power. I'm, I'm with a real Jamaican right now, my nigga, all the time. Yeah, I'm fucking. Yeah, I don't want to go to no rich part of Jamaican. Take me to Kingston. I'm fucking with Bob Marley and cats like y'all, cause Garvey came from that or uh, some bougie, and that's the thing. Like he got that same energy. See how we got along with Bob Marley, but we don't get along with cats like that. Like, see. 
it's the real and the fake and everything. They misrepresent Jamaica. Yeah, you can, he, yeah. he never been to Jamaica and misrepresented, causing chaos between us and Jamaica. And he ain't even been to the uh, Jamaica in his life when it's two real Jamaicans on the panel who agree with me. Boy, that's crazy. I'm going to mute my mic. Facts. Rasta Crip checking in from Margalee, Jamaica. Milk oh, River Clarence. You know. Black Power. But uh, you want to talk about, you know anything about the Sean Posse? I don't know a lot about them. They, they were scary to me. But one thing I would say is they had big support because when you run the drugs, you know, trade, whatever drugs it is, whether, whether it's marijuana or whatever else, they had big support because to get it here, they have to have the support other people in power so just be mindful of that it wasn't like these are people who come here when they come, most of them come here through the so-called government and thing like that so bro you in, you're not in jamaica talking about shower posse like that on your computer or your phone right it seems oh, like y'all be having a, a accent competition man y'all can't just always talk like that oh my bad y'all might talk like that y'all go ahead my first. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you was trying to say. Just no, uh, but what is? I'm saying some of y'all be having a phony accent. No, I'm right. saying you got well, one. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to keep us on topic. I want to really know: was there ever a time where the Jamaican shower posse was the most feared gang in Brooklyn? At any point, I'd sleep better tonight if we can go there and, and get to the point and not go around it and just, if you don't know it, don't fuck with it. But if you do, school me. Like, I want to know. And we can move on anywhere y'all want to go from there. But help me with that one. Can y'all help me on this one? I can't help you, flat power. Damn, look like I ain't going to get no help on this one. Do you understand what I was trying to say just now, brother, about this the passive business? Oh, go that ahead. Bro, it, support. You did, would you agree you, with that? If you want to, you school, bro, Sanchez, bro, if you know the, the, the facts that's been I documented. Said, would, you agree, would you agree that they had big I'm support? I'm not commenting. On that, bro. I'm in Jamaica. Okay, I ain't I'm in, I'm here talking that. about no shower posse, bro. Can, can y'all hear me? I wouldn't yeah. say they was the most feared because when you look at it, they still had a boss. So I agree with the with the brother saying they had support and they had support from their boss. Now, ultimately, the the most feared would be the boss. I mean, we had the illusion of these are the biggest and baddest, but they wasn't. They were just scratching the surface. And most people know that, you know, we had the Jamaican posse in Miami. And they 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 was getting pretty strong down there. Um, but of course, um, the Haitians pretty much overwhelmed that really quickly because they was coming in droves. It was just, it was just, they just outnumbered them. And y'all know them from, from Zopound and shit like that. So no. even then, we even with Zopound, the same thing, they was they was controlled by the government. So I, I don't look at them as most feared. I look at, at them as the the illusion of who's actually controlling things, but really ain't. You yeah, see what I'm but you know, the it's, government it's, will always be the most feared. You I, I yeah, I get that, but I'm talking about with black gangs, not not the government, for example, like <clears throat> for example, like <clears throat> MS-13 is 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 like a very feared gang in L.A. Like real talk, when you go to talk about gangs in L.A., real talk, MS-13, they do like, yeah. And so it's like what we see, like when the Cubans came in with Scarface and all that, and Miami was getting bodies out the bodies when the Cubans and Colombians and, and like most of the violence wasn't even from black people. It was really from the cute during that, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at the Scarface move. So what I'm saying is, is like, you will notice that 
the foreigners come over here from these countries that's really going through it like oppression. Like that brother Biggs in Jamaica, he said he's not even going to speak on the shower posse because he living in Jamaica now. That's big, bro. Like that show you, you well, see what, yeah. That seems like that's your answer right there. He don't even want to talk about it. You yeah, feel me? Volumes. Yeah, like this shit deep. Like these foreign gangs always had a degree of fear that like folks be snitching on the Crips and Bloods a lot. But, you know, a, a black person don't really snitch on MS-13. Like, cause they coming for your whole family and they beheading motherfuckers, chopping your head off. And it, it ain't gonna stop the Mexican mafia with them. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like some, some of these foreign gangs got a whole nother organized criminal degree element that Crips and Bloods just kind of getting into. Like even with organ trafficking, MS-13's even into that shit. You know, like, that's what I'm talking about is levels of uh, terrorism. And a lot of these guys come from countries where they send bombs blow up every day. They send children with AKs and shit. So they come over here and I ain't going to lie. They, they kind of do their thing in the streets. I'm from, hey, and, and I can be wrong. I can be wrong. A lot of them have that, like, diplomatic immunity and some of them they just get sent back because they was illegal anyway so there's no jurisdiction over them so they allowed to slide with like you're not going to really go to jail and see a lot of chinese people in jail so if you go to war with them they're just getting sent home you're going to prison so it's kind of an unfair war when they come from them other countries and they still had them gangs in their other country and they sent plants in jail to have gangs in jail it's kind of it's kind of weird with that foreign shit but they make with, sure they got their mark in every part and, and that's why i ain't gonna speak on a shower posse no more because you better believe they got hit they had hit men who can just knock you off and go back to Jamaica and ball out the rest of their life based on what Drop said. And I bet you some of these foreign gang hitmen was probably working with the, the government here too, getting their big money on big hits and going right like, oh, hey, I, let me just shut up. I'm feeling like bigs now, like, and I ain't even in Jamaica. Let's let's get back to Garvey. Yeah. <laughs> but I brought, I brought, uh, Garvey up because um the shower posse up to make a point and I forgot what that point was. But to the people that that saying I'm being divisive, you got to think about something. Garvey came over here and started this division. Our people was united prior to this whole Garvey movement, neo pay, all of that shit split us up into ADOS, FBA, Garveyism, Pan-Africanism, Black Lives Matter. It's so many groups today. If you go back during the 1900s, it was just one group, Black Americans. And no matter if we got along or not, that was us. But now it's ADOS, FBA, this shit that, like, y'all don't see what's happening because a lot of these shits is starting from people who come and hear starring groups and either going back to their homeland or not even following the, the motto or the group they started, like Garvey. He lived his whole life and never went to Africa, but the whole point of his movement was telling blacks to go. You can't tell me, even if you're a Garveyite, that that ain't the biggest laughable hypocrisy Ever like on some country shit. It's it's kind of like Elijah Muhammad. We found out he never took a Hajj to Mecca, and was telling all his followers to do it. Like I I I gotta respect. Like I said earlier, Muslims who go to Mecca, even Jabari. I even got a I got a newfound respect for Jabari. He been to Kemet several times. He don't just talk about it. Like, 
come on, let's people don't even even the Garveyites ought to say, you're right, man. Like it that is something we would have wished our leader would have done. But it's just God worship. Your God can do no wrong, even when I'm pointing out a blatant hypocrisy, just like with Jesus and the Bible, with the Christians. Any kind of ism is a religion. Garveyism, Hinduism, I don't care what it is, bro. But let me just stop, man. I'm hogging the mic. I want to hear from everybody. Tim, you want to chime in, man? You've been quiet. Sutek, what, how y'all doing? Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, I don't know much about Garvey. That's why I found your presentation so interesting. I need to go back and watch it because I was kind of running around. But I think you brought up some great points about the Red Cross and the Black Cross and um, the, the division. And uh, I first heard of Garvey through uh, Bob Marley, through that quote, um, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. And I'm looking up quotes now, and he's got a lot of great uh, gems if you just look at his his quotes. But I think a lot of times they put these controlled opposition leaders for groups uh, to kind of steer them off and uh, preoccupy them and, and prevent any real organization. So I, I wonder if that's the case here. But I have a lot of research to do in regards to uh, Marcus Garvey. So I just wanted to add that. And uh, one other thing is, do you guys get the impression that Bob Marley was propping up um, Marcus Garvey at all? Because, um, like, was he campaigning for him at all? Or was that just uh, a misinterpretation on my part? Uh, Ma- yeah, that- Bob Marley, if Bob Marley was what I call a free spirit, meaning that Bob Marley share could could relate to everybody. Bob Marley could talk about Garveyism, big up Garvey and Halle Selassie, then go hit a bong with 10 white girls. That was the kind of nigga Bob Marley was. He, he was just living, he was trying to just say peace, world peace. One love was his message, one love. Garvey message was one God. So I think they killed Bob Marley because he was getting more influenced in the Garveys and all that and he was promoting integration and you couldn't have that when they trying to promote Garvey as this as with this separatist agenda and the hypocritical part is Garvey was integrated with the League of Nations and plenty European groups including the KKK what a hypocrisy Um, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something to think about. Sutek, if you wanted to chime in, you can. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I I really like Bob Marley's music, but sometimes I wonder if he himself wasn't uh, controlled or working uh, for the for the establishment in some way or another, either maybe to get people zoned out and and you know doing a lot of THC or just like wishful thinking, you know, don't worry about a thing. Everything's going to be all right. Does that kind of shut us down and make it so that we don't go out there and fight and try to change things? Just kind of wishful thinking. You know what I mean? I got you because you want to do everything in balance. But the thing is this, Bob Marley was becoming popular during the time of major wars in the world. And they had to pump the people up with a bunch of heavy metal was rising up. You had the hippies, but you had different other radical groups coming with a more violent war type energy. And to me, Bob Marley was like the ultimate hippie. A lot of folks don't see him as a hippie, but if you think about it, the way he dressed, he was more of a hippie than a roster. You know, he was he he'll fuck with anybody, like you said, peace and love, make love, not war, one love, on some hippie shit, kumbaya shit. That's why I fuck with Bob, Bob Marley. That energy at that time was counterproductive to them trying to get us riled up and go to war, which is why people not not, not only like Bob Marley was a threat, but the hippies was a threat. Make love, not war. Those kind of messages they couldn't have because they was giving us at that time cartoons like Pie and shit where we beating up other nations, having America glorified and, you know, promoting basically that American nationalism uh, for war. Like, so anybody talking about peace and all that 
was not only getting targeted by the government, but they own groups would go after them and say, you a coon. We don't need to be integrating with nobody. But yet blacks join the American military to go help kill foreigners. We integrated that way. I want to say that um, what you just said that you think Bob Marley was more of a hippie than a Rasta. And you said you folks with Bob Marley. And that's like Bob Marley would turn in his grave. You see what I'm saying? Because Bob Marley taught that Rastafari was like his Lord and Savior, like his God, like this was his. So I think that, you know, Bob Marley wanted to be like known for being more of a like Selassie, I worshiper than well, I more tell than you just what, like peace and love. I tell you what, what, what I, my, my energy of him is like, I don't even see Bob Marley religion in his music. I hear little shots to Haley and, 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 and little shots of his Christian background, the line of Judah. But what I hear more is the people rising up against the powers together, one love against the powers that be, you know? And uh, to me, that's a testament to the hippie message more, more than it is the Rastafarian agenda which is purely the worship of Holly and straight up more religious is more than weed. I give them that it is some nationalism and culture to it. But however, I think Bob Marley was the most universal roster ever. Like not all rosters can kick it with all races. Bob Marley had everybody at his concerts, Chinese boys crying. Talking about one love. They got doggone, uh, 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 girls from Finland at Bob Marley concerts talking about some no woman, no cry in tears. Talking about can we take one of your dreads, Bob? Man, come on, bro. They can't have that. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but that message got turned into the LGBT like Now you right disrespect now, Bob. Love song. Why, yeah. why would you... Uh, desecrate Bob Marley like that. Like, please let him rest in peace. If they made his message some gay shit, we still gonna take his message for what he made it, not what they made it. You from Jamaica, brother? Let's let's remember Bob Marley, right? He didn't he didn't have a gay agenda. We don't want to even talk about Bob gay. Marley. Like, I don't want to even talk about gay with Bob Marley. To me, it's a little. He he was far from it, man. Like, and in it, like. Okay, I'll just mute. I'm sorry. My bad. Yo, hey. Bob Marley was an open-minded nigga, man. Trust me. Open-minded. That's how we all should be. Open-minded. Open-minded. See, you got to be careful. You got to be Marcus Garvey had a 501c before it was a 501c. Let's talk about that. What is your word? Be careful about what? That's a mic drop. Open-minded person. <laughs> I guess I understand, man. You're in Jamaica. I'm not. He had a 501c before he can have, before it was a 501c. Hey, you know I had to drop a bomb on that. I don't know why. Thank you, my brother Sanchez. And Leo, I don't know how we going from remembering how Bob Marley was a great philanthropist and revolutionary to now some gay shit talk with him. Like, I ain't gonna lie, that, that hit me wrong, but I'll, I'm gonna mute back. Y'all can go ahead. I don't like I don't like tearing down really nobody with of color that's in me, but I'm gonna still keep it a thousand. I would Bob Marley, his agenda was the same as Charles Manson. You know what I mean? He only had one job, and that was to get them people on psychedelics. Once they was done with No, it, I mean, brother, hold up, hold up, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> You confusing Bob well, Marley, Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix. Hendrix. There you go. Hendrix, you you met. No, I was just gonna say that. Kid. Yeah, that's Jimmy. <laughs> he that said was Jimmy. I was drowning fast. Why not? <laughs> that's <laughs> a big difference. Bad. It is a big difference. My bad, Joe. <laughs> Good catch, though. Yeah, man. Um, I want to really uh, thank. Peace. Peace. Peace and love, brother. Peace, Sutek. Go ahead, brother. You got the floor. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'
Do, do me a favor. Cut your uh, video camera off. It's going to make your audio better because we can hear you better because your audio is lagging, buffering a bit. And then now, go ahead. You got the floor. All right. No, I was just sending some, some greetings, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of shook up by the, by the intro, introduction. Yeah, I can't hear. Uh, I wonder if, if, if all that is we can't make it out. Yeah, I was saying uh, I'm, I'm kind of shook up by the, by the introduction to the, to, the, to the show today, you know, because I'm wondering if it was really necessary to, to go through all that, you know, because um, um, I'm just hearing right now. I know that uh, Marcus. Can I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Was it necessary for me to go through all of what? The knowledge that I taught in my presentation, right? Like putting all of the Marcus. You're going to have to uh, talk. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing to the phone but your message is getting kind of chopped up. Can you be still and talk like into the receiver? Go ahead. All right. I was saying the horns and the, and the language, you know, is it really necessary? I mean, I've been seeing your shows in the house, you know, walk around the house. There's, 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 there's women in there, you know, and, and today I just wasn't comfortable because of the language, you know. All I, I hear just wonder, it. Where you got, your, where you got your, your, your information from that Bobby was a Jesuit, you know, so all of us grew up under some kind of Christian denomination, you know, so you, you got to understand, you know. But I can't really you hear you, man. All right, I'll, I'll just type in the chat, brother. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, do my send best. Him a, send him my greetings. Send him my now, greetings. Now, now, now you're now sounding you. good now. Yeah, you sounding good now. Whatever you're doing now, keep talking like Something that. Changed. Keep doing that. Yeah, keep doing that. And go ahead and start over. Go ahead. Yo, I was just thinking of this. Wow. I know. <laughs> I was hoping that didn't happen. You can you hear me? There you go, man. Go no, ahead. not very well. Yeah, you in and out, man. So listen, listen, I tell you what we'll do. Let me make sure I'm understanding you. All you gotta do is say yes or no. You wanna know why did I bring up the information about Garvey being a Jesuit? Like what's the point of it? Isn't that kind of like what no, you asked yeah. me? And where you got it from? Because he's saying he was an ally, like he was running their, their same agenda. You know what I'm saying? What we know about. All right. I really need you to be I brief. Mean, research about Marcus Garvey. Do the same research. But you never come up with, no, he's an ally of the <laughs> He need to go out and come back in, maybe, bro Sanchez. Yeah, and he's not really listening to me. Like, brother... If you respond with yes or no, I can answer you. Like, you got a simple question, it seems, but after the question, you keep okay. going and talking and explaining when you should let me explain if the question is for me. You can do less talking since your mic is messed up. Make your quick question, and then we can answer it and, and move forward. Go ahead. Um, All right, I ain't going to be able to get this message, man. All right, I, I tried, though, but that's cool. I don't think I hear you. Peace yeah, it sounded like you was trying to say, what's the point of me bringing up this information about Garvey? And all you got to do is say yes or no. That was my question, but that ain't what you're going to do. Try it. Is that your question, yes or no? No. Okay, cool. Now that you, that no was real clear. Ask your question now. Let me give you one more shot, then you can go if this don't work. I'm saying, um, Marcus Garvey could have gone back to the Catholic. Why do you think he was doing their agendas, you know, in the KKK? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Thank you, my brother. I tried. I was patient. Uh, type it in the chat room. I'll read it there. All right. All right, Bruce Sanchez. I'm waiting for the chat. All right. Type it in the chat. Thank you. Go ahead, guys. I tried. Thank you all for coming through as well. Yeah, a lot of people, this is going to be a controversial stream, but I still want you to hit the like button. I mean, if you heard something about Gava that you haven't heard, it don't matter if you like it or not. Research it and see if it's true or not. Look for the information that hurt you. Because if the truth hurt, but the truth set you free, I'll take a little pain for a little freedom. No pain, no gain. Y'all can't. Get over that shit and your cognitive dissonance, denial. Dominique, my nigga. But when we get on Kemet, boy, he ain't nothing better than them pyramids, boy. That's the greatest shit on earth. That's my nigga. And, you know, I give him that. But that, like, they really done a number on us. Like, I, it was easy for me to detach from shit. Like, I've always been transient. Like, I can make friends and be best friends with them. And when it's time to move... I knew how to not miss them that much. And they may sound fucked up. I made new friends and moved on. Like, I, I've been transient. So, and, and, and the military life ain't do nothing but reconfirm that. So, it's easier to me for to, to detach from shit. So, all that, I, like, I had a, vi a whole rap video about Garvey. Do you know how stupid I look the day bringing this out? I don't mind making my old information, debunking my old self. Somebody can say, you used to be on Garvin nuts, and they can mop the floor with me on that, and they'll be right. I was wrong. But see, I'm willing to do that. I ain't detached to shit. I done, I done been in all of these kind of thoughts. The church, I done been in the pro-black shit, the comedic shit. But the thing about me, I can detach from that shit quick when you give me some facts. That's something I had since a child. I let it go. My family was shocked when I left the church at, at, at a young age. They, they thought I would lost my mind from the Bible Belt, talking about Christ ain't exist. My, I told you my grandma put me, like, I, I can detach from stuff. That's a virtue. Well, Sanchez, you can detach from stuff because of the love of self. You love yourself. When you love yourself, you can let other shit go real, real fast. Yeah, especially if it ain't serving you. Well, I have a question for the panel about Garvey. What would you have wished he had done with his influence? I, I wished he would have stayed. Stay I wish he would have stayed in Jamaica and, and made it a better place and let us make our shit better, what we doing. I agree with what the pro-blacks say. We can't unite with everybody till we get our shit right. So all the pro-blacks, come on now, this your message. That's a fact. As a pro-Jamaican, I say that too. Now check this out. Don't mean I don't want Jamaican brothers coming over here and, you know, all that politicking. But coming over here saying, yeah, we're going to help with y'all struggle. I'm going to be like, yeah, bro, we both struggling. Yours, you know, ain't as ba bad as mine. Like, we both and go and get you. It's like this, right? Your homeboy behind on bills. You behind on bills. But he want to be at your house every day. No, bro. Both of us fucked up. Get out. I, I, you my nigga. But I don't really want company right now. My bill's behind. And your bill's behind. Go home. Fix your bills. Get right. And then we can kick it in each other's house. Hey, hey. I always say, i be like, all the other races of blacks, like the Jamaicans, the Haitians, whoever else, they all come here, like I said, and want to claim that shit. But when it's really time to be like, we solidly stand with you as a nation, nobody ever do it. Yeah. Hey, Adrian in the back. Bro, Sanchez. Thank you. The Chinese will. The Chinese oh. will. They'll stand with any nation. 
Yeah, and I ain't saying they couldn't have, bro, I would be a fool to not tell you that that damn jerk chicken and that rice don't have me licking the motherfucking plate. And I ain't even trying to be racist. Man. I'm giving real facts. I, I hope the Jamaican dude I buy that shit from ain't watching this because he might be mad. <laughs> hey, but I'm going to tell you right now, I fucks with it. I like the energy when I go up in there. My favorite Jamaican place when you in my hometown of Alabama is Tasty Jamaica. Tasty Jamaica. Go there. Tell them, tell them Sanchez sent you. And check this out. I'm telling you now. They wouldn't be mad. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of Jamaicans I done met in Bama, they so interfused with Southern culture to the point where them niggas will agree with everything I'm saying about Garvey. Because they trying to keep their head above the water here in America. So think about this, right? Why would it, the dude I buy my jerk chicken from say, if I go to him and get a plate and I be like, thank you, brother, this is some good food. You know, man, my people struggling over here. And I just want to know, man, do you have any good solutions? Because you own a business, you running this restaurant, you successful. Can you give a young man like myself a little advice? What if the Jamaican dude who sell me my food look at me and say, uh, Sanchez, I think you ought to pack up, man, and, you know, take your ass to Africa. Hey, I, cool. hey, bro, I, dro <laughs> I say, I say, and I think I ought to stop buying this jerk chicken from your ass, and I throw that shit in the garbage. <laughs> what? That's what Garvey did, though. Garvey did that. He was that Jamaican that did that. Can y'all imagine that? You see why he stayed in beef with black men over here? I was. I would have told that nigga he tripping, dude. I would have like, hell no, you ain't finna throw that jerk out with the sauce on it. Nigga, I'll slap you. Start playing. You know what I noticed? That's Cause, crazy, too. Cause, like, out here, like, they got... Oh, I'm sorry, brother. It's a latency. Go you got it. You got it. Okay, yeah, I noticed that out here, like, they got a tasty Jamaica restaurant out here, too. It's like Jamaica base. It's like Jamaica... But I realized, like, the Jamaican franchises, like, when you go inside them, you could chill out, dine, there's no protocol. But, like, the American franchises, you can't really dine in them. So it's like, they don't care about, like, you know, this supposed thing for the franchises that's international. But the national franchises, you could just congregate and spread whatever. Mm -hmm. So called, and that's crazy. Hey, bro. Sorry, let me let me correct you on that one, my brother. First of all, peace and much love to the panel and the chat. Um, I go to Jamaica every year, right? And that franchise, Tasty, they're kind. They're kind of renowned for their patties, right? And within the franchise now, even on Jamaica soil, the shop is heavily guarded now because. The franchise has started to make a lot of money, right? So they have to protect what they make. Now, most of these tasties in Jamaica, they have security guards. I go to Jamaica every year, so I I, I go to um, um, tasties, right? So I got family in Jamaica, and um, I just wanted to touch base on the um, shower posse that you're talking about. They had a big influence mm. in London as well, very big in London. Mm. Um, I, just, I just wanted to add that because I heard you talking about it earlier so I wanted to put that in as well they had a big reach in London, UK Brixton, South London, where I'm from yeah um, um, and just to answer somebody in the chat they was kind of saying that they think Bob Marley was an agent I, 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 I kind of strongly disagree with that I strongly disagree but um, yeah you, you got the floor 
Yeah, man. Listen, uh, 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 you know what I wanted to say about. Uh, damn it! I I hope I didn't forget it. I was trying to share the mic. What was I gonna say? It was deep too. Shit. It'll come back to me. It'll let's come back get to some you, more folks. Yeah, let's get some more folks. Go ahead. I, I was going to ask, say, what? You see, I feel like Marcus Garvey is being disrespected in a way because why? I, we're not really talking about the good that he's done. I heard that someone okay. said about... Can I stop you right there? Can I stop you right there? The yeah. Can I stop I, you I right there? Think, yeah, no problem. I just yeah, got go some questions for you because I see where you're coming from. I swear I'm not trying to be rude. Let's talk about the good that he done. What was good about making alliance with the KKK? Let's start there. Malcolm X had a meeting with the KKK. I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. We'll talk about was, Malcolm X. Hold up. I'm going to try this one time. I hope you ain't another agent. I'm going to be patient with you. And I want to thank you again for allowing me to interject with this question. I'll even be fair. If you want me to stop this question and you want to be an Indian giver and say, Brother Sanchez, no, I don't want you to question right now. Give me the mic back and let me finish. I'll shut up. You want that? I'll question you later. Look, you didn't even let me finish my question. I just so gave you a... Like a I just gave you the super deal to, be to make it fair. Go ahead. Are you are you asking me to ask you a question, or did you ask me a question? You see, like it's like you just tried to okay. derail me. Okay. Did you okay. ask me a question just now? You know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, he asked you what's good about his alliance with the KKK. Yeah, I think that was the question. This is, this, and thank you. Let's reason properly. This is why I asked you. Yeah. What was this alliance with the KKK? Can you elaborate, please? Because yes, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. To, deni to deny it would be very disrespectful. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to tell you why to deny it would be disrespectful. He has several meetings with the KKK that were documented. We're not going to just deny history. So let's deal with the facts and let's talk about what was the good that came out of it, like you say. Because maybe it was some good that he done with his kid. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe him meeting, doing the KKK alliance was a good benefit to me, and I'm just too ignorant to know. So my, I'm asking you because you said he done some good. I want to know. What good came out of his KKK alliance? What was the good benefit for me for that? We're going to start there. I got more questions for you, but we can start with that one. Go ahead. Simple question. Please don't dance. Okay. No, no problem. But straight away, you're basing oh my your God. whole negative theory on Garvey. On I'm asking free one question. On and if you're not going to answer it, I'm going to move on. I ain't finna play with you. What's the I'm going to ask it one more time, bro. You're not going to play me for stupid and waste my time. You sound like the same guy under a different name, for real. And you acting like the same guy. And I'm going to ask you this, bro. What good benefit came out of Marcus Garvey Alliance with the KKK? Unmute and only deal with that and nothing else. Otherwise, we got to move on to the next person, bro, because I see how this is going to go with you. The simple answer to that question is, I do not know what took place at the meetings with the KKK, so I cannot further All comment right, there you go. on the result. Now, let me say this. I respect that. I, I'll give you your respect for that. I, I can rock with you on that. That's fair. That's honest. Now, with that being said, you need to pipe down on talking about let's look at the good that he did when the man made an alliance with our worst enemies on earth. So if somebody got cool, so what with, you if somebody murdered your family, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. If somebody murdered your family, Lopez, and I got cool with the murderer and made an alliance with him. 
What kind of good can I explain from you for that? That's why you can't give me no good for it. I, can I answer that question? Yeah, sure. Look at, look, uh, thank you, thank you. Look at the amount of deaths that has taken place. Yeah. What, what, what has happened? People were, f I mean, people were scared, fearless. There's only a, a certain people have come that has, has changed the mindset of the black man to make them understand. Why are you scared? Have you read that Billy Lynch letter? That's Who's very scared? important because when you Who's read scared? that, you understand. Who's scared? What, what do you mean? Have you, uh, can you wait? Don't interrupt me. That's a bit rude, you know. I'm asking you, a question. Uh, look, yeah, look. I'm just jumping for clarity. All right, for clarity. nice one. Let me just answer that. Let me answer that. Uh, nice one. No problem. No problem. The, 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 the black man and woman have been scared through, nah. through slavery and have mentally, I haven't finished, please. Okay. Have been mentally conditioned. Have been mentally conditioned I know my history. So I know what, my history. What, what, Let me ask you a what, question. What, yeah, nice I got to ask you a question. Is the Jamaican man and woman scared? No, why? And the Haitians, for example, the Haitians. I, I'm going to ask why? it again. Is, not... is the Jamaican man and woman scared? Scared. Answer. Listen. Answer. No they one interrupt. Experience. Yeah. For example, they 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 had a revolt. If I if I'm correct, brother, I'm it correct, wasn't this hard. It wasn't this. It wasn't this hard for you to say the black man and black woman scared. I'm asking a simple question. It's the Jamaican woman and Jamaican man scared dog. And you can keep going, brother. That's all I want to know. And you can and you got it. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. To a different no, you can't do so that. They are scared, no, they just both scared. We all just scared. Cool. Now go on. So where was I? Now that you can you can you remind me where I was? Because you see when you interjected, I went off. Here where we go, here where we go. I got you. What good came out of Marcus Garvey mean with the KKK? I got you. Go ahead. I got you. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. Like I said. I don't know about what happened at the meeting, but what I was trying to say is the conditioning of what happened, yeah. To so you're just mindset, gonna brush my yeah. question off Marcus, and then Marcus, go filibuster. You me again? Yes, I am, sure am. Cause I asked you a question and you said, I don't know, but what I wanna say and what I'm saying is, and no, I control the narrative. So my thing is this brother, if you don't want to answer these questions and you just want to speak just in general, go ahead and take the flow. But know that what ask you me, saying. Ask me the question. Ask all right. Me the question. Cool. Here go ask the next. Here, here's here's go the, here is the next question. What good came out of Marcus Garvey having alliance with the Red Cross? Do you mean the Red Cross? Do you mean the Red Cross organization that he started? No, brother. He started the Black he, Cross. He, he modeled it off the Red Cross. Okay. Don't tell me you do know this, right? Okay. If you think okay. Garvey okay. started the Red okay. Cross, I'm done I can talking. That. I can answer that. I All right. Answer that. So why did I, so so I, let me let me repeat yeah. the question? Why did Garvey's Black Cross movement had an alliance with the Red Cross movement to vaccinate Black Americans, even though we had no symptoms? What good was that for us? He know what was bad for okay. our health? Clearly. Go ahead, talk Clearly. to me. Okay. okay, let me answer that question. If he is a, if he's somebody that is trying to start an organization, yeah, he's obviously, yeah, I didn't know Garvey, yeah, but clearly he's obviously going to look at an organization that is already established, yeah, and try to work with them in a way maybe to mimic and to rebuild the same organization in uh, their own community. But how you know can what? how can you come Straight. to how can you come to America and say you want to help black Americans and make alliances with our enemies and you argue with us every day. Garvey didn't get along with black Americans well, but he got along with the KKK and the white red cross our enemies well. Please brother keep it real man. Yeah. 
You, you ain't real, you, bro. You 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 talk to you talk to you talk to white people. So you are lying with enemies. So what makes you? Um, better um, no, than no, 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 um, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Let me answer you. White people ain't my enemy. Yeah, and can't. And, and, me, uh, I'm about to answer you if you stay muted. White people ain't my enemy. Cats like you are. I know Tim's position, and he white as snow. I don't know you. You seem like us. I I can trust you. See, the thing is this right here. You can't accept truth. People like you are dangerous. Just because you from Jamaica and the other guy did it. You can't, like I asked you what good came out of it, and you can't tell me what good, but you're going to be combative. That's the spirit Garvey had. He you was, he was bro, I told you the see what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? So what? You can interrupt me, but I can't This the same guy, y'all. Y'all hear it? That's the same, same dude. Yep. <laughs> well, it's not the same guy, bro. You're right. Yeah. You're okay. That's you, bro. You're okay. I'm not even you the same Jamaica. dude, bro. Do I sound like I'm from no, you're 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 from ja you're from Jafaka. You the Jafakan from the UK. That's who you is, nigga. You're back. The Jafakan is back. The Jafakan is back. <laughs> You are an agent, mate. Yeah, <laughs> trying to you're trying to miss. Look, look at you laughing. Answer the question. I thought you're a scholar. What's the question? You what's, a scholar. what's the question? Listen, what's the question, you, man? What's the question? Listen, yeah. This is my question. This is my question for you. Yeah. If you are on the left side, Marcus Garvey is on the right side. What have <laughs> you done for the community compared to Marcus Garvey, Garvey that gives you the right? Okay. Yeah. Let me let me answer you. Let me let me answer you. Let me let me let me answer you. Let me compare myself to Garvey. First of all, I'm from Alabama. My granddaddy marched with Dr. King in the civil rights movement. My family got a long history of activism in the South. Oh, and I'm just starting. Sorry, you asked, no, you. no, 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 you. no. I'm about to go down to me, and if you interrupt again, you boot it. You ask the fucking question, nigga. I'm, I'm been too patient with your ass too long. Now, let me finish answering you, bro. Oh, relax. Up, bro. Relax. Man, Re relax, talking. you fake-ass Jamaican. Let me compare myself to Garvey, because you know he ain't half the man I am. Now, let me compare me to Garvey since he asked. First of all, I'm born on a land when I was little. I saw the KKK marching in my streets. I had to stand up for my people at a young age, and it wasn't on the level of no real revolutionary shit. But I grew up in the midst of oppression. And what did I do for my people? Whatever talents and skills I did, I used them to batter the people around me. When I started making money, I used to house a lot of my friends till they got on their feet. Because we brothers over here in the struggle. Now, compare what I'm doing to what Marcus Garvey did. He came over here and vaccinated my people. Indoctrinated my people working with the Vatican, divided my people, siphoned money and scammed my people. Let me show you something. First of all, this the land my ancestors fought and struggled on, and I never left it. And I'm still here risking my life speaking up, fighting against my ancestors' enemy on their land. Compare that to Garvey, who left Jamaica, ran like a fucking coward, didn't even die in fucking Jamaica. Died in the UK or even Harlem. The man didn't even pay no attention to Jamaica. He spent more time in London than anywhere else. He was fucking a Catholic devout, and I go against the Catholic church. God indoctrinated his motherfucking people. You know how many churches he started promoting his goddamn Catholicism? Don't you know he influenced the foundation of the AME church? I ain't indoctrinated my people. I'm waking them up from indoctrination. It's niggas like you coming over here seeing chaos, keeping my people indoctrinated when you ain't trying to fit your own fucking country like Garvey did. How the fuck can he be my people's Messiah when he ain't Jamaica's Messiah, nigga? Garvey came over here arguing with black men who was trying to get busy just like you doing, nigga. Garvey was a nigga in the way, just like you. When FBA niggas was over here trying to fight this white man, now we got to argue with this foreign-ass nigga.
who think he know more about my problem and my solution than me, and I'm living this shit. How the fuck you gonna compare me to Garvey? I never run from my ancestors' land and go and help out some strangers and never go back home. That's the nigga Garvey was. Ask him what he do for Jamaica. Nigga, you can tell me everything Garvey did for Americans. Ask him what he do for Jamaica. I only done some for my people and nobody else. I'm more of a separatist than him, and he actually talked that shit, and I live it. How the fuck Garvey is a separatist when he integrated with black Americans and separated from Jamaica? Niggas a hypocrite. I never separated from this, my people's struggle, even if they call me coon or nothing, because ain't nowhere else I can fucking go. I'm stuck with my people. I can't bounce back and forth and straddle no fucking fence. I can't get tired of black people and say, fuck them niggas, I'm going to Jamaica now. Fuck you gonna compare me to Garvey. A nigga who ran and encouraged my niggas to run. Came over here encouraging real FBA Americans to run. You gonna compare me to a runner when black men been over here fighting their enemy and never ran. Got some nerve. Bro, got some nerd on it. Go ahead. Can I ask a quick question? Are you taking? Uh, I want. Are you taking into consideration that um, America? Are you putting? I know you should do. I know you probably do, but I just want to make sure that uh, America is officially. Call the land of immigrants. Like that's how it all. That's the um, that's why everybody come here. You say America is colonized by illegal immigrants. That's why everybody come here. And I didn't say colonized. I say it's officially. In. I think that's what, if I'm not mistaken, that's what republic means. Just like the Roman Republic, it yeah, was but see a land <laughs> where immigrants. <laughs> No, listen, brother, you, you, it, it, it ain't that deep. It's simple. Everybody come here because they know you can exploit blacks and get rich in one year of you being here. Most of the rich people who come here, most of their wealth is ac accumulated from blacks. H how are they able to siphon money out of us and we can't siphon money out of us? That's what we need to be talking about, not Republican different types of government. It's the agenda of any foreigner saying they coming to help when they didn't help their own land. You ought to know some, that's a nigga showing up looking for a job and just don't want to say it. He don't want to say, give me a job. He's saying, let me just, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Let me help you. Let me Bro, help just you. ask for a job. A hundred. Hundred and that, um, I was just trying to make sure that uh, is it is it true that is is it's a land of immigrants? That's that's what officially it means to be a republic, which they tell you the politicians say this is a republic. Hey man, listen, listen, to, to listen. Keep... I gotta be honest with you. You I keep it. no, I gotta, I gotta. I uh, hold that's up, wait, wait, wait. No, listen, listen. I'm doing this to help you, brother. I'm helping you. Whether America okay. is a republic, a democracy. Black Americans don't care about that. It's a slave system. I don't care what you call it. A communary, a fucking theocracy, a dictator is all that. that. Like, we don't be talking about that. We just be talking about what they doing to us. I don't care what they call it. I'm looking at what they doing to me. Garvey came over here making niggas get vaccine shots. Let's talk about that. Why we got to talk about the Republican, the Constitution? No, let's talk. The title is about black Jesuits. What Garvey did to my people. No for one. Sure, for sure. Because yeah, no one Jamaica cares. I, I ain't going to lie. Right? But look, a lot of the Jamaicans that come, they don't sympathize with us. Like, like hear me out, Donovan. Right? But no, you don't because you, you got to let me pour it out then. 
Because if you was venting to me about your oppression, I'll be more sensitive to it. Look at how we've been. We're trying to get these guys to see that one of their own betrayed us. And we're trying to build our trust back with black brothers of different nationalities. FBA is all about that. They saying, look, we can't even trust nobody but the descendants of slaves in America. I'm not trying to be like that with y'all, bro. I'm trying to give y'all a shot. But it make the, the FBA movement gain steam when they act like that. Like all the fucked up shit I said Garvey did. And can you believe that dude said let's focus on the good shit he did? Not Tuskegee experiment. Not Spanish flu. Not the KKK alliance. Not the division he spread. Not the Catholicism and indoctrination and the many churches he established. Got your grandma worshiping Jesus. He did that to us, man. That's generational damage from one man who they called a Messiah. They got a fucking memorial for him in London. Nope. Like the two Jamaicans that came up here ain't, ain't sympathized one time. They didn't say, you know what, man, on behalf of my people, we don't fuck with Jamaicans like Garvey. Like, you know, he didn't really come to Jamaica. He spent a lot of time in London anyway. He was working with the Red Cross, and we don't like the Red Cross either. Now, that'll make me say, hell yeah, now I don't know what the fuck FBA talking about. All Jamaicans ain't on that shit. But now I got to go with FBA. I got to go with Tariq Nasheed because it's more than, it's like maybe one, maybe two of y'all that came on a day, maybe two for two. It was even, I'll, get, I'll be fair. We had two that was non-sympathetic and two that's rocking. And one of them is you, Donovan, salutes. Y'all go ahead, my bad, but you know, those two who came on, yeah, yeah go ahead, go ahead. You got it, you got it. Really deep. That's something I got to keep in mind because yes, it feel it feel real, real messed up. I don't want to curse too much because I see the same thing was happening happening in my country where that's the same thing going on. They exploit the people down there, the people who have the businesses and all that and all that and all that. It's it's pure exploitation. So I understand exactly where you're coming from now. I, I wasn't that deep, but now I get deeper into it, what we're really saying, you know? I, I'm glad I asked the question, because, yeah, man. Man, it's, it's true, though. This I mean, it was hard to put it together that they really come here to exploit the Blacks, because that's where the money is. That's where all the resource, I mean, otherwise from the land, there's, you know, there's nothing else but the land and the people. So I, I could see where you're coming from. Yeah. And I, I love it right now. Listen. Mm -hmm. Jamaicans, listen, Nigerians came over here and had us wearing African dashikis. My mama bought me one. Kenyans did, too. I had one Kenyan jewelry. I thought I was a little Kenyan, you know? Didn't know who I was. Christians told me I'm from Jerusalem. Kenya told me I'm from Kenyan. Egyptians said you're from Egypt. The maze <laughs> is deep. Like, <coughs> think about it. <coughs> Garvey. <clears throat> you know, he just came with a diaspora concept, but made himself the Messiah of it because he took the concept Hala Selassie took. Hala Selassie didn't have no problem uh, accepting the title of God, Messiah, just like Marcus Garvey. And to me, I don't really like that, man. You know, that shows a lot about a person's ego that you think you the Messiah and you didn't even save shit. I can see if, 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 if I can point out some and say, because Marcus Garvey came to America, look, this is better for me. I bet you no Garvey I can show me just one thing Garvey did today that I'm benefiting from and I'm nice. I said one, one thing. Y'all, they'll be up here forever thinking of that one thing, I promise you. Well, he gave you pride for Africa. How that's good for me. Well, 
he he put pride back in you know he made the black man see a militant image a coward image if gava is a militant image we're in trouble a dude who ran from his land and convinced others to run i read it earlier did you see the front of the lecture <clears throat> A dude who prayed. I'm gonna come in in about two hours in, an hour and a half. Oh, I ain't talking to you, Donovan. I'm speaking to the chat. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. good? Yeah. yeah if, if if that man who was out of shape talking about run is a messiah, we in motherfucking trouble. Sanchez, everything you speak in is facts, man. We ain't going to make because of Marcus Garvey, like, we throwing away, like, nah, we ain't do that. We, we real people here. We not, pri you know, so prideful. We about to throw out flat power because of Marcus Garvey. Like, really? Teach, my G. Listen, I ain't defending. I'm teaching. Uh, this call, listen, part of what I'm doing is breaking through the cognitive dissonance of the naysayers. I know a, a lot of y'all who respect facts and evidence, you already know what it is. I'm really basically entertaining the trolls and maybe I shouldn't. Y'all go ahead. I just wanted to say real quick, Jeremiah uh, Africa, hit the link if you, if you want to talk about what we're talking about. Hit the link. Jeremiah, and, if, and I Africa. will, and oh, I and, and I will say this: anybody come up and want to debate me, if you're respectful, you're gonna have an awesome experience. Them guys when respectful. If you come up here respectfully, I learn from you and I hear what you're saying and correct myself. Go ahead, y'all. <clears throat> it's so frustrating when people won't answer like simple questions when you want to build with them, bro. <laughs> It'd be, a, it'd be a lot better if people would just answer and have a <laughs> Socratic method discussion. You All see, it's crazy because listening to, listening to Bro Sanchez TV, like it's only a minute before you knew that Bro Sanchez would be tearing Marcus Garvey apart. Like, had I been from Trinidad or wherever I'd be, I mean, it would be a minute before, you know, because these people is connected to this. It's the same shit. Like, I'm going to talk about the body and I start <laughs> off at the, the thing is, you gonna look that yeah, hey, toes is about to come up before he finish. So, you know what I'm saying? Like all this shit, hey, you shouldn't get like, yeah, yeah. Hey, let me let me, do me a favor, y'all. If y'all wanna, uh, you know, do what I'm doing, the tr the chat on fire. Y'all wanna interact with the chat a little bit? I see a lot of people retracting dumb messages and they read them back and be like, no, I can't put that. And they retract it. It's funny. Shout oh, out to yeah. the chat. Yeah, what are they yeah. saying? Shout out to the chat. I used to be in there. <laughs> yeah, I want to entertain. That's what I was, I was reading. I was reading Jeremiah Africa. That's why I told him <laughs> to hit the link because he was going against everything we were saying. Well, look, that's why I said... <clears throat> The trolls scared to hit the link, so let's give them a little clout. Let's go on. We'll, we'll see what I learned about trolls. When you highlight them in the chat and call them out like this, they stop typing. They just go away. But um, <coughs> somebody Jeremiah Africa, y'all said got smoked. Let me see if I can find them. So I thought I saw somebody else tell them to click the link. Say, I just want to see. A yeah, Jeremiah Africa. Yeah. I'm going to read it. It said, I just want to see a presentation with scholarship and method. I'm not even disagreeing. I want to just see Sanchez do a presentation on it. You need to rewind a video. It's the first two hours. You can't deny that Marcus Garvey had an alliance with the KKK. You can't deny that he was a Jesuit. You can't deny that he was a Catholic. You can't deny that he come from royal, a royal family of who was way better than we'll ever be. You can't um, lie that he was a bougie dude who never knew struggle and didn't get along with black dudes over here who knew struggle. He had an uppity demeanor. 
Why, and you can't deny that. Like he he was arguing with W. E. B. Du Bois and uh uh Booker T. Washington and plenty more black revolutionaries who were born here, who blood traced back to the plantation. You can't deny none of my points. I'm not giving opinion. I'm giving facts. If I can dig Booker T. Washington up, he'll say I'm right. I'm giving you the other side other than them just giving you Garvey's side. And you don't want the other side because y'all some one-sided motherfuckers. <clears throat> and with, with all them facts and points, I just think you you left out the rainbow on, on that pick with in the thumbnail. You understand? Shit, that's how I come to, with it. You know what I mean? He Dude was complaining about the horns and how that's a disrespect. With all them things you just stated, all them facts and points, I think you left out the, the, the rainbow joint on the on the thumbnail. We ain't gonna you understand? do all that's, that. That's how I look. We ain't gonna do all that. I know, that, I know, I know. All I know. That. But I'm check this out. But check it's this. But, but check like this that. out. I know, I know. My. Let me let me explain something about the devil horns if you don't mind. I'm proud of my artwork for that thumbnail. Becky dropped me a bum. I'm going to tell y'all niggas something. I'm a grown-ass man, and you don't get to decide who are my enemies and friends. I don't have a go-along, get-along game. And if I got to like everybody you like for you to be cool with me, fuck you. I don't got to like Garvey because another nigga like him. And if the niggas say, I ain't your friend no more because you don't like Garvey, he's childish and ignorant. That ain't even no manly shit. I'm not falling out with a nigga because he don't think the earth flat. I get along with some global niggas better than some flat earth cats. <clears throat> like, I'm not like these other guys. And can't no nigga tell me to who's my God and who's my devil. Garvey is one of my devils. You don't have to agree. He can be your God. Just like a Muslim can't make Allah my God if I see Allah as one of my devils. And I put these horns on Allah too. I put them on Jesus. I put them on anybody I think work with the adversary or work against my people as an adversary. And if you was vaccinating them with the red cross, then damn it, you're an adversary. If you allied yourself with the KKK, then you're an adversary. I see you as your adversary, and I don't care what other niggas see you as a messiah. I see you as a devil, and, I, and who going to change the way I see another man? Who think they got that much power over me that they can decide who's my enemies and friends? Boy, please, I'm going to put horns on whoever I want, and I'm going to put wings on whoever I want, and you can do it the same. If you see me as a devil, you can put horns on me and I won't be mad, nigga, because I am some of you niggas' adversaries. That's a fact. Well, uh, as a Jamaican and as a man, you know. Uh, go ahead, my father. Somebody talking about my voice is gone when I've been passionately speaking for over five hours. Have that nigga ever been to a Southern Baptist church? Nigga, I done heard preachers go in horse than this and have the church on fire. I done heard rappers rock a stage to they horse. Nigga, I'm a MC. What are you talking about? I'm a throaty nigga. I was born for this position. Fall back and just listen to the knowledge. I got charisma. They ain't been to one of them week long revivals either. We're about Revival how I'm talking. days straight. Grab your glass of water, bro, Sanchez, real quick. Bro, I'm drinking on a nice cold matcha tea, ice latte, green I got matcha. You. I got he you. healthy shit, healthy shit. Like, why when a nigga go to telling the truth, niggas get worried about your health now? I'm good. Hey, I'm drinking on a smoothie myself. Well, I want to focus on that point that you brought up that uh, the guy was dancing around because um, I, I looked it up and apparently it's it's well acknowledged that this guy, um, Marcus Garvey, had secret meetings with the KKK. And those are some wicked bastards over 
in the clan. So I just don't understand. I wanted to ask Burrow, why do you think he was meeting with him? Hey, they won't answer it. No Garveyites will answer it. Yeah, there can't be a good a good explanation for that. No RBG secret meetings with the clan. Yeah, no RBG will show up. Like, think about it. You're pro black. You're about educating your people. You're about exposing deception and correcting the wrong as misleading your people. I'm living proof that pro blacks don't give a fuck about y'all. None of them challenging me. If I'm misleading y'all, they going to let me. Why? Because they don't care about you long as you donate to them and whatever they got going. They ain't going to think about it. There's a pro black watching this video somewhere and he's telling his girl he's wrong. He's wrong. I'm going to fuck that nigga up. I don't like what he's saying, but he won't come up and say that shit on the panel and intellectually challenge me. They got the same coward spirit as Garvey. I'm a little dude. Out here in Jamaica, me and my peoples that listen to you every day, we was just waiting for you to get on Garvey Sanchez. You don't even, I'm not even waiting like we trying to pre you or we could tell what you're doing or whatever, but it's like we saw this day coming. Like, you see what I'm saying? How do Jamaicans feel about him? Not every Jamaican is on Marcus Garvey timing or Selassie I or, yeah, Jamaicans. I mean, circular Jamaicans I'm around, you see what I'm saying? For the past five, 10 years, we've been on some, all this shit is some, you know, bullshit. We on some flat power, goddess worship type shit. I mean, they're, and they're we, the, so we the minority. I was gonna say there is a pattern with all these so-called black leaders that they throw at us, you know. Sooner or later, you see them all in the Masonic robes in the in the lodges, talk hanging out with the folks that we would complain about, but we never speak about that part, you know. Exactly, I mean, that's, my brother. They are, they'll so, never so talk about the, uh, Moors and the Masons or or the, the yes, uh, we do. Pan African movement and the Masons connection. Who who don't we do, we do that though? We do. What, what we don't. Yes, we them. do. We don't they don't them. connect themselves. That's it. That's it. We do. We do the connecting. You know, some of them are, are afraid to connect the dots because they know where it will end they up. They can't. They not. They not. They not. They not built like that. That's no, their job. They can. They can. Yeah. The thing is, they can. They know they, the truth. They not but supposed. They, they supposed they to, bro. bro. I don't think they supposed to. Our victory gotta be. Our victory gotta be good, my G. Our victory gotta. Our victory can't be good if, if everybody. I don't know. I, I mean, it probably can't. I don't know. But nature, I'm I, I'm going off the. It's just natural for this. I mean, it's natural. Garvey should never. You know what I mean? Like the Jenkins guy that's out here. He preaching all of this stuff. He got dudes in his church out here he is more popular than the jamaican pastors out here the most popular preacher in jamaica right now is a a, a, a guy from the south in america he got his you know he's on tv like every sunday morning and he's talking reckless shit he's like giving it to diggers he letting you know like i mean he coming off some christ type shit but he on some hood shit with it like he, he don't fuck with like you know, the alphabet people, rainbow people, he out here. So a lot of people is with him. And you see what I'm saying? And, because and, he burned. Yeah, go ahead. It's crazy. Yeah, and see people, I don't go to other people chat room challenging them. Like, I'm not on no pro-black channels trying to correct them. But if somebody come over here who I respect, I'll offer them up. <clears throat> If they don't come up, they can go to their channel and say what they got to say in response to my video. That's cool, and we can go back and forth and do it that way. That's that's That'll work, too. But check this out. <clears throat> I'm about clarity. <clears throat> we all on here teaching, and yeah, my throat's scratchy, <clears throat> but please don't worry about uh, my damn health. I'm good. Anyway, you know, 
I ain't look. Everybody got their own viewpoints. We ain't gonna all agree. Everybody holds some. That's why I said this long time ago. People who are alive won't unite because of people who dead. I don't like the dead man you like. You don't like the dead man I like. So the living men never unite because we're divided by the dead. And that was what religion was all about. The Christians say, you don't like my dead man? The Buddhists said, no, my dead man, the Messiah. The pro-blacks say, no, my dead man, the Messiah. And I'm like, yo, us living men are the Messiahs. Anybody dead can't do nothing for us now. They're not, they're, how they going to be a Messiah or a Savior from the grave? If we never get new Messiahs, what are we doing? The living men are the motherfucking Messiahs and Saviors. But they got the living men not becoming Messiahs because we arguing about which fucking dead man the, the Messiah. I'm willing to die for this shit that I'm teaching. I know I'm right. Mm. You could drop a bomb on that, bro, Santa. Keep going, keep going. Put Becky to work. Put Becky to work. Yeah, y'all go ahead, man. I'm going to share that mic. Yeah, y'all, it's been nice. So I'm checking out this big estate, bro. Sanchez, big ups, panel, the chat, black power. Hey, much love, bigs. I really appreciate you, my brother. Black motherfucking. All right, so I guess then we we reaching that point. I let every all of these last callers on and see what they got since y'all uh said what y'all had to say, and then we can power. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, I'm glad you touched base with all the religions are connected to the Masons and the Masons are connected to all the religions. That's how they excel in their uh, degrees. But I'm glad you touched on that like you always do. Yo, I just wanted to reiterate on it a little bit because, go ahead, bro. Yeah, it's because, check it out, right? I'm non-religious, meaning I don't have a Catholic agenda. I don't have no Vatican affiliations. I don't know nothing about the Jesuit order. I can never have the connections J Garvey had. But here's what I'm saying. Um, these guys and blacks in America would defend Garvey, right? And say that they pro-black for black people and they're separatists. But they'll let Garvey get away with allying with the KKK working with the Red Cross, the pause in black folks, talking shit about us. He yep. said, yeah, I, I read you the quote. He said the KKK is more of a friend to him than other whites. <clears throat> that, was the, that, was some, yeah, Yo, that was That was some stupid shit to say. Like, all the shit I'm showing about Garvey, man, I have every justified right for me to say, He's a person that I'm not too fond of and that I don't think should be remembered in a good light in history. Why should a dude who called himself a Messiah when he worshiped the Messiah? That's a hypocrite. How you a Messiah and you got a God and your solution is to run, but you a Messiah. And that's the advice you gave my people. Like y'all can't, that's why I'm talking so much, bro. Cause like, I want people to see whether you agree with me or not. You got the you know what up, bro Sanchez. Uh, you don't think that's a little rude, rude though, my brother, in the middle of me speaking. Like I'm about to get to you. I saw I'm you. Sorry, that's man. why I muted it. Yeah, I'm sorry. So yeah, like I was saying, man. Um, even if you don't agree with what I'm saying about Garvey, you got to respect me and be like. Well, you got your right not to like who you don't want to like and to like who you want to like. You, you you're infringing on my human rights now. I ain't going to tell you who to like and not to like, who to idolize and not to idolize. That mean this shit is a cult now. And if you don't agree with what I'm saying, one thing you got to agree with, 
he showed enough evidence to be justified in him not liking the man, even though I still like him and I forgive him. I don't forgive him. I think what he done is unforgivable. The ultimate act of trading would have cost him his life in other countries. But I'm going to stop right there. Tamelo, you got it. Welcome to the show, brother. You got the flow. What's going on, family? Hey, uh, first off, I want to say, brother uh, Sanchez, man, you one of the wisest brothers we got today. And I appreciate you. If you don't hear it from nobody else, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, as far as the Garvey thing, I think it's just lack of education. And people unwillingness, that's, that's what made people ignorant because they ignore facts and they're not willing to go research the facts for themselves. All he got to do, if he would have, first off, if he could just sit, if anybody could just sit down and listen to what, what truth is trying to tell you, you just got to be patient and listen, but you, you're too loud for your own good. I mean, it's a lot of evidence out there. Learn about Walter Plecka. Learn about Ernest Cox. All these people that work with, that uh, Marcus Garvey worked with, who he gave praise to, following the uh, white supremacist uh, blueprint. All they said was, all they did was take away from us rather than give us the power that we needed as the actual people on the land. And I digress on that one. Now, now, and and salutes to you, brother, and much love to you. To Melo, your mic is muted, but let me say this, and then it'll be your turn. Um, You can unmute after I address Goo Portal. Goo Portal said, bro, Sanchez, you are religious because you teach I got you. All right. I got you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I can, can hear you. Hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, my brother. Ah, uh, uh, what hey. up, what up, dude? Much What's love, up, my brother? Love. Much love. This is straight. This is straight from Africa. You know what it is. Uh, you Hell know what yeah. It is. Much, much love, love from man. Africa, man. Ah, glad, hey, glad hey. to have you, brother. Ah, much love. Much I'm, love. I'm about much to, love. I'm, I'm about it's been to, a minute, man. Yeah, go ahead. You got it. Yeah, you got hold it. Hold on, hold on. I'm listening. You, you can... I, I just wanted to say it's been a minute. I'm very sorry, man. You know, trying to survive, trying to stay alive. You know how it is, you know. But hey, I'm so glad to hear you, you know. And I've been listening to your podcast, just I couldn't call because, man, I'm out here hustling. Being black ain't easy, even in Africa. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. And yeah, man, if you're still killing it, you know straight up and down all the time. I just wanted to spread some love to let you know we still out here, you know? Me and my channel's been crying like, yo, man, when lost you hit up Sanchez? I was like, dog, it's a minute, you know? So I'm back to tell you, man, we got so much love for you. The wisdom you be spreading and the knowledge is be keeping us up, man, you know what I mean? Keeping Thank us you, on bro. our feet. Much I love, appreciate Sanchez. it, man. Much, much love. love. That's bro. all I wanted to say. Oh, I'm glad you said it because they see now I'm getting love from Africa and Jamaica. And, and with the subject I'm talking about, these brothers even feeling it. So it's just the blacks who here in America with me defending a foreigner who spoke about Africa and never went. And this brother calling me from Africa, giving me love. But you know what's so deep about this, though? Right? Um... Goo Portal, I'm going to read your comment and give you a little clout. I ain't forget. Goo Portal said, bro, Sanchez, you're religious because you teach your, your beliefs. Key word, my beliefs, not the Vatican's belief like Marcus Garvey. You know why I'm more man than Garvey? Garvey didn't have a fucking mind of his own, nor an agenda of his own. I'm my own man my own mind, and if you write that it, I got my own religion, I'm, that, that ain't a diss. It's mine. I ain't a Catholic like Garvey. He got his oppressor's religion. If I am got my own religion, I got some Garvey don't got Becky hit me. Come on with it, y'all. I'm with it. I'm entertaining it. Let's go. This fun. No matter what you say. Yeah, you got to have your own religion. Yeah. 
I think yeah. we should because the First Amendment gives us a lot of a, a lot of rights if we have our own religion. And uh, it, it, you know, we have to look at what the definition of that word is. I think it's just a bond with the Creator. Is my definition. That's right. I got my own agenda too, and mine ain't in alliance with the KKK or the Red Cross. Come on, we can do this all day. I'm loving this shit, man. I love it. Go ahead, y'all. Hey, I just wanted to say, um, I just wanted to say, cause uh, what you were talking about earlier about how you know people come over here and they like benefit and profit off of black people. You're right because um, if you look in our communities, who owns like most of the gas stations? Who owns most of the um, you know hair supply stores and stuff like that? Like you know what I'm saying? It's either like Asians or Arabic. You know what I'm saying? Like in most of these places. Um, but people want to get mad whenever you want to support other black owned businesses because everybody's too busy trying to, um, hate on the next person and that shit ain't right. Like everybody want to be, talk about, um, you know, black lives matter and pro black and this and that, but you don't want to support black owned businesses you don't want to support your own people. Like that's the shit that I don't like. You know what I'm saying? Like I try to. I I'll get I'm getting my my Sanchez hoodie next weekend. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like I try to Yo, Sanchez. Yeah. You right, my sister. Hold on, let Yo, the sister up. finish. My sister. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, let... you... Are you so hundred percent right, sister? And, you know, it's like let me tell you, that stuff ain't only happening where you guys are at, man, you know. It's like, it's easy for black people to hate each other. What's wrong with us? <laughs> I know what's wrong with us, but hey, man. We, we, we just like copying people's styles and people's lives. You know, I know what's wrong with us, but hey, it's so easy for us to hate on each other instead of complimenting and helping each other, you know? When we look in the mirror, all we see is hatred. That's what I think, you know? I don't we think hate what we are. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, we hate each other, but I tell you who we love and the Messiah that they give us. Any man that ever had the title of Messiah had somebody worshiping him. Even Jim Jones in Jonestown had him a gullible crowd. Any man following a man is a follower, not a man. There's no such thing as a leader to a man with kids. Guess what? You don't need, let me show you something, right? If your ancestors made mistakes, do you follow their pattern? No. That's like a, a, a fucking crack baby saying, I'm going to smoke crack too. This is my tradition. This is my culture. Oh. Hell no, bro, Sanchez. Hell no, my bro. Hell no. It's like, if my, Yo, ancestors, my people are weak. Yeah, my ancestors made mistakes. I'm going to call it out and say, don't follow them. Them was the stupid ancestors. They going to lead you astray. Yo, and they sellouts. Yo, check this out, Sanchez. Check this out. Or the Africa, we chow meat. And it's like, yo, they celebrated like it's the end of their lives and shit. You know what I mean? But I'm a logical person. And meat ain't, nah, according to the way I listen to my forefathers. You know, them niggas got it all twisted. They got brainwashed, you know what I mean? People let's get to be who they are. And all you can be is yourself. I know how the hell people want to be someone else the rest of their lives. God damn. You know, like, I ain't trying to be no fake Jesus. I ain't trying... Yo, Jesus the son anyway. That's you, what you I You gotta remember, bro. To them, that's it's on natural theology. They don't have to get no resistance when they do that. When they go with the status quo or give go, you know, go with the God that they given, ain't no resistance from the powers that be. It's like they flowing with the water. Anybody that's going against it is going against the grain. That's why it's so hard, because real shit ain't easy. Yeah, a, yeah, that's the truth, my bro. That's the hardest, that's the real ass truth. That's why we listen to shows like Bro Sanchez. They keep Check us strong out. in the truth. Let me do Not this. I mean. Let me let me do this real quick, right? Check this out, right? I want y'all to think of this scenario, okay? Before I forget, real quick, because um, 
Think of a child holding his daddy hand and he's looking up at his daddy. But his daddy ain't looking back down at him. You know why? His daddy looking up to his daddy in the sky. You know why the black boys are neglected? Some of these black boys got a daddy in the house and they still feel neglected because they looking up to daddy and daddy looking up to Messiah. Daddy should be looking back down into their boy eyes, but daddy head in the clouds. The black man don't need no damn Messiah. Every black man should rise to his Messiah state and quit following these damn Messiah. That's your Messiah? I follow Noble Drew Ali. Your Messiah ain't better than my Messiah. Grown men talking about Messiahs. Yeah. Hey, bro, Sanchez, listen up, dog. You got that fire, boy. <laughs> and straight up, you got that fire. You got that fire. Like, straight up, I hope these people are listening to you. You know, because, damn. I right, dog, use Black God right here. Let me tell you something, man. I call all my older bros Black Gods in my own language. You know what I mean? People with knowledge, I actually call Black Gods in our home language. And use one of them, you know what I mean? And don't you ever quit doing what you're doing, man. That's real blessings to the people right there, you know what I mean? And that's the truth right there. I, hey, bro, I, hey, can bro. never quit bumping you. Hey, you know you what's crazy? Fire, you, you know what's you crazy, my brother Tamelo? <laughs> why I love you, my brother? Why this is mad love, right? Check this how deep this is, right? I'm the coon, y'all. Remember now, I want y'all to think about this, right? I'm the coon. But yet, I got the Jamaicans in. I'm the coon. I'm uh uh, I'm the coon, right? But I got more Africans and Jamaicans on my call than pro black channels. Look around. Go to the pro black Yo. channels. Listen, how many Africans calling in to these pro black channels? How many Jamaicans and brothers in the diaspora? I got more diaspora brothers than y'all. <laughs> and we straight up, and we straight up in the in the diaspora, boy. And we fighting hard, you you don't even know, you know shit. It's, it's dark out here in Africa, as you can see. Shit, my mom is sleeping. Sanchez, I was gonna tell you to spread some love, you know. Tell you say what's up, you know, cause she's down with you and your knowledge is spreading. You know what I mean. And listen up, man. What you're doing is real. You should never quit. You know, them devils going to come every way they can. You should be strong because, man, you're doing work out here. You know what I mean? Like straight up work out here. Listen up. I ain't trying to hate no Marcus Garvey and all he done and what he done. You know what I mean? It's all about that love, Sanchez. It's all about that love. You know what I mean? And I ain't trying to say I love it's only about Christians, that, it, it's love a, only it, Muslims. It's, it's, a, it's about that hate too, right? Yeah. Yep. So listen up. This is what I believe, Sanchez. I want to let you know. Hatred is for weakness. Weak people wait a minute, hate. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait you know? a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to Hold hear on, me wait, out. Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you, you a to question. Hear me out. I want you to hear me out. I got you. I got you, yeah, brother. Yeah, I got you. Let me ask you a real question. I got you. It ain't a uh, deep bill. Am I a weak man if I hate pedophiles? You can go ahead. Yo, listen up. Let me let you know, God. You ain't a weak man. Let me tell you something. We were all children who wanted to get abused as a little child. Right, so Pinky's that's why I, that's why I said we like that hate too and that love, don't we? Both of them we use, right? Uh, yeah, cause life is duality. You see, it's dark in Africa. I wanna let you see, it's dark in Africa. Yeah, but see Might what I'm like saying? Where you at? Yeah, like I hate oppression. I hate slavery. I hate injustice and equality. I can get into so much shit that I hate. And I love to hate it, which is a paradox. Like, I love to hate. And sometimes I hate the love. Sometimes I be like, why do I love this person? And I know they hate me. I know they're a hater. I know they don't mean me no good. 
but I just I love him. This my brother. Like he hate me because he he got to get yeah. to this level you know, and shit. Yo, Sanchez. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Can I say? Can I say something to you, man? There's an African paradox. It talks about exactly what you're talking about. You know, my old man taught me this. My old man gone right now, so I don't forget stuff like this. You know what I mean? It's like, ish, let me try. I'm trying to translate it in my mind right now. You know what I mean? So I can put it down in like, in a way that you can understand it too. You know what I mean? But like, you are your enemy. I don't know how else to explain it. You know, if I had to explain it, it might just take me a minute or two, but you are your thought. You are everything you see, my bro. You know what I mean? Hatred, listen to me. Just give me a chance, God. Give me a chance. Hatred is not of you because love is a strength. Hatred is weakness, God. You know, it's like, it's easy to hate and it's easy to point fingers, you know. But don't forget, whoever you're pointing at is part of you. That's why you're pointing at him. You dig? He's a part of you. You know what I mean? Everything you ever see, you ever touch, you ever be is a part of you. You know why, you know, man? We, this we, conversation, I'm a part bro, of you. bro, bro. You make me I what I am. Yeah, boy. I got you. I got you, but I ain't really got along and I got to stay on topic. And this conversation ain't going to go nowhere. Because if you say it's all about love and we only should love, then I can beat you on that by saying, well, okay, I love hate. I'm still loving. I'm just loving hate. So either way it go, it's a paradox, bro. Like, they're both necessary when needed, right? There's a time for everything. I appreciate the love, but I got to stay on topic and let everybody build on the topic. Salutes, my brother. Go ahead, y'all. Yeah, I wanted to say something real quick to the brother. Uh, what's the weather in Africa? Because you got on a jacket. What's the weather over there? Yeah, hey, let me let you know. Listen up, dog. Shit, I'm a hustler, right? I have a taxi and shit in the middle of South Africa. I just got back home and shit, you know what I mean? So, like, I need to get my jacket off. But, hey, the weather's great. Yeah, no disrespect, my brother. Much love. Much yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, let me let me do yeah. something real quick, though. I, I want to share the mic. I heard I let to Mello talk. I'm pressing for time now. And I actually want to leave it open to people who've been trying to talk but haven't or just join. Because I'm about to go. Speak now if I ever hold your peace, guys. All right. That's enough. I'm all about all right, this. Let me get up out of there, bro. Hey, man, I, I would like to, uh, I don't know if anybody heard me the first time. Uh, like I said earlier, of course, I just want to show my love to you, Brother Sanchez. I think you're a wise brother. Uh, I know you're a wise brother. A lot of uh, good gems to the people, man. And just a caveat off of everything you're saying, man. I think, you know, people people fail to realize that uh, to ignore is the root word to ignorance. And people tend to ignore facts. And people ignore, they. I, it seems like people ignore everything that when you, when you give them the truth, they're not willing to research for themselves. Because the if information is there. This is the age of information. It's been out here. And you have the uh you have access to it. So when, if somebody tells you something, you can easily look it up. But I think the difference is some people have the actual spirit to know how to look up things. And everybody don't have that gift. And apparently Brother Sanchez do. And his gift and as far as what he's doing, he's doing a lot. To, to, in order to share information, he has to go look this shit up. See, I know because I do the shit my damn self. And I'm not no biblical person, but I grew up in a black church, so I know that Bible. And I look at the Bible as just a puzzle piece. Basic information before leave, leaving earth. But there is advanced information beyond that. You got to go find that shit. Get out your box. See, a free thinker is a dangerous man. That's what they scared of. Oh. That's what Bob Marley was. Bob Marley was Yo, a bro. free thinker. Yeah. 
Yo, to Melo, hold up a second, bro. I'm pressing. Uh, I got to get out of here and let some of the people who ain't spoke talk. You came at the end, so my bad. You should have came earlier. But uh, go ahead, Rashad, and, and whoever else. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted to say something to... Uh, okay, that's I cool. just wanted to say something to Lacey because I wanted to backdoor off what she said. Is The reason why is because we say one thing but do another. We say we want to build our communities and spend in the community, right? But when you see somebody of color that has a business, it's like they don't want to spend out of jealousy. So you say we need to build our community up and all this kind of stuff. But if you see a brother selling some shoes, example, Master P got some Mulianis or whatever the shoes is called. Everybody clowned them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I want Jordans. But this black man, y'all didn't see him get out of the mud of Louisiana, got some shoes, but people don't want to buy them. They want to buy Jordans. So my point is, we say one thing and do another. We're like hypocrites in that sense. You can't fight and have your fist in the air talking about what we need to do, but when it's right in front of your face, you're still not going to do it. So don't talk about it, be about it. I don't give them folks none of my money. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right, Miss Free. And I do my own hair and I do my own nails. Pure point yeah. blank. Yeah, see, that's that's why uh like like uh like my, my man, he went and got his hair, he went and got his hair dread, right? He went and got dressed. He went to this lady, got her got his hair dreaded. All right, cool. They didn't do a good enough job. I told him, I said, hey, look at your mom. Your mom got dressed. Why don't you go to your mother? Your mother, she did a better job on hers than they did on yours. Why don't you just go to your mother and pay her? Keep the money in the family, you know? Like that. Jealousy. Jealousy, because we're jealous of each other. It's like we know what's right as far as you know buying with our own and things of that nature but then you look at the same breath oh you think you all that da 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 so either you need to make it make sense are we gonna spend with each other and rock this thing out or are we gonna hate be jealous because someone got a little bit more grind than you so we just look like big ass hypocrites that's why people can come into our hoods and put up all kind of stores and do whatever they want to do because mm -hmm. they'd rather do that than give it to a black person because they'll have more than them that's what it is. Exactly. And, and women, women don't support each other. Black, when, well, I'm, in my humble opinion, which I know it's fact, most women, they don't want to support each other. They're too busy getting pitted against each other by these men and jealousy. Yeah, and you know. I, I'm a bad B and you this. You know? The women got the same problem the men got. They arguing about which Messiah uh, uh, for them too. Like, the Hebrew women versus the Moors women versus the pro-black women, where the pro-black women might say it's about Garveyism. Girl, you need to get out that Bible. Jesus ain't our Messiah. Garvey our Messiah. And everybody thinking a dead person a Messiah. That's crazy. That's a corpse. Like that, how can that be a savior? Only a living man can be a savior. What he's saving you from? A ghost? What are you gonna? Like, that's my thing. Like, how are these dead men going to be saviors for the living today? The strategies and approaches they took in their time is not applicable right now. The world has changed a lot. So trying to apply that kind of revolutionary talk in 2020 with, man, that's fucking crazy. Well, if we yeah, want to like, The worst part be honest. about it that. It's the fact that they all be working with the enemies and can't none of these niggas that get up here and try to defend it justify it. At all. They can just say, we got to kill that coon. That means silence him. He know the truth. But they tap yeah. dance around your questions like Gregory Hines, man. He rest in peace. I ain't hear nobody give a straight answer to none you asked. I'm still right. Because like none of these Yo. niggas lean on their own understanding. They got to lean on another man. And that shit be blown. Yeah, hey, bro, Sanchez. Yo, because the truth. Nah, ain't popular. Yo, right, yeah. Because the Sanchez. truth, because the truth ain't popular, and what's it popular in truth. Everybody alive sounds like Barnabas to me. It's nice to talk about the truth, but be about the truth. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, right. it's easy to talk about the truth. Let's be about. That's right. Go ahead, Indigenous. All right, you know how. Uh, so I, I, you know, people calling you a cold, right? Yeah. I, 
I, I just this is just a little uh, a little fun fact. Does anybody know why? Uh, you muted yourself. Mm -hmm. yourself. Any anybody can answer if you do know. Ask the question again. Is anybody familiar with the term Ask, Taz? Let him ask the question. What are you talking about, Texas? What you say? Can y'all hear me out there? Ask we can hear you, but you're breaking up. Hello, can y'all hear me right now? There you go. Yeah. Ask, there you go. Okay, I, got, I got it. Yeah, my, ask, go my ahead. Bad. Look, yeah, like, I, I've been working all day. I've been driving for two days straight. I got my own shit, so this is what I do. But anyway... The, the word Taz is a representative of what they call the raccoon tribe, which is in, in the Americas, throughout Texas, related to Kado Indian, all right? That, that, that gives you, actually, they, that kind of designates what they, who they refer to you as or what they were re referring to you as. So, so if you get called a coon, most Negroes don't even understand what a coon is, just like they don't under, understand the term Uncle Tom. Because people don't read. We we just too ignorant and too argumentative to even listen or get gain understanding from one another. But I digress once again. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, guys. I'm gonna go on wrap it up, man. It's been awesome, but I'm gonna get up out of here. It's been a long one, and I don't wanna go too long. But I salute to all hey. of y'all brothers. Peace and love to y'all. Hey, hey Sanchez. Yeah. Thank you guys. Much love, love, everybody. Flat Yo, motherfucking power. Hey, right. yeah, Sanchez, Word, yeah, I'm, out, uh, I'm out in That's Vegas, my G, so if you got any good places to visit or something like that, or you know what a good smoke is, let me know. Because right now in Vegas, there's smoke at the dispensaries. Not smoking how, like Chicago. How long are you going to be here? Uh, Till tomorrow. For real? Mm hmm Well, I know right now I'm going to lay down, but uh, I'm going to I'm gonna reach out to you when I get up. Bet it up. I'll be here, bro. All much right. Much love, y'all be safe. Much All love, right. much love. Peace. All right, so yeah, thank you, everybody who tuned in. Listen, guys. The living men shouldn't kill each other over the dead men. And we really should focus on respecting the living more than the dead. Because we who got each other back, a ghost can't protect you. Like, we so divided with all this Messiah shit, worship. And there is no true Messiah. Otherwise, we'll be saved. If a Messiah is a savior and my people ain't saved, then any Messiah we did have is a failure. You can't debate facts. You can just let the truth hurt. But it ain't me hurting you. It's just the truth that I'm showing. The break in the mirror ain't going to make you feel better. Shout out to the OG Leo. Thank you for the, your time and support. Shout out to Daryl Moss. Thank you for that. Uh, to Daniel Rosenbaum. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate the love. And to Matthew Craig. Those were the cash apps for the day. I really appreciate y'all. Um, it's a lot of people in Vegas I see. I deal with that when I get up, but, um, you know, salutes to all my Patreons and all my